very unlucky not to stay up senior. Father Nees, on the other hand, have you know have been steadily improving over the last number of years. But you know they've had underage success, under 21 success, uh, intermediate. So they're on the rise, and uh, you know I think they're the two best teams on form that have come through the season. And one mightn't agree with that now, maybe, but like I thought, that, you know they've been the two best teams, and I think on paper this was the final that everyone was looking forward. Roland Curran, not to bring up uh, hurtful memories from last weekend, but you know first time how good Charlie are, don't you? Yeah, yeah, very, very solid team, uh, good throughout uh, the defence and going forward, play, play a lovely brand of hurling, uh, always find the man in the right position. And uh, George Wright are two very, very solid teams, and two teams I'd say would have felt uh, unlucky not to be senior this year with, I suppose, uh, Father Neils winning the the intermediate and Charlotte doing so well in the senior last year and just getting caught at the end um, it's, it's hard to put much between them uh, Charleville I, I think have a bit more experience at this level I think they, they're they going well they seem to have a full team out no injuries Jack Doyle is coming back from a, a bit of an injury and um, it's hard to call but I just, I just fancy Charleville just to, to edge them out maybe Father O'Neill is missing a couple of big players including Jerry Mellerick now I know that they've dealt with that so far but it's really in these crunch games where you miss players like that of that experience. Yeah, 100%. He's, he's a huge last to follow. And he's today, O'Sheen, he's a, he's a top-class player. He's a top-class defender. And you would imagine if he was there today, he'd be picking up Dara Fitzgibbon. And, uh, you know, he's very, very good. He's a great man-marker. And that's a very specialised position to be able to play, to, you know, to man-mark a man. And, you know, he would have been brilliant for them. But, as you say, they didn't have him all year. They've worked without him. And uh, I suppose it does put an awful lot of pressure on their other big player, Declan Dalton, who's obviously, uh, the, 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 you know, he's their main, he's their main inspiration he's their main scorer and they look for Decky to have a big game today well as we've already said the wind is a dominating factor here we're about to get underway it's Father O'Neill's up against uh, Charleville and uh, I think we've discussed big players from both teams but we might have a look at the teams now starting with Father O'Neill's that's after Aaron Naveen Well, we're almost ready to go here. That's a look at the Father O'Neill's team and what talent they have. Declan Dalton really stands out. Hankard is a big man who could win ball and create things for others. Let's move on to Charleville and see what they've got locked and loaded. The name that jumps off that team sheet is Darf. It's given 11 points last week, nine of them from freeze. Andrew Cagney helped himself to two goals. Well, it's a dry day, but it is a very breezy one. Jer, you were saying earlier on it is going to be a struggle run and it's not exactly ideal for players out there, is it? That kind of breeze? Yeah, very hard and uh, very important what uh, what you do with the wind more than anything because a lot of times you see the ball uh, floating in over the end line and taking shots from out the field where they maybe should play it into their inside forward line and stuff like that. So just be very careful, I suppose, um, when you're playing with the wind. be very interested to see both sets of puck outs today as well because they play them fast and they have plans with them and uh, very solid in each other's puck well, a late change for Charleville coming in is Darren Butler. He replaces Carlo Carroll. They've got a change up front as well. Connor Buckley doesn't start. Number 19, uh, Mark Cavanagh does. Father O'Neill's, as you are probably aware, in the Mayo style, green and red. Charleville in the red. Here comes Billy Dunn. Billy Dunn looking to squeeze this one over into the Black Rock end. And he does. And it's going to be important for Father O'Neill's to build up some kind of lead, lads, because they've got that uh, strong breeze at their backs in this first half even though there is a swirl in it it's not a straightforward breeze yeah excellent ball down the wing to Billy Dunn and Billy after losing the first ball um, uh, came out in front and he was uh, turned on to his left hand and a uh, difficult angle put a lovely ball over the bar that's, that's a very good start for Father O'Neill's Kean Collins in goal for Charleville he says his favourite TV programme is the Big Bang Theory he gave that ball a bit of a Big Bang there trying to sweep it up as Kevin O'Sullivan Charleville but it's a Charleville ball 
midfield, uh, Jack O'Callaghan and Danny O'Flynn, they're a very strong pairing, they'll be looking to them to take over from that position. Dara Fitzgibbon hits it over towards the side, racing after it is Darren Casey, he's beaten to it, that's really clever, tidy play by Mike Mellerick, who's the joint captain, then gives it away, Joe Mellerick tries to get it up into the hand, that's a nice stick pass to Kevin O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan down the line, juggled but kept by Billy Dunn, he's had a lively start, Cushion ball to Limo Driscoll. O'Driscoll oh, fancies this even though Rob Cullinan was running inside. And it turns out to be the wrong decision. Uh, a, a good enough shot there wasn't far off, but you see straight away now Father Neal's giving good balls into the forward line. Billy Dunn got a good one for the first score and a good ball into the, the other corner there. Father Neal's winning an awful lot of ball so far in this game. O'Driscoll oh, inside, he was looking for Joe Mellerick, didn't find him. Kevin O'Sullivan manages to gather the ball, gets it under his spell. Thomas Mellerick. You can't move for Mellericks in this team. Oh, Dalton has got a bit of time and a bit of space. Dalton takes a deflection and goes the wrong side as opposed to the right side from a charitable point of view. But he was going for goal there, Jer. That was a great chance. Um, Jack Mead slipped as he was going to the ball. Decky got it on first touch onto his favourite left hand. Was looking to maybe to break the net, but in fairness, Jack Mead got back and got a hurry to it. Um, and, uh, you know, Decky has a chance now to put the ball out of the from 65. But just wondering with this wind, Oshin uh, and Ronan, would it be better? Would Charlie be thinking of bringing a man back to try to contain a score up to half time? Because it is very, very strong, and Father Neils have started really, really well. Yeah, I suppose you want to start off with your, not, with your normal setup and see how it goes. Like, it's, it, it becomes a bit negative if, uh, if you bring someone back straight away. Um, but to be fair, you notice with Father O'Neill's that uh, o over the last few games they're getting a lot of goals and straight away there now they went for a goal again and it's, um, it's something under play that you see over the last few years. It's a crisp strike from Dalton, a really good and solid score. And Ger, from a Cork fan's point of view, looking at Dickie Dalton, it's maybe time to get excited, isn't it? Absolutely, you know, he's, he's, been, <coughs> he's been on the scene for a number of years. He's had a fantastic last couple of years. He's got himself in good, uh, in good condition. Uh, he's been playing really well. He's getting up big scores. I think he scored 5-13 so far from playing the championship, which is, a, which is a huge score. So they'll be looking for him to, to really get on the ball today. And like that now, you know, if he's inside on one-on-one, -on -one, you need to give him the ball, Asheen. You need to feed him because, uh, you know, if they need to, they need to be ahead by maybe five or six points yep. here running like to have a, you know, to have a real chance of winning this in the second half. Uh, yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a, it's a five or six point win. Um, and uh, you see there are now one or two balls wasted already in there in, going over the end line, uh, which is momentum sapping for the team, really. Lovely pass from O'Sullivan. Limo Driscoll just about had enough. And Father O'Neill's extend their lead. They looked a sharper team from the start, um, very hungry for the ball, giving good ball around the midfield and so far Dara hasn't been on it, here he is now. Right on cue, Dara Fitzgibbon, and he wins the free and that's what he can do when he runs at defences, in fact oh, it's gone line, the other way I beg your pardon. Sideline ball, yeah, to give an over sideline ball yeah, issue yeah. With, with the ball, so um, they need to get Dara in the game, he has actually started at centre forward obviously with a roving role, uh, but they need to get him in the game. And, Puck outs will, you know, won't be reaching in the first half, like so. You'd be maybe thinking about would he have more influence out towards the middle of the field, especially against that wind. Yeah, you would think so because there'll be more space there as well around the midfield, and he can burst forward from there. He might do more damage. Nice line ball from Kevin O'Sullivan. It kind of went nowhere. It might fall for Declan Dalton. He's the kind of guy that even if it's loose around there, he can win possession. Jack Mead fires it long. Collected really well by O'Sullivan. That one That's hangs up like a kite score. in the wind That's and goes over. O'Sullivan had a strike a couple of minutes ago, went wide, but he got it right that time. Great score from under there, under the stand halfway line, turned onto his left hand. He's actually started really well. He was involved in the last play as well in the score. So off his left hand, put a great ball over the bar. So Father Nils have really now have a chance. The next 10 minutes in the game, if they could rattle on another couple of scores, they'll make it very hard for Charleville. Then he let that one slip out of his hand, but got away with it, the former Cork under 21. Father Nils trying to win it in the middle. Kevin O'Sullivan. That's a beautiful ball. O'Driscoll's waiting. He has time and space. Yeah, the and that's a lovely strike. Off his man there a bit, uh, giving too much room. It's actually interesting that uh, we can talk in the game la last week. Uh, can talk took a five-one start against the Breeze as well. So that's two games in a row now where uh, Charles started slowly. We're looking at the warm-up and stuff like that. But it's too late now. <laughs> Sullivan is looking for Dara Fitzgibbon. Jerry, you've worked with him. You know how effective he can be in a game. Yeah, no, he's lucky. He's obviously their main target man. He's the main. He's their main ball winner. He's he's their main scorer all year from from especially from free. So 
you know they'll, they'll be looking for Fitzy to get into the game and I'm just as I say he's in the half forward line it's, uh, the ball isn't going to be getting up there too often so just wondering again whether we better off to move him around but he's he's their inspiration he's their leader you know if he's held uh, it'll be uh, it'll be a big dent in their in their, in their, in their aspirations to win it well, We're delighted to bring you this game via the Irish Examiner and of course the Cork County Board today we appreciate that only a small number of fans can attend the game and there's a lot of people at home watching this who would love to be here who would normally be here and we are aware of how big an honour it is to be here and how big an honour it is to bring you this game yeah okay. fantastic to be here today like this when, when both teams came out it's very you know you i suppose what was noticeable was the silence that the, you know there's only a small number of people here honoured to be here to see you know what, what is potentially two great games so um looking forward to it and declan dalton as we speak has come out to the right on the halfway line um, he is, uh, you know, he is an expert yeah. sideline puck taker. He I don't know, do I agree with this, Charlie? Well, we we'll see now. Run if it goes over the bar. We certainly agree with it. <laughs> That's going to drop into the forward line, and you'd want Dalton under that, but even oh. he's not that fast. But it does fall the way of Cullinan. Uh, I suppose the and thing I'd be, I'd be on about there, you're bringing a fellow all the way out to midfield. It takes his time to get out there. It takes his time to get back. You know, like it's a lot of time wasted when you're with the wind and it was, you know, shot the nut. I mentioned there that you'd want him under those, but he's not the only big man for Father O'Neill's. I mean, the likes of uh, Hankard and Cullen Ann can win ball as well like that. Yeah, uh, he is their main man, to be fair. Like, you know, and you, you usually see when Father O'Neill's win, he has a big uh, score totted up. Like, you know, and I think he's nearly more important to Father O'Neill's than Darren nearly is to Charleville in a way, like, because Charleville, a lot of good, solid players around the place as well. But um, interesting how they both go to the. O'Keefe with an important hook there, and now it's hoovered up by Mellerick. Mark O'Keefe on it again. We feel like a hero in this kind of conditions, especially when the breeze is with you and you clear a ball like that. The wind gets behind it now. Coming down the wing is Jason Hankard. Goalkeeper is going to get to that. Dalton tried to close him down, but he did get the puck away. Lead turn by Fitzgibbon. Now, can he escape the shackles? Mellerick not letting him go. Fitzgibbon, he can score from these kind of angles. And in this kind of breeze, he's up against the gale. It just tailed off, although I'd like to have seen that again. Yeah. If Hawkeye was here, that might be different. Yeah, it looked it looked, uh, it looked funny when it left the hurley to be going over the bar. But it just again, that's the wind. That's the blustery wind that's there. It just tailed off. And you know, as it was going over the bar, it just tailed outside the post. Billy Dunn falls, but it does come the way of Dalton. He's got goal in mind again. He's wrestled to the ground by Mead. It has to be a penalty, and it is. Uh, and straight you, away there, straight at goal, you know, d- drove at it like it was one thing in his mind, like, and he's so dangerous. And also the full back run is going to be on a yellow card here now, straight away, I would imagine. So, yeah. you know, now feed Dalton every ball you get because if the full back is on a yellow, he has to be very, very careful. Yeah. Uh, going back to Dara's one there, uh, like, I would love to see him actually take that on with pace, like, that's his game, really. Like, you know, and he took a shot there that was, you know, maybe three, four out of ten chance of getting, like, and now they go down the other side of the pitch and get a penalty, penalty shot. Looks to me like Mead has got a yellow card. There's yep. only one place that Decky Dalton is thinking of putting that, and that's the back of the he net. Yes, he has some built off a ball, Oshin, and if he if he hits this, if he connects properly with that wind, I think there's only Gee one Collins result. against Dalton. Dalton, oh, wonderful! It's a great start, and it's always great to get a goal with the wind. You feel like you've done your done your bit there, now and. Uh, Nice lead there, eight points straight yeah, up. Yeah, it's like again, I'm just again, you know, it's, it's such a big part. Jack Doyle, who has a, Hugh, been a big player for Charleville, we've uh, 10 minutes gone the game, he hasn't touched the yeah. ball. I, think, I just think like, Charleville at this stage now need to be maybe curtailment and, and get into get into half time, but maybe six or seven uh, behind. But if if if, if Orleans can take on another couple of scores, um, you know, it'll be a, it'll be a huge advantage for them. Gavin Kelleher shovels it back inside to Daniel O'Flynn. O'Flynn has a look up. They need something. Missed it. But they haven't got it. And that would have been a great point just to settle him down, you know. And, and you're talking about Jack Doyle as well there. Now, to be fair to him, he was out with a hamstring injury for four weeks. It's hard to know if he's fully over or not. I know he was taken off in the game last week as well. Be interesting to know if he's fully fit. The Mellericks combining once again. Dalton's going to try to get trying to get under this one. He'll appeal for another penalty. He won't get it on this occasion. It's going to be very tough on Mead in there in the full back lane on the yellow card. No? Yeah, that's going to just, that's the dangerous about Tom Miller. You know, sometimes you hit a nice ball in, but with this with this wind swirling about, like it's, you know, it, could, it looks as if maybe it was overhit, but he only hit that very easily to try to hit Dalton inside. Kevin O'Sullivan, Mead holding up Dalton again. He did well there, to be fair, Mead. He was very strong. He and Collins have to be hard. careful. Dalton almost pickpocketing him, but he got away with it. Kicked on by the man who's come up from fullback, Sean O'Connor. They can press right up because Charleville aren't getting in behind. O'Callaghan does find Cagney. Cagney pursued by Owen Motherway. Cagney feels he has no choice but to go for it. 
and his teammates look around and say, look, you had options, you could have popped it inside. I think that's a, a fourth wide, third wide, I beg your pardon, for Charleville. They need a score to go over, they need one soon. Yeah, and it seems like a bit of desperation there now at that stage, rather than find his man, he just turned and shot. He was claiming claiming that uh, the defender got a deflection and it was out for 65. Still, Mark Kavner run and had gone through the middle and he was wide open, like, and he looked a, a nice 30 part. 30 yard pass in on top of the D would have given him an opportunity but as you can taking a shot from a, a, a difficult angle that's, a, that's a, as you say a 4 out of 10 shot yeah and to be fair to Charleville that usually is their game find the best end but I wonder is a bit of desperation obviously seeing 8 scores on the board against 0Trickles back to the goalkeeper. They'll call for the free there. Cagney was hit and it's it. Free to Charlotte. They really have to nail this one. Yeah, Cagney won the ball again and, and turned into goal. And uh, he was surrounded by three defenders and uh, went down with a, with a, seems like we got a built up the hurley, but built in a helmet. But I think he's okay. And this gives a chance for Fitzy to, put, to, to, to register their first score after nearly 30 minutes of play. See Dara Fitz uh, drifting out the pitch in those last two passages of play as well, as you said, George, just try to get more. really stiff breeze. Yeah, there was a few good shots there, but you could see him just tailing off in the end. It's really, really strong now, to be fair. Um, they're coming back into it. That's, that is the thing. And, uh, you know, if, if they could sneak a goal maybe in the first half, you know, just chip away a few points, just stay in it. Like you saw you saw in the game last night with Blarney, they had a big lead. Castellanes came into it a bit more. And, you, you know, the other team starts thinking about it. Like, you know, it's just stay in the game is basically the thing in the first half. You guys did the smart thing today. You're sitting on my right side. Last night, I used Mark Landers as a kind of a windbreaker. No such <laughs> No such, uh, no such luck today, Jer. What do you think is being said in that Charleville huddle? Because although they are getting shots away, they they are seven down. Yeah, I'd say from going what Ron was saying there. Okay, like there, it's the uh, O'Neills have got six scores and and Charleville had one, but they've had six wide. So, you know, they're they're, they're settled into the game. As if they can hang in there now. There's 15 minutes to half time. If they can get the next couple of scores and uh, and just 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 hang in there and be anywhere within five or six points at half time I think would be successful the danger is the full back is on a yellow card uh, I think Father News are beginning to try to play the ball into Dalton if he gets a chance you know there's, there's potentially another goal there uh, so I think at this stage you know, it's I say for Charvel it's curtailment trying to get into the game get a couple of scores Father O'Neill is looking to get a couple of scores to build on their lead goalkeeper goes long Father O'Neill's yet to score since the goal from the penalty. That came after nine minutes. Decky Dalton popping it over. Jason Hankard tries to create something. At least Charleville have stopped conceding scores. Cagney. He's looking down the line for Kavanagh. Doesn't find him though. Father O'Neill's wanted to take it quickly. They weren't allowed. Yeah, again, a uh, ball over the line. Decky Dalton had kind of he had come out the field, so he he's in the vicinity of the area for this one. He didn't come out especially to take it, but again, like he's he's uh, he's 85, 90 meters outside, like you know. But with the wind advantage, you know, yeah, he's quite he's quite capable of putting this over. Like. He's great striker the ball, and as you said, he was out there, so it's not too bad. It's not wasting time. It's going to drop. Great touch. That's really well taken. Out the field they go into the hand of Finbar Cagney. Good run by Cagney. Nice cushion pass. Yeah, this is this is more like Charlie Vano. This is working the ball up from the full back line. Cagney now he's uh, got a couple of goals last week. Cagney up against Motherway. 
Squeezes it back to Kavanagh. That's a really score. good score. And that'll settle them down a bit, you know, that score. They worked it well from the full back and a great touch and worked it all the way up the pitch and got a score. And as, as George says, that's their style of hurling. An excellent point, their first round to play a small bit like, and now they, they seem to have better control in it. Thrown forward, not literally. Kicked forward now by Finbar Cagney, but into the hand of Mark O'Keefe. O'Keefe tried to flick, that didn't work. It's a lovely ball across to Jack Doyle, but it beats him, and Joe Mellerick is yeah. going to. I take think Jack that in is hand. struggling, he's holding his leg from the very start there. You can see him reaching down a few times. I don't, I don't think he'll last this game. O'Driscoll yeah, couldn't gone. get it into the hand. Jack O'Callaghan controls it. Yeah, Jack Buckley has really started very well for uh, for Charlotte centre back. He got a great block there a few minutes ago. Seems to be dominating the game there for him. He's settled into the game very well. He's, he's a big player for Charlotte, and they need him to go well. Cagney bounces it inside for Gavin Kelleher. Might break the way of Daniel O'Flynn. O'Flynn does well with it. Back it goes to Gavin Kelleher. It's a wide ball again, and it's a seventh wide. Bad wide, and they're all on that side of the post as well. Very easy to say, play the right balls, but uh, yeah, it seemed to be drifting out there. I see Ronan, Jack, 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 Jack Doyle looks to be uh, looks to be looks to be in trouble. He's he was carrying he was carrying his left hand onto his left hamstring there in the last few minutes. So straight away they're they're looking for a substitution, and this is a big blow running for yeah. for Charlotte. He's one of their big players, and yeah, um, yeah, he really would be probably the closest thing to Dara Fitz they have. You know, he's a, he's a really solid player, really fast, really dangerous. Um, maybe he should have taken last week off. <laughs> That's the biggest. It's, it's very it's disappointing, you know. The guy, you know, the lads have waiting all year to play. You get to a county final, and you know, injuries prevent you from playing. Your well, same last night, went Spillan after a minute night. last night. Heartbreaking yeah, for Castle Lions. They may or may not have won that game. Blarney credit their performance. They were excellent, but it didn't help Castle Lions. No, it was That's a big blow. Sure, it was a big blow. It was a big blow to him, like you know. Cahal O'Carroll comes in for Doyle. Cahal O'Carroll had been named to start. He's now being injected in. O'Carroll with the stick pass. Oh, that's a lovely take by Daniel O'Flynn. They'll hope to avoid an 8 wide. That's a lovely strike. They finally got the measure of this breeze. Yeah, a lot better play now. They, they really have come into it over the, since the last water break or since the water break. Uh, a few good moves up the pitch. Probably should have got another one or two points. And you know now there's only five points in it uh, with that big wind. Like so, be happy enough if they keep it at uh, half time. Yeah, that's the two great scores, and it's their style of play again. They're beginning to get into their game, and, and you know the way they play it. And Jack Buckley has been a big part of that for me. Limo Driscoll turning and twisting, letting this one go, and they get their first score yeah. since Decky Dalton's penalty goal. Michael O'Flynn is standing a, a long way off. Limo Driscoll he needs to get a lot tighter on him. He's a fast player. He obviously can finish. Uh, he needs to get up tighter on him. It's too far away. Finbar Cagney. Has to go off the stick. That's a brilliant dispossession. Great work from Andrew Cagney. Gets it inside. It's Mark Cavanagh. Mark Cavanagh has already got one point. He's looking to make it two. This one goes to the near side and wide. You just want to see Darren Moore in the game, yeah, don't you? He's yeah. not in it yeah, at all. He's out, he's out wing forward and uh, you know he's uh, they're struggling kind of without him to, to, to get him on the ball. And uh, as you say, Limo just has got three points so far and um, Michael O'Flynn will want to get a lot tighter because Limo Driscoll, once you get your eye in, you know, he has his eye in at this stage now, so he'd want to be very tight to him, like to keep to keep his score down in the because so far he's been he's had he's had three from play and one wide, so he's had four shots at goal. The wind has just got an awful lot stronger. It's like when you have a fan and you turn it up. It just like in a second it changed. Trying to get it into the hand is Jack O'Callaghan. I thought there was a whistle from the ref there but it's just the whistling of the wind around the yeah. stadium it is Charleville's ball really good player by Jack there he's a really good player he gets on a load of breaks and links the player very well and they'll, uh, they'll need him to have a, have a good second half and finish off this first half strongly because uh, he's a big player for him and they just need to get a grip in the run there they're aiming at Darren Casey line ball Father O'Neill's they've moved Danny O'Flynn in, in centre forward there now looks like yeah the boys have stopped going into, into, into the forward uh, the first half the first before the water break they were getting on the play into Dalton but uh, that seems to have dried up a bit so they'll be looking to get him back on the back into play 
Liam O'Driscoll, uh, was he pushed over? Referee says he was. He's free under in. pressure there with Liam O'Driscoll. He's just a bit too pacey for him. You know, maybe they think about switching corners or something like that, but then you're in the other corner, then you've Billy Dunn, who'd be one of their more well-known players and a good finisher. Normally at halftime on county final day, we'd be honouring the Jubilee team of 25 years ago. That's Napiershik this year. Sean Ogo-Halpin was on that team as a minor. Here's Declan Dalton going to guide this one over, is he? Yes, he is. But it just makes one feel that bit older, doesn't it? It yeah. certainly does, because Dave, you know, we lost that final last year 25 years ago to Piershik. They beat us in a replay, so uh, it's an awful pity that the lads don't get a chance to get a, to get to walk out on the pitch today and uh, have a day out again, you know. Well, Joseph Blake told me it would be nice to talk about them since they can't be here, and it is nice to mark them and Roland, of course, you went on to play a lot of hurling with Sean Ogan, that uh, yeah. dominant yeah. Cork team. Yeah, to be fair, Sean, Sean's a class act, like everyone knows that, you know, brilliant player and, and a brilliant teammate as well, and like you do anything on the pitch for you and off the pitch as well, like, so great to see him there. Not the only good player in that Napierschik team, and unfortunately not all of them are still with us and we're thinking about them today, and anyway, the ball bounces into the goalkeeper, Cotton smacked out by Keen Collins. Great okay. catch. A Brian Corcoran-esque on the knees hit of the ball. There comes to Kevin O'Sullivan. Although Corcoran oh, could probably put it over from there in the middle of the pitch on his knees. It's not off the knees. It's not from the middle of the pitch. But it'll do for Father O'Neill. That's a really tidy finish. That's a good score from Rob Cullinan. Uh, you know, good ball into him. And uh, in these conditions, every score is vital. Every, every point that you get uh, will have a huge role to play today. So um, very good score. And they're very interesting as well, they're leaving the cornerbacks free for the puck outs, leaving them have them and pushing out the pitch so they'll have a lot more bodies out here. Not a bad tactic really. The foot race is going to be won by Sean O'Connor. Brilliant hook. The work rate is notably up from Charleville from we'll say the first yeah. five, ten minutes. Yeah, they're certainly working hard like at this stage now, you know, they're 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 eight points up eight points behind five minutes to go before half time. As you say, if they can hold it to a couple of scores and uh, hold it even at this level, they'd be nearly happy enough like, to get into half time to regroup. And they have been creating chances as well. They've hit, they've hit seven wides, and yeah. on, as I say, on any other day, most of those would probably have gone over. Father O'Neill's not done in a scoring sense for the first half. They'll hope. Here's Kevin O'Sullivan. He's already got one. Dalton is off I'll to his left. He goes himself. Oh, he got it. And Great it's save. a brilliant save Great for save. Ian. Uh, save. Should have passed the ball, lads. There was one of them there last night as well in the last game, in yesterday's game. Declan Dalton was on his own there in acre space. Hand yep. pass over, goal line. Uh, he just, I can't understand why fellas thought of that because he had to see it. But Kevin O'Sullivan went in. He started really, really well off his left hand as well, as, which is probably his good side. Took a great shot, but in fairness, we've got great, great, um, great credit to the goalkeeper uh, Kean Collins. Made a marvelous save. Went off the top of the hurley over for 65. The chance for Dalton to tap on a point now again, but. As Ronan said, like the, the pass was on here, and Declan Dalton from at the edge of the at the edge of the square, yep. you, 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 you would he would you would be fancying his chances to put the ball in the net. Well, Billy Dunn turned around and gave out to Kevin O'Sullivan because, as you said, Dalton was free on the left as he ran in. They do get something out of the attack. Dalton yeah. adds That's another score to his no, tally, no, one three the now. Last two attacks that Father Neil said is someone in around 30 yards of space, whatever they're doing, just uh, to get a fella free. Interestingly enough with uh, Declan Dalton, he has scored 1-3, but it's all come from place balls. Would you be happy enough with that from a child of a point of view if, if, he, if he only scores from place balls, if that makes sense? Yeah, look, you, you, look you're, looking, you're looking for your big player to stand up on, on, on a day of a county final. And uh, again, he's, he hasn't got too much ball in there. Like, the, the ball he's got, he was pulled down for the penalty. Again, you know, it's very difficult to find a man bang on today because this wind is going to be very difficult. But um, it's Lee Modriscoll here who's, who's, who's down. He's... Uh, he ran into he ran into Michael O'Flynn, who stand, he's standing off him quite a bit, uh, and uh, you know he needs. To, as Ronan said earlier on, they had, had, he has flagged that one. He needed he needs to be closer because every score, you know, I think Charlotte will be hoping three or four minutes to go. They need to either get a few scores themselves or keep this keep this um, at uh, at um, at nine points. Ball got away from Rob Cullinan there. Straightforward pull on the ground. Daniel O'Flynn chases after, puts pressure on John Barry, Mark Cavanagh. Kelleher couldn't make it his, but his teammate does get there. That's Andrew Cagney. Yeah. Falling over it is Jack O'Callaghan. Gets away from Dara Fitzgibbon. Good lift by O'Keefe. O'Keefe is trying to find Billy Dunn. 
Billy Dunn kind of tripped himself more so than anything else can't keep it in play well he put it wide so it's a good end result for Charleville I think that looked to 65 to me I think uh, Billy Dunn he, he just, just blocked the ball from going over the line and hit it off the corner back's leg but he got away with the jumper waved wide O'Keefe looking again for Billy Dunn good defending he got out in front and guided it into the path of Alan Dennehy the joint captain or the captain I should say they're keeping this one low to Cagney if he can turn there's going to be danger Cagney trying to get past Motherway he'll just try and take the point and does yeah man running off his shoulder there again but you know took the point got the score uh, and also there that Billy Dunn is limping around the place after that last one the second ball that came in he couldn't fight for it his bandage on the leg as well great catch Colin Ann, Dalton. There's a man inside there, but Dalton will go himself. I think Paddy McMahon will be frustrated because he was in on goal if that had been delivered to him. Still great again. We spoke about Declan Dalton getting on the ball. Um, lovely ball into him here from Rob Colin. Decky came out, controlled it really well, and uh, off his left hand, his favourite left side, turned and put it over the bar. Good score. We all know the cornerback got the ball as well. They're leaving him have it, which is uh, interesting if they do that in the second half with the wind. Cagney after it again Motherway shadowing him all the way Fitzgibbon is there if the break falls his way here is Dara Fitzgibbon thought about shooting but then was closed down Fitzgibbon in close quarters <laughs> not about that one thought it was good defending you would take the defender's point of view I suppose alright running but um, like seeing good defender <laughs> <laughs> yeah I thought Fitz he was foul that was a high tackling on him um, 30 minutes gone now that uh, near, nearly Coming up to half time, important uh, free for Fitzy now to put it over the bar. Tough free as well. Tough free against the wind, yeah. But well, he's been part of big wins against the breeze already this year in the Fitzgibbon Cup UCC. Mark Coleman, obviously, part of that as well. And yeah, he won a county title with Blarney last night. That's a good score from Fitzgibbon. A lot of balls there, they just they just keep on carrying in with the wind, you know, so like you think it's gonna land and it drags on another 10, 15 yards, hard to judge. Declan coming out again. Sean O'Connor lets this one off to Dickie Dalton. If he gets this there, uh, lads, there'll be some score because that grass has got really, really tight. Um, yeah. You know, I've seen him put, put, put the ball over from this position before, so it'll be a magnificent score if he can put it over. Right on the Charleville bench as well. Gets plenty on it, it's going to drop. Drops in favour of red rather than red and green. Good take by said Darren it, Butler, it, 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 he's dispossessed by Rob Cullinan. And they get it back again. Butler is down, Charleville effectively playing with 14 at the moment. Picking it up as Paddy McBahan won the break really well. Keen Collins stays cool under pressure. I think we can argue that Collins has made the save of the year so far. Here's Joe Mellerick into the path of Mark Cavanagh. Bit of a blind hand pass, but it is picked up by Daniel O'Flynn. He's dispossessed though. Now it's Another man in Dalton. 30 yards of space inside now. No one's picked him up, sent forward. 50 seconds left for play. Dalton. Oh, that's Dalton amazing, took that's that one on and Dalton score. gets a wonderful score. Uh, he's a brilliant striker of ball. Like he has to be up there with Hoggy at this stage and uh, just pure striking of the ball. Magnificent score we were given out because one of his teammates had gone into the 21 meter line there all on his own, but Decky kind of you know took it on himself, ran across the 65 meter line and off his left hand put a great score over the bar. That's that's put him out now there to nine points ahead now at this stage. So Decky Dalton scores a point either side of Charleville's last score. 14 plays 11 when you make the conversion. That's a good win of the ball by Jack Meek. And Charleville gets something before half time. Here's Jack O'Callaghan. They won't panic because they will have a strong breeze behind their backs in the uh, first half. And I appreciate we're talking about the breeze an awful lot, but it is such a big factor in this game. Finbar Cagney. Away it goes from Gavin Kelleher. Fitzgibbon. Policed very well by Mellerick, but he might get it on the break. Fitzgibbon taking on Mellerick. Down the line it goes to Casey. Casey with a bit of a heavy touch now it's swept up by Mike Mellerick and that's it it's half time 
And it's Father O'Neill's who lead by 111, 25 points. Ronan Curran, what have you made of it so far? Yeah, Father O'Neill's really delighted with it. They're playing all the hurling. Um, very sharp. Even, even when Dara got the ball there at the end, uh, there must have been three, three or four Father O'Neill's men around the ball. You know, they're, they're winning it back there. They're playing good ball in rather than flashing it into the, the full forward line. Getting ball into Declan Dodd and Billy Dunn. And uh, very impressive so far. Charleville won't be happy. Uh, but as you said, they've a, they've a big win in the second half, so they'll have to. They know they haven't played yet, you know. But it, as we said, it's very hard. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out now in the second half. Sure. Yeah. In fairness to Father O'Neill, they came out. They, they rode the blocks very quickly. Got on the scoreboard. Um, they played really, really well. Um, I think they've worked hard in their forward line to stop the Charleville kind of the the, 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 the support play, the running game that Charleville like to play. I think that's down to the O'Neill forward that have been really, really good. They'll be happy. They scored 12 times. Uh, Charleville had five with six or seven wide. So still a lot to play for. Charleville won't be, you know, there. It's, it's, a, it's tough to come back from nine points down a county final. But, um, you know, it'd be interesting. They need now to start really well just after half time. They need to get the first couple of scores because uh, if they don't, they could find this game going away from them. OK, James, I'll be back to you in just a moment. It is half time in the Co-op Superstores Senior A County Final here in a windy Porky Cueve. How many times have I mentioned the win now? More than Elton John in the song Candle in the Wind, I think, at this stage. But it's such a dominating factor. It's a breeze that will be behind Charleville in that second half. But will they be able to blow their way back into this game? We'll find out. It is 1-11 for Father O'Neill. Five points for Charleville. We'll be back in just a second. Welcome back to Porky Cueve. It is a very, very windy county final day. Later on, it's Glen Rovers against Black Rock. That's in the Premier Senior Hurling Final. That will be uh, quite a belter. Uh, right now, it's the Senior A decider between Father O'Neill's and Charleville. And it's Father O'Neill's who lead by 111 to five points. Ronan Curran, um, they know in the second half they won't be scoring as free-flowingly as they talk about playing against that breeze start the game you have to think about bringing someone back and at this stage of the game with that kind of a win no, they, they definitely either be thinking of bringing their half forwards back out the pitch to kind of crowd it out or bringing it maybe a sweeper back and stuff like that but uh, um, Charleville really have to up their work rate in the forward line like Father and Neil's there in the forward line in the first half were on every single uh, defender coming out with the ball they didn't give them a time to settle on anything especially for the, the first 20 minutes now it's, it's hard to keep that up for the, the full game or even a full half like, but they'll really have to really put the pressure on the lads with the ball because as a back coming out against that wind it's, it's, it's very hard to work the ball out and you don't want to be just striking it up because you won't get any distance on it so it's all about the forward line now and working hard and making it hard for the father O'Neill's um, uh, defenders just like they did Ger, what about Charleville? How do they make sure they get the maximum use out of this win? Because, uh, as the old saying goes, the win doesn't win you games, but uh, it certainly can help. No, it doesn't, and uh, you know, uh, I think O'Neill's will, be, you know, will be aware of that. Like, you know, they've, they've, they've put themselves in a great position to go on to win the game. The big thing for me is Dara Fitz hasn't been, you know, hasn't been in the game, and he's a huge player for Charleville. He, he's their, you know, I said earlier on, he's their inspiration. He gets all their scores. Uh, he's been kind of peripheral on the side. He's playing wing forward. I'm just wondering on a day like today, I think you definitely need him inside in the centre to get on the ball. Whether whether that's putting him up midfield in the hope that he can um, you know come through from from midfield to onto the breaking ball, give him a bit of freedom. But I think they do need the the the, the, the early scores in fairness to him because Keen Keen Collins made a brilliant save in the first half. Jack Buckley was outstanding in the first half. I thought he really he stood tall when. when so for Charleville now, there's big questions to be asked there. Uh, you know, it's, it was a tough ask to play in that wind, against that wind in the first half. And sometimes, you know, 30 yeah. minutes gone, you're not in the game that much. All of a sudden now, it's cold, it's blustery, it's windy. Uh, it's a big ask now, but they definitely need the first couple of scores to give them a chance to get into this game. 
Yeah, the, the one thing I will say from the game last week as well, uh, I see James, o, James O'Brien is coming on here. He, he did well when he came on the last day. He got a, a few scores and there was a Tim Hall as well come on. As, and uh, their, their bench is very strong as well, like so that will stand to him. Um, so they did plenty of scores there. Like, you know, just need to stick with it, try and get a good start. You never know. They, they, they probably need maybe a goal in the second half, you know, just to get back in it, but they're well capable of doing it. They do have players, Father O'Neill, who could come out the field and win ball and that can be very useful in the second half because you know they're good at those kind of overlapping runs and creating space and creating options yeah I suppose a big, one of the questions they'll ask I suppose they like against in the second half will Declan Dalton see too much ball inside a full forward yeah. you know is he an option to bring him out uh, you know it's almost pointless in conditions like this having him in full forward it's a fair it's like we, we were just talking about it here. it is a fair situation like, like your best players inside full forward you're playing against a, against a gale of wind would you be better off to try maximise the you know bringing him out the field even centre forward or even centre field He'd be an excellent sweeper as well because if he gets on the ball, he'll you know he'll be able to deliver it. So, I think they'll probably start him inside the, in, at full forward in the second half. But something that they may consider at some stage during the second half. Charles, we're going up very early here, lads. Uh, not a few minutes left before half time. They're very eager. That's a good sign, it was. But yeah, I'd agree with you. With uh, Dickie, if the ball isn't going in, you have to push him out the pitch. Try and get him under a few puck outs or something like that, and you know maybe win a free. Some might panic on the ball and stuff like that. Win a free, waste a bit of time and stuff. So, um, be interesting what they do with him. Charleville are ready to go they're out on the pitch already for this Senior A co-op Superstores uh, hurling final it is half time it's 1-11 to Father O'Neill's it's 5 points to Charleville but as we say there will be a stiff breeze behind Charleville in the second half Father O'Neill's now joining us I guess Charleville want to get this going again Ronan because it's so so cold and of course they're not allowed into the uh, dressing rooms yeah, yeah, yeah it's a funny situation like we've had it all year but especially the tail like today we're freezing up here you know we- coats and jackets on and stuff like that so I suppose players just want to get a, get out there and get going again and um, Charleville as I said be looking for a, a big start here the first few scores first five minutes of this game can can tell it you know, to start out decky has gone back in full forward well here we go picking it up as Marco O'Keefe it's windy and it's cold we're lucky all we have to do is hold the microphones even beside me writing stats has to do all that with a freezing hand here's Dara Fitzgibbon trying to get into the game straight away in the second half he creates the option have they created the score no they haven't it's an 8 wide for Charleville yeah I think O'Neill's again have set up uh, fairly standard as well again we were wondering will they bring someone back to when they have that uh, that, that, that advantage now this is to, to play a man in behind the half back line but they've started conventional in the second half that's straight a fantastic win of the ball by Fitzgibbon balls. Fitzgibbon racing forward he doesn't give up on anything he'll bring other players into the game and that's what he does he nearly creates a vortex where defenders get around him and it just creates space for the other red shirts yeah he's a bit fr- I think he was a bit frustrated in the first half so I think he'll be trying to get on the ball in the second half and uh, Charleville will be looking for him to get on the ball because he's crucial to their chances you know on mother way Father O'Neill's have a man down at the moment so he'll require some treatment yeah, I, t- I think from the early play there, I, d- I think they're, they're fairly conventional, but uh, the corner forward for uh, Father Needs was coming out the pitch and maybe create four and a half forward line. My, one and a half hours might drift back and stuff like that. Like you know, They might start off with that and see how they get on, and then if they need to bring someone back in behind the, the centre-back, they might do that. Collect Garvey, the medic, is in to give a bit of treatment to uh, Mark O'Keefe. Another big player for Father O'Neill's all through the last couple of years. Played with him at Killy, uh, had a big experience of playing. Has three county medals in his pocket from, you know, um, over the last number of years at senior level. So uh, a very important player for them. Has gone back, centre back in the absence of Dan Harrington, who was uh, who was who was injured. Mark was kind of would be more well known as a midfielder, but uh, he has settled in really well and has done very well for them. Dickie Dalton got one five for Father O'Neill's in the first half can they get him onto the ball an awful lot in the second half that'll be the big question that's a good ball down the park caught very well by Paddy McMahon Paddy McMahon looking for options but couldn't get through Jack O'Callaghan he's pickpocketed Limo Driscoll three points in the first half chasing after Paddy McMahon it's intercepted by Michael O'Flynn nice movement out of defence from Charleville Cahill O'Carroll breaks kindly Dara Fitzgibbon has a pop looking for the first score of the second half and he's got it 
and played the ball very well out of the fence there. You know, they could have just belted up the field, but uh, three or four hand passes, bought it out and got a good ball into the forwards. Yeah. That'll be good for Fitzy, first score off from play. Uh, did well to, to, to get the breaking ball and turned uh, with a good dummy onto his left side. That'll be good for his confidence. James O'Brien is in for Charleville for the second half. Ball breaks to Joe Mellerick. Barry looking for Dalton. Dalton is so strong, Mead on a yellow card, remember, has to be careful, but did well to hold him up initially. Dalton does get the ball in hand, does get the shot away, and does get the score. What a point, 1-6 for him now. Excellent ball in, like again, used his strength to hold off Jack Mead, and uh, you know, uh, the other cornerback came in to mark him as well, but turned back out and off his left hand. That's an inspirational score for Father O'Neill's. I know that defenders get very frustrated when their forwards score, but there wasn't much more Mead could do. It just goes to show how good Dalton is. Here's Fitzgibbon. Daniel O'Flynn can't draw this one back in it will go wide or will it yes it will and you can see by how much those posts are shaking yeah they look just going back to, that's the difference there now Dickie Dalton put over a great score up the other side of the pitch and, and you'll need one once like that in the second half you come down and you miss one that was probably an easier chance for Danny O'Flynn no there's no easy chances today but um, you notice there uh, Rob, uh, Rob Collan has caught a nice few balls there in the half forward line for uh, Father Neils today and working very well been very impressive don't forget a little bit later on we've got the uh, Bond Secures Premier Senior Semi-Final between Nemo Rangers and Duhalo Live and then later this evening Castlehaven against St Finbars Daniel O'Flynn taps it over and some of the mentors are jumping up and down on the sideline and um, unlike the first half they're doing it in joy rather than frustration I think they're just trying to get him going really to be honest uh, the st Danny's had a nice few shots in this game you know, <laughs> in from midfield kind of inside to forward but he's, he's had f around five strikes a goal I think he's got two or three points at this stage maybe maybe they're just trying to stay warm lads because <laughs> it's absolutely freezing Charleville through Danny Daniel O'Flynn again O'Flynn yeah, nice O'Flynn with the two in a row they're great scores. They come right into the game now. The first couple of balls in the, in the second half, they've won the balls from the puck out and uh, turned uh, turned it over and laid out the short little pass off to Daniel Finn, who's got in centre forward now and has got two really good scores. Yep. And all of a sudden now you're back to a seven point game. Yeah, it's interesting since um, O'Keefe went out with a head injury there. Now he's got two scores since that, uh, so hopefully um, he's okay. O'Keefe over the top, waiting for it was Denny. That's a really good take from James O'Brien. I think that was a father of Neil's ball, was it? O'Brien. Lineson was unsure. Fitzgibbon. Daniel Flynn Fitzgibbon is. has a look up, puts it on the stick, strikes it off the stick, as you can see. Doesn't catch it. Well, oh! oh! stumbled in by the goalkeeper, Colin Sloan and Charleville. Get a lucky bounce, quite literally. Uh, you hate to see it, to be fair. Joe will probably be able to comment on it a bit better than me, you know, but um, oh, you hate to see it. Now, on a day like today, you know, on a cold day, you know, he waited for the ball to hop, maybe would have been better off to come off the line. So even if you did make a mistake, you had a bit of, a bit of room to manoeuvre, but he just, uh, ball came in, hop, just missed the catch, and the ball just dribbled over the line. That's given Charles some life, I know, at this stage. Well, it happens for goalkeepers, as you know, Joe, but it's unfortunate that it's happened on county final day. He just has to put it out of his mind, I guess. Yeah, the next ball now is absolutely crucial because obviously when you know when, when things when you know when something like that happens to you, it's plays in your mind and yeah. you know he might not get a ball up for the next couple of minutes. So uh, the next ball that he has Daniel oh, Flynn with another one. And all of a sudden this whole game has turned around. Uh, He's I in would, form for it now, Daniel Flynn, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I wonder is there some wrong with Mark since he went down because Danny's after taking over the game totally. Um, you know, it's, a, it's what four points now, is it? Four point game. You know, it's uh, it's Charleville's game now. Three point you know. game. Three, yeah, three point game now. It's uh, it's been a, a fierce five minutes there. And even back to that goal, Darren Fitz actually mishit the ball. He should have passed it to Danny yeah. O'Flynn, and um, they were nearly giving out to him, and then it just bobbled in. It was it's not great to see, but uh, hopefully the keeper uh, makes up for it. One no. four already for Charleville in the second half. Just one point for Father O'Neill's. Yeah, and it's all in five minutes. It really, is, yeah. And you, you know? see, running like the O'Neill's mentors are into Mark O'Keefe. You know, he whether he's whether he's carrying that injury from the, the head injury he got, but um, since the, in the start of the second half, Daniel Finn has got three scores, and they've been three crucial scores. So Mark O'Keefe will have to get an awful lot tighter on his man here. Casey away. Just wouldn't quite stick for O'Brien. Here's O'Keefe. 
Charleville first to everything at the moment. Jack O'Callaghan's got an awful lot of balls since the start of the second half. He's been on. He's oh, a lovely he's pass from O'Callaghan. And how have they given him that much space, Daniel O'Flynn? They have, and he's taken advantage. Five yeah. for him now. And it's a two-point game. And that's the thing, as the centre-back now, he's, he's dropping off the centre-back in around uh, the 65-yard line and the lads are obviously targeting him in there. And does, uh, does Mark O'Keefe drop back, protect his full-back line with this, uh, with this wind or does he press out on his man? And uh, he's opted for the start of the second half to, to drop back and uh, then he's taken over the game. Yeah, even at this, even at this stage, like you can even see Declan Dalton has come over and he's talking to the sideline about, um, you know, he's inside full forward and there's no ball coming in. Maybe he'd be better off to come Oh, that's the field. a nice turn by Andrew Cagney. Two goals last week. Looks to add one now. He'll settle for a point. Yeah, yeah he's dangerous when the ball gets in there. He's a goal getter. Tap that one over, I suppose. Every score now, like, you know, is another dagger to, to Father Neils. They have serious momentum, like, and uh, Father Neils are probably wishing for the water break now. Yeah, in, in eight minutes, like that whole yeah. game, the goal, the whole game has turned around. Like you know, so you have to say at this stage now, Charleville would be the, would be the bookies' favourites at this stage to go on to win the game. Um, but here's a chance for Liam O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll has Polly Good McMahon ball. running in front. They need something. They've yeah. got a free man in there. It's Billy Dunn. Billy Dunn. Brilliant. Oh, Work brilliant goal! Brilliant, Break brilliant goal. goal made by Liam O'Driscoll. Very unselfishly went through. And a great pass across to Billy Dunn and uh, no better man to finish. Yeah, three or four great balls there. A lot of fellas would have tapped that over, but they knew they had a man over when they broke the line and uh, worked it very well. What is it about Father O'Neill's and Belters in the wind? They had a fantastic AIB All-Ireland club final against Tullerone earlier in the year. Tullerone winning with the last puck. That's a good score from Dara Fitzgibbon again. Yeah, but they're goal getters. There's obviously something in that for the last few years that they actually work it. They must do an awful lot of working and training and stuff like that. But uh, they're always getting two, three, four goals a game and they have two already you now. Uh, that was great response by Derek Fitz. Great response by Charleville turning on a Fitzy off his, off his right hand from the sideline. Great score over the bar. So they needed that, but uh, uh, it's in the, in the melting pot now, Oshin. It's all to play for. Uh, Mark O'Keefe is way too far off again. Remember, extra time and penalties if required. Did you ever think you'd hear that sentence in relation to a hurling game? Especially and in and Porky penalties. Keith. And in Porky Keith. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. That's very true. Well. There has been a soccer match held here, so anything is possible in life. Would have been a World Cup match held here had we got the Rugby World Cup. That's a good take from James O'Brien. And it's a fine stadium, by the way. Here's Mellerick. And it's a free in to Charleville. Yeah, probably got the ball a bit there, but uh, got the hurley as well and looked a bit wild. So he's probably always going to get the decision. Fitzgibbon taking his time over this one. What an amazing half so far for uh, Daniel O'Flynn. Five points for him so far, four of them in the second half. Yeah, O'Neill's have just made a switch now. Marco Keefe has gone out to midfield. They've brought in uh, number number 20. O'Brien. Uh, number James O'Brien, sorry, he's 20 for, um, 20 for, for uh, Charleville. Uh, Padre Buckley. Padre Buckley has come on and has gone in at centre-back to Mark Daniel O'Flynn. Marco Keefe has gone out to midfield. Fitzy has missed it. Well, that's it. Poor miss by his standards, even in these conditions. Ball breaks kindly for Charleville. Couldn't quite hang on to it, Sean O'Connor. Andrew Cagney. James O'Brien tries to shovel it up into the hand and does. Dara Fitz is inside in the square on the zone, if he could find him. It's drifted in Sloan, catches that well, and he needed that moment, didn't he, Colin Sloan? Because that was the first kind of dropping ball he had to deal with since that goal. Might have to deal with something else here. Fitzgibbon yeah, good to, ah, gets the no, free. No, 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 no. Sure. You couldn't see a free there. Yeah, no, was, there was struggling. I thought that was ball. harsh. I thought that was harsh. Very harsh under the Tom Melrick has done really well to go in. He's man marked it, Dara Fitzgibbon. Not sure if Fitzy's 100%. He got a belt early on there with Marco Keefe in that belt. And, you know, they've put him in full forward maybe just to give him a break for a couple of minutes. But, again, if he's very dangerous inside there, if he gets, to, he gets a one-on-one -on -one inside there, he can certainly get some scores for you. So, uh, chance to make up for the last one. And very, bring, very bring Charleville within two points. Very noticeable that the Charleville half-back line is after taking over now as well. You know, there's nothing coming from the father Neil's puck outs. Uh, you know, is there much plans there to give, give a chart or something like that? But... Um, They'd, they'd want to come up with something because that Charleville half back line have taken over now in the first uh, 10 minutes of the second half. Yeah, O'Neill's have brought Dickie Dalton out to right half hour now to try get some ball to get him under some ball. 
Dalton goes up for it. He doesn't get it. His teammate Kevin O'Sullivan does. O'Sullivan is dizzy from all the turning he's doing there. It's turned over by Charleville. Fitzgibbon. Great take. That's really well taken. He's going to have a gallop at Mellerick here. Fitzgibbon guides it home. Uh, great take and good move to put him in there now with the, the ball coming in so much. And um, yeah, Tom Mellerick as well class. would not be well known as a, as a, as a full back or, you know, he's a, he's a wing back and a midfielder that can. You know, he's a one-on-one inside with Dara Fitz. He wouldn't be very comfortable inside there. And if Fitz gets the right ball here, Oshin, he could do a lot of damage. Yeah, they're trying to man-mark two men now with Danny O'Flynn and Dara Fitz, which is very tough. Very catch. Fantastic catch. Well done, Rob Cullinan. Mm. That's surely a free. It looked to me like Billy oh, Dunn was tucked back, but they well. play advantage. It's a good advantage. He's got Hankert beside him. Goes himself. Keeper does well. Go. Hankert guides it in. Yeah. Did very well, Billy Dunn uh, took the man on. Every time they get the ball in there, they take the man on, see what happens. Uh, and uh, a great goal, I think, was Anchor got in the end. Father O'Neill's have a man down. Mike Mellerick, James O'Brien chasing him. Rob Cullinan is down still for Father O'Neill's. That will be a huge loss. Let's hope he's okay. Daniel O'Flynn, who's caught fire in the second half. Jack O'Callaghan. Gavin Kelleher. Kelleher from the bunker. Again, Doesn't find the green. Again, you look inside. Dariff is given in top of the square, all on his own, uh, and a one-to-one -one inside there. But in the second half, I think Father Needs have come up the field three times, and they've got two goals in the pint. Yeah. Like the, the, the goals are crucial, you know. Yeah, and that's them, and they, they probably need him to keep to keep him in the game, you know. Um, it's a big injury there now, Rob going down because he's been fairly handy for the for the start of the game. Um, but that that's the thing in the back line. You said there's a load of room in front of. Uh, Dara Fitz, um, like with Daniel Flynn causing so much trouble outside, you just have to follow him, you've no choice, and then that creates a vacuum unless they bring someone back. And Actually, it's amazing they haven't they brought have, someone I think back, the they just I think back there. Just now, have, yeah. I think at this stage now, uh, they, have, they have at this stage looked at putting somebody back in behind Daniel Flynn there, they're sent, uh, forward. centre forward. Uh, Gavin Keller has come back, but he, that maybe that's only a temporary thing. Yeah, he's moving um, out again. We didn't get a chance to talk about that third father O'Neill's goal there. The goalkeeper, Keen Collins, made a good save from Dunn Strike. Hankard followed up. Should he turned it around the post and given away a 65 or was there much to It was a do? chance, yeah, it was probably a chance. Hankard is a big man when he's coming in on top of you, so he just flicked it into the net. Colin will, after his save in the first half, would be disappointed with the, with, with the goal. McMahon aiming it over towards Liam O'Driscoll. He's being held up by Michael O'Flynn. And Michael O'Flynn did fantastically well there, the mm. former captain. I said Gavin Keller, yes, actually, Park, my man has gone back centre back, has maybe not gone back in a bit of a sweeper that they've now realised maybe they need to kind of just maybe shore it up a small bit. And, and at the water break, is it too late? <laughs> and at the water break now at this stage, if uh, it's. Um, One four plays 17 it. when you make the conversion. Um, yeah, well, what? Uh, you know what, Father Niels might, mightn't be too unhappy there, like because there was looking around five, six minutes ago there where they were a point down. I don't know, did they get the level? I think they were a, a well, or they get point to level. No, it didn't did they get the level. level. No. But um, at, at that stage, you would have put your house on Charleville, you know, to, to win this. But uh, those two goals, as George said, has brought them back into it and they needed them. And uh, said <laughs> they, they'll be happier than they were obviously five minutes ago, but they still have a uphill value, still have to fancy Charleville here with. You know, 15 minutes left. It got to a one-point game twice, but Charleville have never got level or never got yeah. their noses in front. But at this stage, Jer, who are you fancying? Who's who's got the momentum? Yeah, again, it's it's, it's, it's all to play for. Dave. Charleville have scored. Um, Charleville have scored one nine in that uh, in that in that quarter. Um, O'Neill's two goals in a point. Like, and goals can win matches. It's, I think if they get enough ball into Fitzy, if he can if they can create a one-to-one -one opportunity inside there, I think he he can still do damage. But. Um, these two teams have been well known to you know to go down to the wire and even go to extra time so hard one to call it is a very hard one to call and actually both times that Charleville got to within a point Father O'Neill's stepped up and got a goal yeah great response and when Father O'Neill's got the goal then Dara Fitz came down and got like you know so it's great mentality of both teams you know like it, it's been very good hurling like for the for the conditions we have today you know like very impressive Charleville went on a six score in a row run there early in the second half but Father O'Neill's much to their credit and showing their experience hung on in there gentlemen in a few minutes time I'll be asking you for your co-op superstores player of the match so you might start thinking about that now you can debate it among yourselves but uh, there's still an awful lot of work to do on county final day in Cork in a hurling sense of course last night with the premier intermediate hurling championship Blarney beating Castle Lions and I'm sure it was a good night in Blarney the bonfires going and people celebrating in a socially distanced way Paulie McMahon chasing after it Paulie McMahon 
sending it down the wing. Where will the party be this evening? The outdoor party with the uh, bonfires. Will it be in Charleville or will it be around Ladies Bridge, Balamakota? That's well picked up by Dennehy. Ball breaks. McMahon was thinking of chasing after it. He didn't. Charleville have it back. Good score. Well taken. It's O'Brien. James O'Brien. Yeah, that's his third chance since he came on there. And that's his first uh, conversion. Good score. Runs straight at defenders when he gets the ball. Like that about James. Sloan. Fantastic catch. Down the line it goes. They're aiming towards Dunn. Goalkeeper kind of got caught in two minds there, but Mead is able to take it. And they do well to win the 65. Great he work did, from Father O'Neill. Yeah, he did. He slipped and he went all over the line. And every one of these scores gives Dickie Dalton a chance now to convert into that wind. It'll be a it'll be a tough ask, but again, no better man at this stage to see if he can put it over the bar. Yeah, and the great thing is a waste a bit of time as well. Like yeah. when, uh, you know, playing against the wind, he can take his time with this, get a score. And, you know, it's, it's, it's brilliant for him if they keep getting frees like that in 65s, you know. Definitely Potty McMahon going back centre back has, has kind of sh has shouldered up a bit as well, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, yeah, yeah. They needed to, they probably did it a bit late, really, to, yeah. be, to be honest. But uh, you'd be thinking with the lead they had at half time, maybe that was the option. They brought, uh, Charleville brought Tim Haw on here now, and uh, he's a dangerous player, good in the air, good, good man to take a score. Kavanagh, who got a good point earlier in the game when Charleville desperately needed one, he's off now. He's been replaced by uh, Tim Haw, as you say, Ronan. Daniel O'Flynn looking for his sixth point. It's going to drop instead. Might come in here for Hall, who's just off the bench. The sun is shining, but it's still very, very windy. Hall hits it across. So Brian is trying to get there and does. Slips and bounces. O'Brien. Great score. Fantastic score. Yeah, Fantastic score. score. Got the last one. He's right and that with his left, and he can do that. You know, very, very impressive. And you know, unfortunately for us, he was very. Uh, uh, very good last week as well, but very very good there now since he came on. Two in a row for James O'Brien. Yeah, he's very good hurler. Played with, play with Cork underage a couple of years ago, kind of went off the scene for a bit and has come back. But uh, a very, very good corner forward. The wind is picking up again. It's actually making it quite difficult to hear you two, even though you're not right beside me due to social distancing, but you're not far off. So I'll just assume if I can't hear you, you're saying those things. <laughs> Kevin O'Sullivan is back to take the line ball. It's uh, 21 points to <coughs> 19 when you make the conversion. Again, you know, Charville brought Fitzy back out the field again. Like they're simply moving him around, trying to find, trying to get him into the game. He's gone back in towards midfield. Uh, Great touch. Jack Buckley again has had a uh, super game. Hurler, it's yeah, a super yeah. game. Fitzgibbon leaves it behind. Oh. Dalton oh. tries a strike. Great block down by Jack O'Callaghan. Barry. Can't get it into the hand. Dalton throws his body in there. I think we'll have to go for a clash ball here. No, we won't. Stealing away is Cahill O'Carroll. Looking for Hall, whose hurley is being held by the fullback. Hall gets the ball. Hall from a tight angle. Yes, he he's it. back to goal. That's a he magnificent score. Great score, but uh, an acre of space inside there, you know, and a uh, good ball given in. And that's two balls now since he came on that he won. And a uh, great score there. Now, as we have said, any time the Charleville have got back to within one point, Father O'Neill's have followed with a goal. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and this is a crucial part of the game at this stage. Can Charleville get back level and even, you know, take the initiative and can try to get ahead in the game? They've, got, they've, they've outscored Father O'Neill's in the last, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the first 20 minutes of the game. But the next, sometimes when you come back from a lead like that, Oshin, you know, you get so far, you know, they're a point down, they need to get level and then even drive on to, to get ahead. And that'll be huge for their confidence. Well, I heard a couple of Charleville supporters on the way in saying the wind would spoil the game. It certainly had an effect on it, Ronan, but it hasn't spoiled it. It's been a good contest. No, it's been a good contest. A lot of good hurling there, you know. I, I suppose it spoils, I suppose, maybe the high scoring and stuff like that. But it's still fairly high, like 117 is a good score. Um, but it is obviously a game of two halves, like, you know, as the cliche goes. Tim oh, has he's tripped on the way through and gets the free. He's done very well. The two subs he's, have done very yeah, well. Yeah, he's been exceptional. He's come on, and again, as Ronan said, there's an amount of space inside her. Again, you'll have to question if you're bringing uh, Potty McMahon back from, from centre forward, back to play a sweeper. You've got to play a lot deeper than that. You've got to stop the supply of ball going into Tim Haw. Uh, and at this stage now, again, Charleville have got all the scores in the second half, uh, bar the two, two goals and a point. But uh, this is a chance now to. Um, 
put it back to, 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 to put it level. Yep, the first time they would be level since the very start. <coughs> it's given. Next score is crucial now. Next score again, but I still think, you know, would, would they be better off with O'Neill? Is better off to get Declan Dalton into the game again? He's gone out right half forward, but a lot of the play is not, is, you know, they, they can't get the ball out that far. I think he'd be better off to maybe to put him in or somewhere where he can have an influence on the game. Father O'Neill's yet to score since the water break. Char level have popped over four. Decky Dalton, as we predicted, coming further out the field for the second half, but now he's making his way towards goal. Dalton tries to strike it, but he was smothered. It was a long road with no turn. Charleville steal away with it. They've won everything in the second half. O'Brien, he's had a wonderful time since coming in, James O'Brien. Hall, this time doesn't have the beating of Sean O'Connor, but does hold him up. No free, says the referee. He gave oh, it now it is a free. He eventually but gave it. I didn't know what it was there now. Declan had the ball twice, and his hurling was maybe just uh, maybe a little bit slow. Got blocked down twice, and we talk about Declan for uh, Cork teams and stuff like that. He just need to speed up his hurling, maybe a small bit yeah. more, like to get to that level because getting blocked down maybe at this level you're gonna you're gonna get blocked down in the senior in the county when it comes along. On Conway is in one of the more experienced players picking it up as Liam O'Driscoll. Oh, O'Driscoll bounces off tackle, gets it inside. Thomas Mellerick falls the way of Charleville. Gentlemen, in about a minute or two, I'll ask you to name your man of the match, your co-op superstars man of the match, Daniel Flynn. It won't hold up from. You're putting us under pressure here, Oshin. Ten minutes to go. Like normally, the man of the match is uh, will be looking at someone from the winning team, and this is very hard to call at this stage. Um, Charleville have all the momentum going, but as I say, the next one. Sometimes, when psychologically, when you come back and you get level, the next score is absolutely vital to put your head. Kelleher. Kelleher, that carries, it's a good score from Gavin Kelleher. Uh, it's all Charleville now, you know, they have the momentum there and like, I, I, to be fair, it's been like that for most of the second half, it's just those two goals have uh, kept Father Niels in it, they haven't scored it, say, for quite a while now. And for the first time in the match, Charleville lead, well it doesn't matter how far you're behind so long as you're ahead at the final whistle. Yeah, all to play for now, coming down the stretch here now, a couple of minutes, five or six, seven minutes to go. Um, all the momentum with Charleville. O'Neill's at this stage need to get a score. They put D Dalton has come back in full forward now at this stage. Because they need they need a score. Um, because at this stage it looks like Charleville uh, if they if they can get if they can tack on another couple of scores, it's there. But again, Father O'Neill's have been involved in some great games over the years, they won't give up too easily. Mike Mellerick guides it inside. Looking for the equaliser. Yeah. And it's over. Decky That's Dalton. the difference when you get the ball in there, you know, he will tack him over like, you know, great strike again and he's left. Their first score since the water break. Remember, extra time and penalties if required. So I'll give you another two minutes to think about <laughs> player of the match, lads. Fitzgibbon, oh, he's basically in the stand Good by the time he finishes there. with that ball. Mark O'Keefe with the line ball. O'Keefe gives that plenty. Trying to chase after it is Jason Hankart. who scored a goal earlier in the half. Alan Dennehy held up by Hankart. Hankart does, does really well. Drifts it inside looking for Dalton. Goalkeeper anticipates and does very well. Went down for the foul there, Joe. One of your ones. He's done really well. He was under pressure. Dalton put him under pressure, but he did well to get it away. 22 points apiece when you make the conversion. About maybe seven or eight minutes left when you take um, injury time into account. Sean O'Connor. Father O'Neill's who were beaten by the last puck of the game in the uh, All-Ireland final earlier in the year. McMahon. Great Looked to me like Dalton was being pulled there by Mead. The referee says it's okay. Just overhit that ball. It was yeah. a chance. He was trying to find Dickie Dalton who was inside on a one-to-one -one with Jack Mead but just overhit it. Mead held them up well. The lead score is what the lead score for Charleville. Oh, Can they get it? Take. What a catch that is from Fitzgibbon. He has the He's free got as advantage well. coming. He might need it. Fitzgibbon yeah, puts Charleville in front late in the game. That's what Gentlemen, you need I need you to players. name your co-op superstars man of the match. 
<laughs> we, we had a little chat there, but uh, the, the two lads who stood out for us today are Danny Flynn and uh, Buckley at centre back. So I'm happy with either one of them. That means you have to decide your McMahon delivers long, trying to get under it is Dalton. Charleville just had the numbers back there. They lead by one. It's a slender margin. Jack O'Callaghan. Hall goes after it, can't get it this time. O'Sullivan assessing his options. Had a man inside, but chose to go down the wing and put it out of play. Ger, who's the man of the match? Uh, difficult call, as Ronan said. There's some, um, some, some players for Charleville. If Charleville get to, to, to get to win this game, I think Jack Buckley has an outstanding game at centre-back. Jack O'Callaghan has come into the game big time at, um, at centre-field, really in the second half. Fitzy at times has sparkled, but for me, Danny O'Flynn has been the man with five points from play. Uh, he was the man that really turned it around for and them. I, I think the big thing with that is when they needed him at really right. at the time when they were struggling, he was the man to drag Still. him back into the yeah. game. And, uh, and to be fair to him, he's brilliant. I, I think Jack, Jack Buckley is great throughout the game, great centre back play, very strong even when they were struggling as well. To be fair to even him. James O'Brien, you could make a case. James O'Brien has done really well as well. And Father you, you can make lots of cases, yeah. but I need a name. Who's the name? We're going Danny O'Flynn. Danny O'Flynn. Andrew Cagney. Sloan takes us. This fair, one there was might a, there not was be over of, yet. A lot of good performances Sloan from Father Neil. Getting away from Hall. Sloan stayed cool under pressure. It almost fell to the man of the match, O'Flynn. Sliding in Gavin Kelleher. James O'Brien keeps it in play but gives it away to Mike Mellerick. James O'Brien gets it again. That's going to drop. Sloan controls it with the stick. Board is about to go up. Connor Buckley, by the way, is being warmed up for Charlie. He'll be in soon. That's a great catch in the middle of the park by Hankard. They've got goals in them. Father O'Neill's at the moment. They'd settle for a point because there's just one between them. Marco Keefe for the equaliser. Marco Keefe hits it wide. Yeah, that's one of those two out of ten uh, shots there. one of those. And you look again, Dalton inside on a one to one. Like, you know, uh, would he be better off to, you know, to get the ball into him, get it to Dickey? Maybe he might be able to draw a free, but uh, you know, it's hard to imagine after 10 minutes of Sheen that we'd have been talking about a Charleville man of the match because Father O'Neill's were so much in so much in control in that first 10 or 15 minutes with you know great performances from Limo Driscoll, Dalton. They were on top all over yep. the pitch and uh, fair play to Charleville for coming back and uh, you know they've turned this game around. But um, as you say, O'Neill's are, um, have been in this position before and they're not out of it yet. Three minutes, three minutes for Father O'Neill's to make their way to the top level of senior hurling. At the moment, the spot belongs to Charleville, but there's a few twists and turns yet, Ronan, yeah, you get a feeling. Great hassling there by the Charleville forwards, and that's what we talked about there at, uh, at half time, you know, like very hard for a defender to come out with the ball, and especially at this time in the game when the, when the legs are tired and stuff like that. Like, so brilliant to the Charleville to come, on to, uh, come into it. I think they made a sub there, they brought some hands with that. Yeah, there's something very influential. Tim Hawes come on, and uh, James O'Brien have been really influential in the in the in the second half. It's given. A goal would really seal it. It's Buckley. It oh. bounces wide. Oh, it was a great chance. He had got the ball. He turned it around, but seemed to lose control of it. That would have been a goal to put it to put it out of uh, out of out of out of sight for uh, for Charleville. But uh, here's Hankard again on top of the wall, but. He's been turned over. It's, it's O'Flynn. O'Flynn to make it a two-point game. Yeah, he's had a great game. O'Flynn. Well, he hasn't quite sealed it, but they've put down a deposit. A yeah, very good player, and he's played with Charleville for a good few years. No good warrior, you know, and he showed his class today, to be fair to him. Great catch. That's a fantastic catch. Cagney. Cagney goes for it from a long way out. He has it. This to he make has it a three-point game. Cagney puts it over. It looks like the Jim Forbes Cup is on its way to Charleville. That's some turnaround. That's a great score again. Well worked out to the pitch to Cagney off his left hand, turned to put it over the bar. Uh, three, po three points ahead now with time nearly up. And how appropriate it is, by the way, that the cup is named after Jim Forbes, the late great Jim Forbes, who gave so much to GA and Cork. Here's O'Flynn. O'Flynn hitting it over towards James O'Brien. Father and Eels need a goal, but they've only got just over a minute to get it. Hall, they might need more if Hall can nail this. Hall, he didn't start the game, but I think he's just finished it with that point. Yeah, massive contribution from the subs, as you said. You know, another point by Tim there. Great ball in by Daniel Flynn, like, and they've really taken over this game. Well, we will come back for a deeper chat on this game a little bit later. We're pretty much at full time. We're going to go up to Porky Rim for the football semi-final between Nemo and Duhalo. Ball falls the way of Billy Dunn. Oh. Goal! 
It's not quite done yet. One between them. And 30 seconds to go. Ball came in and Billy done again. The, the, the ace poacher won a great ball and turned and buried it in the back of the net. There's uh, 30 seconds on the clock, but uh, the referee is he's letting it go. So O'Neill's not gone yet. I get one more chance here. Well, Billy Dunn got the first score of the game. I wonder, is it the last? There isn't long left. 25. Plays 26. Just doing the quick maths in my head to make sure it's all right. <laughs> one between them. They have it. They we thought they it. had it wrapped up, Charleville, but Father O'Neill's, well, they're a uh, team that will give it everything. Old Conway couldn't quite get it into the hand. It's run out of play there by Jack Barry. It'll be a line ball for Father O'Neill's. Whatever they do, they, they have to do it quickly. They need to switch to play here. They need to try uh, Dick Dalton or Billy Dunn on this ball and give them a chance to maybe even draw free. Um, Is it going no. to go to red and green or red? It goes to red. And, and, a, and a free. Yes. It's all over and Charleville are the co-op superstores. Cork Senior A hurling champions. They have beaten Father O'Neill's. One four thirteen, sorry, one twenty three to four thirteen, and Ronan Curran, you can't say they don't deserve it. No, to be fair, but to be fair to either team, you know, they both did very well. Like you know, um, I suppose Charleville, I think it was that that kind of five to seven eight minutes just after half time where they they just did they, they blitzed Father O'Neill's, you know, Daniel Flynn. And uh, I, I suppose, unfortunately, the big change in point in the game was that goal that, unfortunately, I went in from a, a long speculative ball. Yep, Ger, final thoughts from you. Brilliant second half from Charleville. Scored 118, and the goal said like was was a uh, was uh, was unfortunate for the goalkeeper, but they scored 19 times in the second half to turn it around. Um, brilliant performance, great game, great goals kept Fotheringham in the game. Uh, I suppose, considering the conditions, a great game of hurling and, yep. I, and fair play to Charleville and fair play to Father Nils for giving us a, a great game and well done to Charleville and they're up senior next year. Yeah, well, joy for Charleville, heartbreak for Father O'Neill's. It's been a long time coming for Charleville. Like Father O'Neill's, they've had a lot of success in recent years, but now they're at the top grade. A little bit later on, we'll be giving you a full review of this game to the Irish Examiner social media channels, but it's a very busy day in Cork. We've got two more live games to bring you today, including Castlehaven and St. Finbar's later on in the Bond secure senior football semi-final but right now it's time to cross over to Parky Rain uh, for the first
Yes, good afternoon in association with Dairy Gold Co-op Superstores. Welcome once again to the examiner's coverage of the Cork Premier Senior Championship. We're down to the last four in the race for the Andy Scannell Cup. And it's Parky Rin here in Cork that will bear witness to the first of the semi-finals as the record 21-time county champions Nemo Rangers take on the three-time champions Do Hallow. Des Curran delighted to be alongside two men who bring us back to the glory days of 2010. Colm O'Neill and Conor Coonahan with me here as well. Conor, if we start with Nemo, it's been... Pretty impressive from them to this point, I guess. Three wins out of three in the group and then reversing recent championship results against Ballon College last time out. Yeah, look, as you said, they've done what they had to do up to date. Um, performance against Ballon College, you know, was a step up again from the, the previous round. Um, they got five goals in that game. Like, you know, great ability to get goals. And, you know, if you're getting that type of goals, you know, you're going to win a lot of matches. But look, you'd be thinking that maybe Joe Hollow would look at this and say, you know, we need to do something about that. But look, Nemo, you know, their typical strength is the, their kind of unit as such, whether that's defensively or attacking-wise, albeit that, you know, I suppose guys like Mark Cronin now and, uh, and uh, also Luke Conley up front are key men, and I think if Joe Hollow can must hold them reasonably well to try and be in this game and to try and stay in the game as much as possible. Um, again, Joe Hollow the last day, you know, probably played quite defensively, particularly on kickouts and lost a lot of kickouts. I think they need to put pressure on them today, but yeah, look, the middle of the field is going to be very, very interesting. Yeah. Who's going to win the ball out there? Who's going to win the breaking ball? And uh, look, it's uh, look, you have to fancy Nemo, but like uh, you'd had four Dohalla players yesterday out playing yesterday with clubs, m must be a bit tired. But there's a lot of good footballers in Dohalla. There's a lot of guys on the bench, so let's hope we get a good game yeah Colm you're uh, from Ballyclaw just over the road from Canturk there and a few Duhallow clubs around you they go back to the well again this year the nearly men they've come so close in recent years losing the last two finals how easy or otherwise would it have been for the management team to lift the squad to go again this year yeah I think look credit to them they've been knocking on the door now the last um, three or four years um, I think these teams know each other inside out now at this stage and I suppose if you week at the start of the whole pandemic, you would say it would have been very difficult for a divisional team to get it going because a lot of club championships were playing week on week. So I suppose it's a credit to the management and the players to, to show up week in, week out. And as Connor said, a lot of, I think there's four starters for Duhalla had played a game yesterday. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to get through that. Will it have any effect? But um, as Connor said, look, it's looking for a, an exciting end-to-end -end game. Uh, I can see it's fairly blustery out there, yeah. so the wind is definitely going to have an impact on the game as well. But um, hopefully we're going to get a, a good spectacle here now today. Yeah, let's check on the teams then. We'll start with Duhallow for you. And as uh, was mentioning there, they were sweating on uh, a few games that were taking place yesterday. Um, they had Cantork, Rock Chapel and Duntariff players all in club action. And the good news is that all three of those clubs won. So I guess it's easier to bounce into a game like this off the back of victories. Um, and the, in terms of fitness, uh, we believe everybody's come through it and they will go 1-15 to 15 as selected. You look at Dunnock O'Connor, like, you, know you know him a long time, 39 years of age now uh, and still going strong. The Cantork group he mentioned, the Hurlers lost at the semi-final stage of the Senior A Championship last weekend. But the footballers yesterday with a massive win against Kilnamarcha and they'll face Knock Negri in the final and all do Hallow final. Who else are we looking out for here, Colm, in this do Hallow team? Um, look, I think uh, Connor alluded earlier on as well about the, the midfield battle. I think there's only one change, I suppose, that started for do Hallow the last game. Um, sees Paul Walsh in at uh, number eight. Uh, he obviously play, played with Cantork yesterday. Um, himself, Paul Walsh and Mark Ellis will be a, a formidable midfield partnership. Two very athletic guys will be up and down the field when, the, I suppose, They'll be coming against two elder statesmen on the other side with Peter Morgan and James McDormand. So it's going to be interesting to see how that battle is going to, is going to fare out. Um, uh, Connor, from an emo point of view, it's hard again to look past the impact that Luke Connolly has made yet again this year. 5-20, I make it, his tally. He scored 3-3 in the quarter-final win against Ballon Colleague. But it's, it's a massive supporting cast with him as well. Yeah, but he has been central to everything, and you, and you just wonder if if Luke was was if Duhalla had someone capable of marking him today, or if he had a bad day in the office, you know, what kind of an impact that would have. But going back to the, I suppose, the midfield thing, I suppose the kickouts are crucial here, and there's a lot of pressure on on both goalkeepers to get to get this right on the day. Now the goalies are only as good as the people out the field in terms of the movement and that sort of thing. But yeah, certainly Luke is a big cog in the wheel, and you know. Have uh, like have have Duhalla got someone to, to mark him? Would be it would be a major major plus if they could. And that's a big part of this game, isn't it? Yeah, and it's what's going to be interesting. Um, Duhalla probably would have watched the Nemo Balancholic game, and it'll be interesting to see will they go man on man um, with the forwards Nemo have, or will they 
start off with a sweeper um, number. I think it's Colin O'Brien for Nemo, plays wing forward, but he has a tendency to drop back, so that might free up maybe Bart Daly to to be to yeah. play as a sweeper. And so Bar Bart Daly's wearing seven, but you think he might operate in that in, in and around that full back line? That's what I'm thinking. Now, obviously, it's going to be interesting to see will they be playing with the wind or against the wind. So that's going to be one to watch out for as well. Yeah, one one quick word uh, maybe before we get the throw in here. The other semi final taking place later, Castlehaven against the Bars. It's going to be a cracker as well. Yeah, I see the bookies have uh, uh, the bars are two to one on that. So I think the bookies probably look. I looked at the bars last Wednesday night, and and they certainly need to improve that performance. Now, albeit that Newsestown are a dogged outfit, you know, to try and break down. I think the bears need to up their game. Everything looks, you know, as if it's ticking nicely for the Haven. But look, you know, it's championship. It's championship bears are very experienced, but I just wonder as are they as good as they have been in the last year or two. Just looking down, Padraig Kearns, and uh, one, not quite sure who it is amongst the Duhallow players that I can see in there who's giving the final rallying cry. They're all grouped in tightly together down under the stand here on this near side. Um, for Padraig Kearns, his fourth year in charge, 2017 semi finalists, uh, 2018 beaten finalists, 2019 beaten finalists. It's an incredible record, but it, it, it's one now they just have to take that extra step. Are they capable of that this year, Connor? Yeah, there comes a point like they have a lot of good young players there in, in the back line. You know, the two O'Man, he's there and not really two promising players in that. You know, you'd like to think that these lads might come of age today, but it's a very, very experienced. Nemo have been down this track so often and, you know, you'd say you, you know, you could catch them on the day and this and that. It very rarely happens and you have to give them fierce credit for that. But um, look, notwithstanding that, certainly do Halla have the ability. It's a question of producing it. Yeah, I suppose it's important to note as well that we were just saying this um, a fair while ago that the final next week uh, between Kentork and Achnagree, so next year Duhal are going to be without yeah. the, uh, one of them group of players, so I suppose they'll be, that'll be in the back of their head as well. Is this their year to finally do it? Yeah, is it now or never for Duhal? Well, they've uh, come so close in recent years. Is this the year? They haven't won it since uh, back in the early 90s, wasn't it, when the great Danny Cullity was captaining their team to back-to-back -to -back titles? And uh, there are connections, of course, to back then. John Finton Daly, his son of the same name, is uh, on the substitutes bench for Duhallow today. And we should mention as well two, two men again who you know well and who continue to give massive service, not just to the county, as it were, but to the club. We'll speak maybe after the anthem about Dunnick O'Connor and Paul Kerrigan. Uh, very much a day up here in the uh, commentary position to hold on to your notes because they could go flying. The wind is uh, starting to come in here now as well. It's very, very blustery. It will be uh, Duhallo. Looks like they'll be playing from uh, left to right as we're looking at it. Just looking to see if there are any late changes. I'm just looking at Bart Daly. The number seven we mentioned might be operating in around the full back line at the moment. It looks like he's gone into the left half forward position, but we'll wait and see exactly how things uh, settle down once we have the throw in here so it is the first of the two semi-finals of the Cork Premier Senior Football Championship taking place at Parky Rin today Castlehaven to meet St Finbars later this evening but first up it is Nemo Rangers against Duhallow these two face off again A fantastic rivalry over the last few years the ball is thrown in by our referee who is Alan Long and we are underway Mark Ellis Cork Senior Hurler stabs the ball back in the first attack it looks like Duhallow are looking to uh, mount that down towards their right-hand side. And here's an opportunity straight away for Jerry O'Connor of Boherbui. Gets the hand pass away, trying to link up with Dunnick O'Connor. And Dunnick O'Connor works it back towards the 45-metre line. Picked up by Finton O'Connor, one of five not agree players in the starting 15 for Duhallow. Can they get a shot away? Paul Walsh of Canturk, one of those in action yesterday. And now it's kept moving by Shane Hickey of Mill Street. And Duhallow settling. Everyone getting an early touch. 
Worked on by Conor O'Callaghan and on in turn by Kevin Kremen. Someone's going to pull the trigger and that will not have enough to carry over the crossbar of uh, Michal A. Martin. The Nemo Rangers goalkeeper gathers that one from Fintan O'Connor. And uh, just a test early on for those two hollow forwards to try and gauge the breeze, the strength of it. Yeah, just an indication there that ball, Fintan O'Connor looked from where we were here, you know, it was quite capable. But obviously, the wind took it, dropped short, and, you know, fellas have got to find their range now pretty quickly and avoid dropping the ball into the goalkeeper's hands. Nemo's first chance to mount their first attack of the afternoon, and it's worked on by Ronan Dalton, who scored 1-1 in each of their last two games. He was one of those who featured in the Premier Intermediate quarterfinal against Nottingham, where Nemo's second string were beaten. Mark Cronin turning sharply and earning his side the free. Yeah, um, great play, patient play there by Nemo. Um, obviously, Duhalla playing with the wind. Uh, Nemo dropped a lot of fellas back and they'll be comfortable enough from working the ball up and leaving, leaving Luke and Mark uh, only two, two lads up. So um, I'd fancy Luke now to, to get this over the bar and, and settle him. We were watching him taking frees uh, in the warm-up and certainly they were pulling to the left-hand side so we might expect well to see him uh, set this well off to the right-hand side, Luke Connolly. He's a uh, tally in the championship in his Nemo Rangers history. 23 goals, 202 points. He's got 520, as we mentioned already this year. He is the main man for Nemo Rangers. Didn't catch that one cleanly. It looked awkward in the end for Patrick Doyle, the Duhalo goalkeeper. Who saw it skip away in wide. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks as if Daniel O'Meany is picking up Luke Connolly. You look at Duhallow of the last few years as well. Uh, as Barry O'Driscoll uh, intercepts that uh, kick out. Barry O'Driscoll's had the haircut for the occasion. Certainly won't be getting in his eyes today anyway. Here is Ronan Dalton. Works it to Kerrigan. Always the link man getting involved. Jack Horgan. Peter Morgan and Kerrigan on the run around. This is patient from Nemo, and now Mark Cronin. All-Ireland under-20 winner last year with Cork looked to drive his way through. Duhallow shut the door, though. Now the orange and black look to break out into the Nemo half. Hand pass popped on to Conor O'Callaghan, who was playing hurling for Drum Tariff in a big win against Brian Dillons yesterday. Here's an opportunity. Seamus Hickey has got support on the inside. Is there a sense of a goal here for Duhallow? Ball left behind, though, by Fintan O'Connor. Nemo have the numbers to bottle him up. And eventually worked the ball away. That was a good turnover there by Nemo. Um, I think Duhal will probably be anxious to, to get a score to settle him down with the win. So um, they'll be looking to get an early score on the board there. Good pressure there by Owen McSweeney. Pushed his opponent out over the line. And Dalla now have the ball in the middle of the field. Jack Horgan was looking for a ball down into the corner. He was looking towards Luke Connolly. Couldn't see him though. Luke Connolly being picked up by Daniel O'Mahony who is the nephew of the five-time All-Ireland winner with uh, Kerry Aidan O'Mahony. Good defensive pedigree there. Now here goes uh, Paul Walsh of Canturk. Cousin of Aidan, son of uh, Jerome. Uh, that one to the right and wide. And that's a wide again and Dunica there now. I suppose that win seems to be very difficult to kick through, but it's very obvious that Neymar putting bodies across the middle there, just outside, just inside the 45, and Dohalla are going to have to go wide over and back to break that down and get somebody with a bit of power and a pace to break that line. Now here's an opportunity for James McDermott, second year in. Former Roscommon Gales man. Takes the shoulder, gets the hand pass away, and Luke Connolly looking to get in behind here. Yeah, great, Bart great. Daly is back there as well and maybe they are looking to double up. Great boss run down the, down the middle there by James McDermott, popped it off to Luke and when Luke is running at you, um, I don't think any defender would want Luke running at you, so um, kick will free here for Mark, um, just on the, on the 14 to, to settle Nemo. But I suppose again in your point there, Cullum, uh, Duhaller giving away the freeze, whereas Nemo on the opposite side aren't conceding freeze and this will be a handy kick over for Mark Cronin. So it was Luke Connolly missing from the right-footed effort. It's Mark Cronin with the left-footed effort. He makes no mistake. First score of the afternoon. And it goes the way of the champions, Nemo Rangers. Oh, kick out for Patrick Doyle. Went to the left last time, intercepted by Barry O'Driscoll. Goes right down the middle this time. All the big men climbing for it. Broken down, though, by Jack Horgan of Nemo. And Nemo have the free to come. The strength of this uh, Duhallow side, they've had two very contrasting games so far. A remarkable game against UCC in the divisional section that went to extra time. And then they look beaten here against Valley Rovers, ended up winning it by a point with a very strong finish. Plenty of character in the team. 
Oh, and that's misjudged. Came out to try and win it. John McLaughlin left space in behind, and Paul Kerrigan punishes. A uh, great score there from Paul off the left. Um, John McLaughlin just dived in there, um, misjudged the ball. But Nima very, very patient on the ball. Um, I don't think playing against the wind will phase them, so they're just taking their chances and up to a two-point win, which is a, a two-point lead is a great start for them. Looks like Paul Walsh is off the pitch at the moment. I think he doesn't have a gum shield, and that's been spotted by the officials. And now there's a frantic scramble to try and find him one. So to, down to Hallow, down to 14 at the moment as Stephen Cronin picks it up and advances. Pops the hand pass out to this left-hand side. Ronan Dalton going so well in training of late. Apparently that's his uh, had to be picked by the management. Here is Mark Cronin. Angle ball watched all the way by Patrick Doyle, one of this... Uh, not agree contingent and their emergence over the last few years, all Ireland junior winners a couple of years ago, has played a massive role in where Duhallow are at the moment. Yeah, Duhallow have a bit unsettled now at the minute. Nemo have the ball, keeping possession, and uh, in contrast to what Nemo are doing, Duhallow are being spread a small bit out into corners, guys falling guys out to the corner forward position when they're in no danger. They need to box it up. Here's Peter Morgan. Good block on that from Conor O'Callaghan. And out for a 45. Out for 45. And Duhalla playing it with the wind, they're still very deep, there's only two Duhalla forwards in their own half, so um, dropping very deep, but the wind seems to be kind of swirling here, so it's hard to know what way it's going really, to be honest. And even looking at one or two of the Nemo shots, they are difficult enough to score, even playing into this side here, and I think it's, you know, it's going to be a fairly low scoring game. Nemo perfect in their group, beating the Valleys, Bishopstown and Douglas, missed out on passes straight to the semi-finals after Castlehaven beat Island Rovers by 21 points. In their final group game, so on scoring difference, Castlehaven had a plus five advantage over Nemo. They're the side who've had a little bit of a break ahead of the semi final against St. Finbars this evening. Luke Connolly, a familiar style of his. That one's uh, drifting left and wide as well. So still remains at uh, two points to nil in favour of Nemo Rangers. Duhallo looking to find their first score of the day. Patrick Doyle looking for options again. Paul Kerrigan seems to be uh, orchestrating the defensive efforts right up front there for Nemo Rangers. And pass worked out to the left-hand side and Duhallo looking to advance now. Here's Shane Hickey. Pops the hand pass. Support arriving on his shoulder. Fintan O'Connor. Nemo again looking to block those spaces. Duhallo trying to work their way through. And then just overrunning it was uh, Fintan O'Connor. And too much on the pass for the first man. But picked up by Owen McSweeney. Jonica O'Connor pops it forward to Mark Ellis. Three points in play against uh, Valley Rovers here in that quarter-final win. But again, it's uh, across the... 45 metre line where Nemo are standing strong James McDermott beaten by a lovely dummy that one's dropping in, it's awkward and it's Luke Connolly in front of his goalkeeper who got his hands on it yeah, Nemo, Nemo are very deep as well against, against the wind I suppose they're happy enough just to, to clog up um, clog up any scoring opportunities but to have look, as Connor said earlier on, look a bit unsettled so they'll be anxious just to get a score on the board just to settle the somewhere Interesting to see Luke uh, gathering the ball there on the back of the edge of the square. Not, not a place I'd want to have him when he's, when he's that potent. I'd like to have him closer to the goal. He's the second deepest of the Nemo outfield players still. As Peter Morgan picks it up and looks to advance. He'd retired Peter Morgan at the start of the year. Having given so much service in his 14th year now. With Nemo Rangers in terms of senior football. But uh, apparently he was back training. Just looking to play a bit of junior or intermediate. And... He was going so well, there was a bit of an injury crisis ahead of their opener in the group against Valley Rovers that uh, he was uh, plunged straight back in and he stayed there since. Yeah, I suppose it can't be underestimated, the, the wind here. And I suppose between the 245s, there's a lot, a lot of bodies run, so it's, it's very hard to, to last the break attack. So I think both teams are kind of clogging up the middle and I think it's going to be a low scoring game the way things have, have started here. And, uh, yeah, maybe a day for low scores and hard running here. Trying to carry that ball into a scoring position. Jack Horgan. Pops the hand pass inside, Luke Connolly looking to help it on first time. Intercepted by Kevin Kremen, the Bohor Bui man gets it to Mark Ellis and now Dunnick O'Connor. When he looks up and there's a, a wall of green and black shirts ahead of him, the hand pass goes astray. Nemo back in possession again. It's Peter Morgan once more, hand passes it to his uh, midfield partner, James McDermott. 
trying to put his head down, get the legs pumping and drive Nemo out of their own half. Barry O'Driscoll. McDermott keeps it moving. Here's Kevin O'Donovan. They're making headway here, Kevin O'Donovan, but it's a case of so far, no further. Held up on the 45 metre line. Kerrigan back to McDermott again. And O'Donovan stays inside the opposition half. Ronan Dalton pops the hand pass away. Colin Tucker O'Brien on the occasion of his 83rd championship game for Nemo. McDermott pops the hand pass inside. He's asked a bit of Mark Ronan there. And Duhallo spy their opportunity pounce and now they look to go again. Owen McSweeney. Support to his left-hand side from Fintan O'Connor. The not an agreement keeping it between them. Back out to Owen McSweeney again. And good running off the ball here. Fintan O'Connor again. And again, you can see he didn't fancy taking the shot on there. Here's Mark Ellis. Held up by the Nemo sweeper. That's Colin Tucker O'Brien. Working it left now. And eventually there is a shot coming in from Paul Walsh. That's a magnificent score. Well, they bided their time. It was patient. And Great it was score. the right pass in the end. Fantastic score. Great score there from Paul Walsh. 45 yards outside the boot. But does the score, I think, uh, Duhalla well needed just to settle him down and um, get, get the score on the board. Yeah, but they were a bit, they were a bit more patient here. They stretched it over and back and they have to continue to do that if they're to going to break down this Nemo defence. And I think the fact that Paul Walsh took it on, judged the win to perfection, saw that one sail over the crossbar, might give some of his teammates confidence that that range is there for them. Down into the corner for Seamus Hickey of Rock Chapel. Gets the hand pass back to Dunnock O'Connor, who made his Duhallo debut back in 2000. O'Connor forced out. This is an ambitious effort as well. Oh, and that's even better than the one that preceded it from Paul Walsh. They're starting to find their range now, Duhallo. Super score there from Dunnock uh, off his right leg on the turn. 45 yards out, judging the win to perfection. Great score. But it is all about judging that wind, isn't it? Uh, particularly if you're on the, on the left-hand side over, the wind will take it. But if you're here kicking from the right-hand side, it's holding it up. So you've got to be very patient and try and find your range. And I think that shooting, those last two scores from Zoo Hallow won't have gone unnoticed amongst the likes of Mark Cronin and Luke Connolly when they start looking ahead to the second half. Short kick out taken to Barry Cripps, who played uh, football at school under Paul Kerrigan for Colossus de Cretary. Not sure whether that proves that Barry Cripps is a young man or Paul Kerrigan's getting on a little bit in years. But Kerrigan and uh, Donnick O'Connor, we mentioned them at the outset, two vital components in this game for their respective teams. Yeah, two, two lads who gave great service to, I suppose, the both clubs and Duhalla, and Donnick over Duhalla, two leaders for, for these guys. Here's Ronan Dalton. Luke Connolly on the run around, the injection of pace. He's left Daniel O'Mahony in his wake. The ball in towards uh, Mark Ronald, goalkeeper's lost it. Might be a goal chance. Duhalo scrambling frantically. John McLaughlin gets himself on the right side to prevent uh, Mark Cronin heading towards goal. But Nemo will have the free to come. Yeah, that, that was a superb ball from Luke. Just just a bit off. And the keeper just mishandled it and gave Nemo an opportunity there. And I think we'll have another point on the board here now for Mark Cronin to put Nemo one point in the lead. Well, if you saw the Nemo game against Ballon Colley, there was a pass from Luke Connolly. I think it was Mark Cronin ended up scoring the goal at the end of it. One of the passes of the season so far. And he's... Uh, more than capable. He's got the vision and the ability to execute those passes, Luke Connolly. Yes, Luke, Luke has that in his locker, all right. And um, I think himself and Mark Rowan have a great understanding. Um, Luke probably goes to pick up Mark at uh, passes most time, so they'll try and link up, I suppose, throughout the game here today. No problems for Mark Rowan and two frees from a similar position for the left footer. So that's two for Mark Rowan and three for Nemo, and they lead by one again. Kick out taken short from Patrick Doyle, but uh, too short as it was. And that's uh, a fundamental error, a basic error from Duhallo. Now the ball will be thrown up. James McDermott of Nemo already on his way to contest it. Up against uh, Paul Walsh. McDermott's on his back, but he's managed to secure the ball. Then it was stripped. A real scramble for possession. It's... Uh, Nemo who have it, Peter Morgan looking to get it away to Connolly, excellent uh, hand in again and to Hallow off they go once more. Great turnover there from Dan and he kind of made up for the, the error in the kick out so to Hallow and the attack here now. Conor O'Callaghan of Drum Tariff looks across towards that left hand side, the side of the pitch where they got their two scores from so far. The first of them provided by this man Paul Walsh 
who had a massive role to play yesterday against Kilnamartra to set up the all do hallow the Premier Intermediate Final between Canturk and Not Negri. But that's for another day. Plenty of air on that one from Jerry O'Connor. Just didn't come in enough in time. And it remains by three points to two. Yeah, again, the fact that it was coming from, from this side of the field this time, he was kicking into the wind and it just, just didn't take. So, you know, I don't think those ones are really on coming from this side. Maybe from the, the left-hand side over, you might, you might get away with it, but certainly not this side. But it's very, very open now at this stage. We've played 16 minutes, Colm, where the wind has been a, a, a dominant factor in terms of shot selection, in terms of how Duhallow in particular are approaching the game. But it took them a little while to find their range, but the two scores they got very impressive. It did, yeah. Look, uh, um, the wind is a, is a huge factor here. It took Duhallow, I think, uh, a few minutes to, to settle and get their bearings with the wind, but uh, super long range efforts from Paul Watcher, Donald O'Connor just settled them. Um, I think Nemo have got uh, there's a two freeze they've got their score, so I think they'll probably be happy enough at the water break to be playing against the wind and a point up. Yeah, that's it, because I think certainly the wind looks as if it's going to be worth something, provided you play it correctly from, from the left hand side, you'll get scores from distance. Like De Holland, uh, you know, in the second half against that win, we'll have to carry the ball through, and that's going to be very difficult to break down that Nemo defence. But look, still very, very much all to play for. Padraig uh, Kearns of Duhalla, the manager, is down there with his selectors James Condon, William O'Leary, Pat Gair, and the coach Cormac Lennon. What will they feel they'll need at half time going in, given they'll be turning around and the elements will be against them in that second half? I think they'll probably say to themselves they need to be, hopefully, from their point of view, a few points up, but I suppose. The main thing is that they're still in the game and that they're patient and that they, they start playing more possession football, not panicking, not giving the ball away and certainly not giving away a freeze at the back. You know, it's about keeping possession now and it's about minimising Nemo's opportunities up front. We could see from last week as well, I think if they can get to half time and, and not, having, not having Nemo got a goal, I think Nemo thrive and getting goals. So if they can keep the goals out, um, I think that's what they'll be focusing on from now until the half time break. And as we've seen in their two games uh, already played, do hello. A side that never know when they're beaten. They'll keep going right to the end. And this one is uh, intriguingly poised now as we head into the second quarter. And the wind whips up again around Parky Rin. To Halle there against, against the wind, pushing up on the kick out, putting the pressure on, on Michal. Um, couldn't get it away short and, and uh, have won the free here now, 45 yards out. And to be fair to Michal and both goalkeepers, it's extremely difficult. Taken back to Bart Daly. Bart Daly has support arriving on his right shoulder. Shane Hickey, and they work it forward into this uh, right-hand corner. Dunnick O'Connor, again looking to bend it off the outside of his right boot. And that's uh, maybe the most difficult shot there is today from that right-hand corner. A uh, bit, bit ambitious there from Dunnick. I think they'd be trying to, to work it into, in and around the D to get the scores. But um, look, this was the, the well on top here now. And Michal is trying to get the ball out short here again. But there's, there's no options. Duhaler after pushing up on him. A reminder, the second semi-final to come uh, live with us on the Examiner later on. St Finbar's against Castlehaven. Dunnock O'Connor with the hand pass gets it to Owen McSweeney. Here's Mark Ellis looking to power his way through. Duhallo feeling he was fouled. Nemo looking for the charge call. In the end, the, the referee decided not to blow the whistle at all. And it's Barry O'Driscoll who gets the hand pass away, but that's a loose one. And Duhallo have turned it over. Back in possession. Paul Walsh works it out to that far side. The pressure came in late from Barry O'Driscoll. And that maybe was sufficient to see that shot fall short and into the Waitfield waiting hands of uh, Michal A. Martin. Yeah, Duhalik is certainly getting a lot of possession now, but not getting the return on the scoreboard, which is key with that wind. Here is Barry Cripps. Some space to run into over on that far side. Jerry O'Connor going to cross to uh, make the tackle now and hold Cripps up before he can advance into the Duhalik half. Great it's pressure. Uh, Duhalla putting on uh, an awful lot of pressure since the water break. They're really after opening the notch and two or three turnovers there in the last few minutes. Well, maybe they feel this is a, a vital quarter for them, that they need to find a, a lead. Well, that one was really struck from a long way out. Looked like it might carry as well. Just dropped short. Martin got his hands in it again. I think he, he was looking for I see Shame Sick. He made a run inside. I don't actually think it was a shot. I think it was a pass, but uh, you see the, the power of the wind there. It carried it all into Michal Martin there. Now here is Barry O'Driscoll for Nemo, held up and halfway, Carrigan picks a lovely angle, good supporting run, there's the hand pass for Ronan Dalton, Bartelli standing there in front of him, unable to halt his charge though, Dalton gets it away to Mark Ronan, lovely little shimmy, feigned to come inside, back onto his favourite left foot and over the bar. 
Yeah, a lot of good work done by Ronan Dalton in the build up to that. You know, had the power and strength to do it and, and uh, popped the ball in to, to Mark Cronin and put it over the bear. And he's a quality operator. Mark Cronin made his debut two years ago in the championship against Clyde Rovers. Scored 1 3 in the All Ireland under 20 final against uh, Dublin last year. And pass from Paul Walsh. Here's Owen McSweeney, strong ball carrier. Saw him in action with the Cork senior team in league and championship last year. Mark Ellis gets his hand pass away. But look how many Nemo shirts are back behind the ball again. Well, that was hand uh, over the shoulder from Barry O'Driscoll. Referee was looking to allow the advantage. Didn't need to in the end. Point taken. And uh, a very good score that from Fintan O'Connor. Great score from Fintan there. He's been, he's been um, very active in the first, the first 20 minutes. Got on a lot of ball. It's a, a, great, a great score there. Just a bit, one point between them again. Fintan O'Connor scored 10-22 for Nottingham in their march to the Premier Intermediate Final. Scored four points in the quarter-final win against the Nemo's second string. As that's beautifully taken by Jack Horgan, showing his former midfield uh, fetching skills there. Barry O'Driscoll, back to Horgan again, some space to attack in front of him. He's got Ronan Dalton to his left. There's the hand pass, Luke Connolly comes out to receive it. Beautifully balanced off either side, Luke Connolly. Ronan Dalton again, 1-1 in each of the last two games and just uh, thought for a moment about heading towards goal. Bottled up, an excellent defence again from Duhalo. Yeah, but Nemo probably overplayed it a small bit. Some great intricate passes, but then, you know, left it a bit too, too intricate in the finish. And the Duhalo management down below us asking their team to get on with it to drive up the pitch here. Luke Connolly comes in with the shoulder. Fairly hefty one, a robust one on Kevin Krem, and the Bohor man takes it well, though. And here is Bart Daly. Ball into Owen McSweeney. McSweeney, strong runner, good ball carrier, gets it away to Fintan O'Connor. Paul Walsh out to the right hand side, here's Conor O'Callaghan. Fantastic hurler, part of the Cork under 20s the last couple of years. Uh, Conor O'Callaghan. And here is Donnick O'Connor coming out the field to get on the ball a little bit more, held up by Barry O'Driscoll. Paul Walsh. O'Callaghan. It's a sharp turn. A chance to get his shot away here. That's beautifully taken. Great kick there by Conor O'Callaghan. Um, to hell a very patient around 40 yards, just waiting for the gap to open. And great direct run by Conor and a great score. Four points for Duhalo from four different scorers. It's, it's a bit worrying though to see that point being kicked from nearly 45 metres there. And with that win, like, you'll think that Nemo you know, will, will really punish in the second half if they get, that, uh, if they get the ball up there. Yeah, both teams seem to be getting a lot of bodies behind the ball and, and carrying it up through the hands and waves so um, I don't think it's a, a day for direct long kick pass in football. Yeah, it was the first half that won, essentially won the county final for Nemo last year. They ended up winning 2-8 to 10 points against Duhalla. They scored just two points in the second half, Nemo Rangers. The damage very much done in the first and very much done by Luke Connolly on that day. He scored two goals in the space of as many minutes. And uh, Paul Kerrigan's been penalised here. That free will be brought forward and this in a very kickable area now. Donnick O'Connor out to have a look at it. Donnick O'Connor who lost the 2012 final scored 48 points that year. The 18 final he scored 230 that year. Donnick is trying to gain a few yards on that free but the, the revenue he's up to. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of experience almost won out. He might have nicked a little yard there maybe in the end, but that's a beautiful strike. Caressed over with plenty to spare by Donnick O'Connor. And Duhalo find themselves in front five points to four. Yeah, and that's the uh, important psychology from a Duhalo perspective, to get their noses in front and maybe put a small bit more pressure on Nemo. A few little off the balls, uh, toing and froing going on here. We'll keep an eye on those. Seamus Hickey getting involved with Kieran Histon. Kieran Histon, who... Has won uh, counties within McKilly at senior hurling level. Here's Bart Daly. Patient to keep it. And now the support arrives from Shane Hickey of Mill Street. And Shane Hickey driving beyond James McDermott. Now needs some support. It arrives from Mark Ellis. Hickey will have to go again though. Tried the jab, pa the jab pick up. Might have been better just bending his back and getting his toe underneath. And in the end it's Hickey who commits the foul and uh, Nemo have the free. 
Again, Duhal will be disappointed. Two or three men on the ball there and still managed to turn it over and no need more on the counter-attack. And pass back to Stephen Cronin. One of the three Cronins on the team, along with Mark and Alan. And here is uh, Colin Tucker O'Brien. See, Duhal are playing with nearly two sweepers inside in front, in front of Luke Connolly, so I think they're anx anxious to mind the house to make sure they don't get it, sneak in for a goal. Yeah, I think we anticipated that with Bart Daly, as we said at the outset uh, before the throw-in, wearing seven, but we expected him in and around uh, the full back line. And Luke Connolly, we might see him play a little further out the pitch in the second half yeah. with the elements in his favour, but he's in there in the full forward line on his own at the moment, and that pass won't hit him. I'd be a little concerned that Duhal had three backs back in... Uh, uh, Luke at one stage there and like if you if you keep sitting off like that Nemo are a good team they'll open you up and they'll run through it well, the management uh, respective management seems doing their best to solve the issues they have from the sideline but the players will have to uh, come up with some solutions on the pitch as well here is Bart Daly a chance to step towards the 45 meter line Owen Max Sweeney Barry Cripps is the man picking him up at the moment Max Sweeney fouled Starting to get more and more on it, Owen McSweeney, the longer this half goes. And pass pop forward to Conor O'Callaghan. O'Callaghan, oh, it's a good supporting run from Daniel O'Mahony, who's left uh, Luke Connolly alone for now. To add another number to the attack, Seamus Hickey, held up by Histon. Good transfer inside, or it looked like it was at the moment for uh, Mark Ellis. I don't, yeah, just last few attacks. Um, Duhal will be disappointed. A lot of kind of balls that have been turned over and, and just given given the possession back to Nemo. And if you keep giving possession back to Nemo, they, they're going to punish you. Well, the few who are lucky enough to be in here for this uh, county semi final are witnessing a tight affair so far. As Nemo got on it again with Ronan Dalton, looking to measure the pass, not easy in these conditions. Has managed to execute it though. Kevin O'Donovan works the pass to his right hand side. Colin O'Brien. Waits that one beautifully, Paul Kerrigan right on the end line, needs a little bit of support now. Kerrigan looked inside, saw Connolly being well marked, it's back with James McDermott, Stephen Cronin up from centre half back to his left, instead he looks to his right. O'Brien, and now it's Barry O'Driscoll, cuts across it beautifully with his left foot, terrific score from Barry O'Driscoll. Great score from Barry O'Driscoll, but again, oh, it's, it's defying me in terms of the wind there. He's 35 yards out and he kicks that, and he had plenty to spare. So, I don't know, is the wind going to be that significant of an advantage? It's certainly playing games with us up here. Yeah, it's, it's swirling, it's hard to know which way it's going, but great kick there from Barry. Bart Daly ships the shoulder from Luke Connolly. Here's Jerry O'Connor, the experienced Bohor Bui man. Luke Connolly trying to get back at him. Gets the hand in to hold up his progress. Donnick O'Connor. Keeps Duhalo moving. Here is Mark Ellis. Looking for options. Big, strong, mobile midfielder. Now, will this carry it? Will. Oh, Mark Ellis. That's magnificent. Under real pressure. Off balance. And that been, is uh, you, right over the red spot. You'd have been questioning Mark Ellis there. He seemed to be dithering for a bit. And you were kind of saying, don't, don't try it, don't try it. But to be fair to me, kicked three points here the last night against Valley Rovers. And that's a great score. Uh, credit to both sides. There's some Madison score has been taken from bottom of the outside of 45 in, into a strong win. So a great score there from Mark. One that they, one that they needed. Takes him to 1-5 in the championship now. Three points, as Connor mentioned, against Valley Rovers. Adding to his 1-1 against UCC. McDermott. Good bit of uh, work from Paul Walsh just to break it out of his hand. But here's Jack Horgan. No one in front of him. And Horgan strides inside the Duhalo 45. Look for the right-footed pass. Looked a little untidy, though. And Duhalo recover. And now they can come away with Kevin Kremen. Scored a point in last year's final defeat to Nemo. And he's driving on here. Horgan having played the errand pass. Working hard to get back goal side again. Kremen. Gets his hand pass to Fintan O'Connor. Owen McSweeney. Held up by McDermott. Close there in support is Shane Hickey. Hickey works it inside to the man wearing five. That's Kevin Kremen looking for the angle ball into the corner for Seamus Hickey. The race on with Stephen Cronin. And well judged by Stephen Cronin. Got his hand to it. Oh, and that's high. An easy decision, that one for the referee. Good piece of defending that by Stephen Cronin to win the race of the ball against Seamus Hickey and then drive out, draw the foul, win the free. 
And will it be a yellow card for Donegal O'Connor? Do a picking a poor option there. The ball into the corner. Even if, if if it was gathered inside, the guy was going to have to run through. They're just going to have to be patient uh, more and more. But again, typical. Nemo have been turned over here on the other end a few occasions, which would be untypical of them. Nemo Rangers, the club that have uh, been ultra consistent, a record 21 titles in the last 15 years, quarterfinals or better. Eight titles included in that run. Ball in from Barry O'Driscoll towards Conley. He looked to get his hand on it. Excellent defending again. And there's the, the value of the sweeper. Once the ball broke, Bart Daly was right there to take it for Duhallow. Yeah, a few, few scrappy, uh, few scrappy uh, mishandlings going on around the base. But as you say, the value of the sweeper, Bart Daly came across and cut out that ball. But um, very well won around the middle by Barry. Just who played a great ball in, but as well, de well defended by Duhallow. Now the issue then for Duhallow, though, with so many men in around that full back line, once they cleared it, out towards the centre of the field. Uh, it was Nemo who had the numbers out there. Yeah, uh, they've just looking at this attack now. They've, they've two men, um, two sweepers back now. They're slowly starting to push out, but if you give Nemo the, the opportunities around the 45, they'll, they'll work a triangle and, and kick scores from 30, 35 yards out. There's the angle ball again, the race on Daniel O'Mahony. He's starting to uh, enjoy his task, I think, against Luke Connolly. 32 minutes played uh, in this first half, and now the half time whistle. It's to Hallow leading by six points to five and uh, the Duhalo supporters who are here a rousing ovation for their team they're in front but it's only a point and now with the, with the change of ends in the second half it's going to be intriguing to see but as you mentioned the point that we saw from Barry O'Driscoll might give Duhalo hope that they're kickable points there for them in the second half yeah and I think typical of divisional teams the longer they're in the game the better they'll get and you know, it's interesting there in the last few minutes, Daniel O'Mahony is doing quite well on Luke Connolly. Um, you know, again, it's, it's a question of, you know, trying to isolate the, the better players inside and, and, and get, them, get them on the ball. And both teams, you know, need to, need to do that if they're, to, if they're to get the score. And a goal will be crucial in this game. Not so sure um, whether we'll get one or not. But if we do, I think that's going to be a turning point. Yeah, I think, I think to Hallow actually part... No, there's been a lot of errors, but they've kicked some good scores. But I think if you told them they'd be point up at half half time, albeit they'll be playing against the wind here now, but they'll be happy enough not to, to concede any goals here, I think. Yeah, and if there are goals lingering from that, that final of last year, they were they were almost a beaten side at half time, such was Nemo's dominance and the scores that they racked up in the first half. Very different game today. Yeah, Paul Welch has been breaking a lot of ball in the middle of the field. You have to question, is that guy going to be able to keep this going for another 30 minutes? Because mm. he put in a tough hour yesterday below in Mallow. Um, and like... They're more dominant in the middle of the field, uh, Duala, I feel, but I think Nemo could get a grip there yet. Yeah, I uh, think in these conditions as well, it's not just the, the difficulty in trying to pick your score, pick the right, the right place to kick it from, the right time to kick it, but even just with a wind this strong, up and down the pitch, catching your breath, keeping those legs going for, for an hour is going to be difficult. Yeah, it is, look, it is easy for us here, but there's really tough conditions out in the pitch. Um, it's going to be interesting what way will, will Duhalo set up now um, playing against the wind. They were with the wind that's in the first half, and, and uh, for me, they were probably a little bit defensive. Um, they weren't really pushing out of Nemo. Nemo with the wind, like Nemo have the, the players to, the, to pick shots off from 30 yards, 40 yards, if, if Duhal are sitting back too deep. So it's going to be interesting to see what way they're going to set up. Yeah, that's one of the questions we were asking the first half. Will, will we see Luke Connolly further out the pitch in the second half, do you think? Uh, it, possibly, but I suppose I'd still like to see him close, close to the goal where, where he's really going to hurt them. But like, it's, it's you know, I think team's going to get tired now in the second half and it's going to be about you know it's going to be about fitness and it's going to be a bit about power you know both teams I think will set up defensively again in front of the deep put bodies there but you know concentration will lapse if you have people now with a bit of strength and a bit of power guys like Paul Welch there now would, would have a bit of mm. power you know going through in that Saturday but like I'm sure Nemo halfbacks and things like that you'll see a bit more more overlapping from the likes of Stephen Cronin and Jack Horgan because uh, to be fair to Duhalla, you know, in the last 10 minutes, they've contained them to a fair extent up front. In, ter in terms of the conditions as well, you mentioned right, right before throwing the athleticism of the Duhalla pair in midfield. You add in, say, Kevin Kremen and Shane Hickey. Big roles to play now in terms of carrying that ball forward in the second half. Yeah, because it, it is with the wind, it's very taxing to be running there now against the wind. So I suppose that brings into question what kind of benches do both sets of teams have? And, mm. I know Duhalla have been getting a lot of joy from their bench the last few games. Now Dara Cashman and Dara Mining came off the last two games and, and, and got some vital scores. So um, it's going to be, obviously there's going to be substitutions made. It's just going to see who's, who's going to have the better impact off the bench. I think that's going to be 
vital here as well today. Yeah. Connor, I, I meant to mention it at the start as well, but I mean, you've been in that divisional setup. You've won county titles. Uh, two, was it with, with, with Ian McKilly, playing yeah. within that divisional setup where it's, it's a very different dynamic to get a group together. But if you can get the bond right in terms of how far that can carry you. Yeah, and look, Dual have been together for the last three or four years, that particular group. So they're very much like a club side at this stage. You know, they'd be, you know, you get that bond when you're together collectively year on year. And, you know, they're as close to a club team now as you'll get, albeit that fine tuning might might be required but a lot of experience in them now too you know they've been there before and um, it's it's you know it's a it's a big opportunity for them now and you know i suppose whether we like it or not Nima, Nima come into this you know pretty hot favorite today and that's that's a fair burden to carry every day of the week that you come and, and there's some days you just it just doesn't happen for you and the problem for i suppose when you're managing a team like that is to the complacency element to try and ensure that your guys are on their toes as it is now most people are still saying yeah Nemo in a good position six to five but at the end of the day you've got to go out you've got to make it happen Nemo have scored in their in their four group uh, games up to this point column I think it's uh, five uh, six seven eight eleven goals the fact that Duhalo kept them scoreless in that first half there was a lot mentioned of the, the Nemo firepower in terms of getting goals but that's a big psychological boost for Duhalo yeah and uh, if, if you if Duhalo came in at half time said that they'd keep uh, Nemo to, to no goals they'd be happy but so was Nemo or Nemo they could turn around now and have yeah. three goals in, in the first ten minutes so I think if Nemo or if Duhal are going to have any opportunity of turning Nemo over here, they're going to have to keep the goals out. So um, it's going to be it's going to be a tough ask with the, with the quality the Nemo forwards have. Um, but at the moment, there hasn't been any real clear cut chance of goal, so they'd be happy enough with that. Yeah. What wins it now, Connor, for you for for each of these respective sides? If you were the manager on, on each side, given those instructions, what I wins it for them in the second half? You need it. You need a few guys to up their performance a little. Just give that bit extra. Like and the Duhal said, you fellas like. Jerry O'Connor there, no one makes me guys that can punish. You know, they haven't done it now in the first half here today, but they're well capable of kicking scores. On the other side, you're depending on the Mark Cronin and the Luke Connolly to get the scores. And and that's a small bit of a worry for Nemo because you, you do tend that yes, we leave it to Luke, we leave it to Luke. And you know, in fairness, Dohalla have put a big focus on Luke and trying to shut him down. And it has worked reasonably well to date. Can they maintain that? We don't know. But the longer this goes on, yeah. the happier Dohalla will be in keeping it tight. Yeah. This morning we saw the weather conditions and we saw it was ahead of us. We knew this was going to be a game hard one, but didn't we? Yeah, and, uh, and we've been we've been saying there we've probably been a bit critical on players and there was a few sloppy turnovers, but conditions are difficult and I think whichever teams can probably limit uh, making these sloppy turnovers and errors will have a will have a fair sparing in, in what way it's going to finish up. Yeah, it's a massive 30 minutes ahead for Nemo Rangers and Duhallow here, the first of the Cork Premier Senior Football Championship semi-finals. Brought to you. Uh, on the examiner, thanks to Dairy Gold Co-op Superstores, uh, to Hallow, who have been to the finals, but they haven't been winning them. They've lost four finals since they last won it back-to-back, -back 90 and 91. They lost in 98 to Bantry, in 12 by a single point to Castlehaven, and they've lost the last two by a goal against the Bars after that epic three-game semi-final against Castlehaven, and by four points against Nemo Rangers last year. And uh, as we mentioned, with the Premier Intermediate semi our final to be contested between two Duhalo clubs in Canturk and not Negree. Maybe there's a feeling in Duhallow that this has to be their year in terms of this particular group. And straight away, Paul Walsh is onto the front foot here. Well, that would have been some rousing score there. It's just gone fractionally to the left and wide. Very close. He was looking at the linesman there for that. And straight away from the throw in, I see Bart Daly went from straight from wing forward um, back to sitting in front of 45 now. Albeit he's after pushing up here now for the kick out. But I think that's their tactic. Have at least one or two sweepers, I'd say, here against the wind. Paul Welch certainly very powerful going forward. You probably would like to see him steady himself in terms of in front of goal or part with the ball, but his power could cause problems for Nemo. Yeah. Paul Welch, son of Jerome, who's the link back to those uh, glory years of the early 90s. Pass worked out to the right hand side. Here's Seamus Hickey to resume his battle with Kieran Histon. Two big strong men. Hickey is the stronger on that occasion, though, but from an almost impossible angle. Very difficult shot to take on. Yeah, I think Seamus will be fairly disappointed with that because, you know, the shot wasn't really on. He was in a good position to be composed and lay the ball out. Well, good work from Michal A. Martin to see that quick kick out was on to the left-hand side. Not really a day to be uh, trying to kick long to pick out a teammate. So they worked that one quickly and worked it short. Nemo, now they're heading towards the centre of the field. Worked back by Histon. Here's Jack Horgan inside to Alan Cronin. Cronin gives the hand pass and looks for it back again. Alan Cronin bringing his side forward. Here's an opportunity for Stephen Cronin. 
To drop a ball in, just too much in it though for Ronan Dalton. Duhalo back in possession, they start with Patrick Doyle. And the captain gives it to Bart Daly, who's been up and down the pitch, but he's back where we would expect him to be. Here's Donnick O'Connor, back inside his own half. Racing forward, Mark Cronin trying to track him back. Here's Owen McSweeney. Another test here for Barry Cripps. McSweeney powering on. Cripps gets himself goal side again. A little bit of an off-the-ball stuff between Jack Horgan there and uh, Fintan O'Connor. And Dunnick O'Connor. That one's heading well off target. It's touched off Kevin Donovan, though. And had to try and uh, get his balance under pressure and keep that ball in play, which he's managed to do. Yeah, I think that's that's three probably opportunities for Duhalla in, in the first two minutes here to just to get the scoreboard taken over again. And uh, probably shot selection there from Dunnick probably wasn't done, but um, they'll have to keep an eye on that against the, against the win is going to have to take that in and around 25, 30 yards out. I think if either side in this second half can find that little purple patch, maybe three, four, five points on answer, that could well be the winning of the game here. Duhalla have had their chances at the start of the second period. Haven't taken any of them though, and as it is, it's as it was at half time. Duhalla leading by six points to five. Kevin O'Donovan. And Kevin O'Donovan getting involved again off the ball. And not the first time that uh, that's happened in this half. Here's an effort that is going right. No, but just inside the post. So Nemo have leveled it up. That's Tight. a good ball. Good score from Colm O'Brien there. But there seems to be a bit of off the ball stuff going over. And the linesman is now on the field. It was Kevin O'Donovan. Now, who is it from a do hello point of view? Just trying to say, was it John McLaughlin? John McLaughlin, I think. Yeah. And after whatever happened, Colin O'Brien there, he kicked the point. He went down straight away, whether it was a, a muscle injury or after kicking it, I'm not sure. But oh, so the referee took uh, the advice from the linesman. And he's having a good chat here with John McLaughlin, the captain Canturk yesterday in that win against Kilnamartra. Looks like there's a card of some description coming out here. I suppose that's the worry you had for, for Duhalla. Look, Nemo, just one opportunity there in the first half, straight away over the bar. Uh, a lot more, I suppose, e more economical than, than Duhalla were with, with that win in the first half. So it'll be something to, to keep an eye on. So John McLaughlin yellow carded. I think he was trying to make the point that Kevin, o, uh, Kevin O'Donovan should have been too. Linesman didn't see it that way though. And here's Luke Conley. Gets the hand pass away quickly to Paul Kerrigan, striding forward. Angle tightening all the time. Two men marking him, one of them John McLaughlin. Now Luke Conley coming out. Looking to find that yard of space to get his shot away. It's not there at the moment, so it's back with James McDermott. Here's Jack Horgan. Stephen Cronin up in the corner forward position. The Nemo centre half back. Taking their time. Working it through the hands, Nemo. Here is uh, Colin Tucker O'Brien. James McDermott again. Good pressure there, though, from Fintan O'Connor. Nemo finding it hard to work their way through. Maintaining possession. All happening in front of Duhallow, though. Alan Cronin, and he's had a bit of a swing at that with his left boot in towards Barry O'Driscoll, broken down. Goalkeeper leaves it to his defence to deal with. And eventually Patrick Doyle comes and looks to get involved. And they do manage to work their way clear to Hallow. Picked up by Kevin Kremen. Barry Cripps working back. Kremen's done well though to evade two tackles. Then it was Shane Hickey. And now the impressive... Uh, Paul Walsh down into the corner towards Seamus Hickey tall in stature and got his hand in it here's Dunnock O'Connor good supporting run faced up by Alan Cronin McDermott there as well as they try to double up on Dunnock O'Connor gets the hand pass inside Seamus Hickey oh. it was just for a moment goal side of Kieran Histon just couldn't take the ball with him though Histon got his hand in we haven't had many goal opportunities today that was looking one, like one for a second for Duhallow that was close again and Duhallow be disappointed with that you know um it was an opportunity, but it hasn't happened. And Nemo now on the counter with Luke on the break. Daniel O'Mahony working hard to try and get back at him. He had a couple of pulls and drags at Luke Connolly. Referee was looking to allow the advantage. Brings it back for the free now. Yeah, I think I think Luke, Luke might fancy this, but going back there, Duhalla very close to getting in. A great hand in by Kieran Hisson to, to deny Seamus. Sicky. Seamus is a, a direct runner. Anytime Seamus gets the ball, he only sees one thing, and that's the black spot. So great hand in there by um, Kieran Hisson. Kieran Hisson in those... Uh, select groups of players who have won county, senior county titles in hurling and football as we mentioned he was uh, a regular part of the Immokillie successful setup of the last few years but here is Luke Conley 
And uh, this would be something from here. As we saw in the first half, it's perhaps the most favourable part of the pitch to be kicking from. And Barry O'Driscoll taken under the ball. Good piece of defending there to make sure he couldn't get up and get a touch on that. And harmlessly wide in the end. Again, another indication of how difficult that wind is when your fellas like Luke Connolly now missing scores like Dunnick at the other end. Very experienced players. It's, it's extremely difficult out there, I'd imagine. Yeah, one of those days when uh, certainly as footballers you take the driving rain as long as it was coming straight down against that wind like this any day. Nemo putting a lot of pressure on Duhalla kickouts as well, just like Duhalla doing the first half. Yeah, and that was a big factor in last year's final as well as uh, Nemo went after the Duhalla kickout. Here's Ronan Dalton. Mark Ronan shows for it well. Support to his left hand side. Kevin O'Donovan keeps it moving. Here is Jack Horgan. Likes it. Umpires like it. Excellent score. And a little bit of afters now. Mark Cronin's getting involved here. Jack Horgan trying to play a peacemaker. Fantastic score that though. Judged it beautifully, Jack Horgan. But it's starting to get a little bit tetchy out there. We're seeing more and more off the ball collisions. Yeah, things had enough. But I think both teams, in fairness, they're, they're not letting any. They don't want any keeper to short kick out. Both teams pushing off the kick out and, and making it hard on the keeper. And it's all about the breaking ball now and the kick out. And Nemo have won the last few. Yeah, it's not a great kick out that one from Patrick Doyle, claimed uncontested by Peter Morgan. And Luke Connolly once again, uh, Daniel O'Mahony a little bit too eager, bundles him over. Barry O'Driscoll won't get on the end of that one. But the last few minutes, Nemo have been uh, more or less camped inside the Duhallow half. They've got a couple of scores to get themselves seven points to six in front. Duhallow now after a good start to the second half in terms of getting on the ball and getting forward, albeit without taking any scores. Need to try and find that ball again, get on the ball and get moving. Absolutely, and you'd imagine, you know, whether it's Duhal or Nima, that you'd have some bit of a system at some stage when you run into a sticky patch that you have some bit of a plan that you can get it out. That certainly wasn't the plan. And the kickouts aren't working, and Nemo are flooding that central area, but now they might be caught on the counter. Here's there. a chance for Duhal. The ball worked early for Dunico O'Connor, who takes it in his stride. Barry Cripps racing to try and get back to him. Dunnick O'Connor, score is on, win for goal, but pulled it wide. Well, it was too tempting not to try and find the net for Dunnick O'Connor. There was an easy point there if he wanted it. Yeah, I think, look, space is hard to come by here. There was, uh, turned over the ball, overlap came, and uh, just, just, just wide of the post by Dunnick. But, um, I think, looking back now, probably a pine might have been a, a better option just to, just to settle down a bit, but it's hard to say one-on-one -on -one not, to, not to go for it. Well, it's a let-off for Nemo for sure. You saw how quickly Duhalo broke one lovely ball out to Dunnick O'Connor and he was in on goal. It's a warning for Nemo. Who are back in possession again with Paul Kerrigan. Here is Tucker O'Brien. James McDermott. Right on his own 45. Alan Cronin has come racing out of the full back line. Well, so he's that midfielder needed a ball to give. Oh, and Ronan Dalton's overrun it and he's been dispossessed and Alan Cronin has a long way to go now having done so well to get his side up the pitch here's Jerry O'Connor he's quick and it could be a three on two here Jerry O'Connor decision time here is Seamus Hickey and he's buried it great goal by Seamus uh, very well worked in fairness Jerry O'Connor broke it it was a, a three on two um, gave it to Seamus and Seamus as I said, is a great man to get a goal and I think, as we said earlier on, a goal is going to be a big score here, so that's a big score for Duhalo. Jerry O'Connor, great burst of speed there, you know, just got her inside his men and laid it on a plate for Seamus. Well, it was outstanding from Jerry O'Connor, you look at the, what Alan Cronin had done to get Nemo out and then Ronan Dalton lost possession, but from there, Jerry O'Connor took over, strode forward, timed the pass to perfection. And soon after, Seamus Hickey was billowing the back of the Nemo net. There's a change for Duhalo. Coming on is number 29. And uh, that is uh, Aidan Brown. Well, he was on. He's off again now. Yeah, 29 on our list is down as Aidan Brown. He was on and now he's off again. Luke Conley. He's found a yard on Daniel O'Mahony for once. Oh, has he caught in two minds, Luke Connolly? Yeah, I think, I think Duhalla will be happy now. Um, Nemo, uh, probably shot selection there by Luke again. Nemo, Nemo seem a small bit to be a bit all over the place. Um, so I think Duhalla will, will be happy the way things are going. 
Just wondering there, lads, who's coming off there for uh, for Duhalla? Fintan O'Connor, yeah. O'Connor point scorer in the first half, the Nutton Agree man. And it's Aidan Brown who has come on. So the next, next 10 minutes are going to be critical for, for Duhalla just to, just to keep on top of him and, and not to leave him back into the game here. And having got the goal, they're back in front. They lead by 167 points, a two point lead for Duhalo. 42 minutes on the clock. This is really putting it up to the defending champions, the 21 time county champions, Nemo Rangers. They've got a real job on their hands here. And just the psychological fill up the goal will have given Duhalo as well. It gives you an extra yard defensively, doesn't it? Not a good turn over there by Duhalo. Yeah, Duhalo and Ferris are working very hard around the middle, middle third there and turning them over the last two or three attacks. Or oh, now, the Nemo goalkeeper is down, Michal A. Martin, and uh, Kieran Histon and Alan Cronin are pointing a finger, I think, at Seamus Hickey. Oh, no, it's not Seamus Hickey, it's Jerry O'Connor. So it's all happening now, on and off the ball. Now, the umpires, I think, are bringing the referee down here. Now, we didn't see what happened, we were following the ball, but uh, Michal A. Martin ended up on the ground. I think it was Jerry O'Connor who's suggesting there was nothing overly aggressive from his point of view. Maybe just a coming together of the two, but uh, it's down to the referee and the umpires now. This is a, a big moment in the game. Do Hallow have a free as it stands, and uh, Donnick O'Connor has the ball placed just inside the 45 metre line. I would worry a small bit for Do mm. on this one, ha not having seen the incident, but <laughs> Jerry seems to be pleading his innocence, and when you're pleading a case, you're, you're always under pressure. Well, this is significant. To Hallow in front. But are they in danger here of losing a man? The referee's taking his time. The card is coming out now. Let's wait and see. It's yellow. Yeah, whatever happened, I, I didn't see it now. So whatever the, the yeah. card infringement was for, it, it was the umpires told the ref. And yeah. Well, if the card is given, it means the umpires gave the advice that they saw what happened and they were content. It was just the yellow card infringement. <laughs> Nemo have introduced a free as well. Connor Horgan has come on wearing 17. Connor Horgan, a 2019 uh, Sigerson Cup winner with UCC. We'll try and figure out who went off. Our attention was very much drawn to events down towards our left-hand side, but Conor Horgan is on. As Donnick O'Connor steps up. Oh, the little flick is over the bar. Just for a moment, I thought it might have been going under. Great touch there by Seamus. Actually, thought, I could see it coming. I thought it was very unlucky not to go under the bar, but great flick over there by Seamus. The game is going to Hollis way at this stage. Nemo need to get a grip of it now. Need to win a ball and get, get a throw and get a score on the board. They haven't scored in quite a while. And the longer that goes on, the bigger challenge it is. Another Nemo sub coming on now. Well, Barry Cripps is being taken off and coming on is number 24 who's Aidan O'Reilly, part of the Premier Intermediate team. Breaking ball, Paul Walsh couldn't quite get to the pitch of it. Peter Morgan bottled up, great pressure again from Duhallow and they look to break now with Aidan Brown, gets his hand pass away. Support needed now for Shane Hickey. Had the strength to hold on to it though. Here's Donnick O'Connor. Back Daly. And the scoreboard down to our right hand side reading Nemo 7 to Hallow 1 6. Is, uh, is that correct? I'm just wondering do Hallow 1 to 1 7 with the last score? I'm not sure. I thought it was, it was 1 7 or 6 before mm. the score to 3. So 1 7, we believe, is the correct score. 1 7 to 7 points. The scoreboard in the ground uh, reading 1 6. But on we go. It's to Hallow with the advantage. Here's Kevin Kremen. Gets the hand pass to Donnick O'Connor. Starting to get on ball now. It's certainly a man they'll want on it. Donnick O'Connor. Good early ball. Man coming out in front is Jerry O'Connor. Jerry O'Connor, James McDermott has managed to dispossess him. Wonderful work from James McDermott. And he's his midfield partner, Peter Morgan, looking to bring it away. And now there's another tangle off the ball. Stephen Cronin of Nemo. Donnick is on a yellow already. If that's who he is speaking to, he could be in trouble. And Donnick O'Connor 
Oh, that's a, a big blow for Two Hallow now. It's a red card, yellow followed by a black, and Dunnock O'Connor is off after that off the ball tangle with Stephen Cronin. Well, an incident packed second half. Now that's a massive, massive blow for Two Hallow. I didn't see what happened. What happened actually to get the second yellow card, but obviously Dunnock is going to be a huge loss for Two Hallow now, just when they were starting to get a bit of a grip in the game. Now coming with 47 minutes on the clock. And to Hallow, showing their character to come forward again. Alan Cronin read the pass, gets it back for Nemo and gets it uh, quickly moving. James McDermott, Stephen Cronin easing out towards his right-hand side. Instead, McDermott looks back to his left-hand side. Kevin O'Donovan looks out towards Kerrigan. Kerrigan being held on to for dear life by John McLaughlin. Oh, this is some score. That is some point and one they needed, Nemo. That's a great score from Paul, under pressure, just out, just inside the 45, and Nemo really needed that score. But, you know, with the extra man now, Nemo could push on a bit because they're very, very capable in terms of exploiting that extra man. But uh, I suppose the Hall are lucky the water break has come now and gives them a small bit of a chance to reorganise. Just going to say, Joe, I think the, the water break came at a great time now for Duhalla, just to settle things on again after going down to 14 men, just trying to rearrange things and get lads into the proper position. So, um, but this is going to be some final quarter now, isn't it? The scoreboard, uh, it has been corrected inside the ground as well. I can tell you it's Nemo Rangers, eight points. Duhallow, one seven. It's a two-point lead for Duhallow. And now, as you said, having had Dunnock O'Connor sent off a chance to tactically rearrange and maybe figure out where they need to have uh, more men and less on the pitch. But it's in their hands, Duhallow. They have the lead. All the pressure now on Nemo Rangers. Yeah, but uh, you Again, we said at the start we might be a bit worried about the holiday those players that play just in their ability to keep going over the last 15 minutes. I'm watching Mark Ellis in the, in the middle of the field there. Car he carried the strap into the game. He's looking to tire now a bit. So whether do Hallow need to introduce one or two more subs to give a bit of fresh legs on that, uh, it might be advisable. Well, since uh, Nemo was four in a row back in 08, the titles have been spread around the county. Nemo with four, Castlehaven with two, Clonakilty, UCC, Ballon College, Carberry, moment of history for them. And St. Finbards have all lifted the Andy Scannell Cup. To Hallow have been uh, often, particularly of late, the side looking on, having gone so close but not quite got there. Yeah, I think just, just before the water break there was a, a big score by Paul Kerrigan, just to cut the gap again to two points. But look... Uh, up two points into the water break. It was a great opportunity. I don't think Duhal will be in, in a better position to, to, to get one over here in Nima. So I think it's going to go right down to the wire. Though. And Nima will have to push forward now in an effort to get a score. And that may leave a, a bit of an opportunity for a, a gap for, for uh, Duhal to score. A lot of niggly stuff developing into the game now on and off the ball. Yeah, Aidan O'Reilly is down below getting uh, acquainted with Seamus Hickey. We've also got Alan O'Donovan on as uh, Nemo Arreen. The changes here in a an attempt to wrest control of this game in the final quarter. Oh, the free taken quickly and picked off by Mark Ellis. Here's Owen McSweeney. That's a basic error. And can do hello punish it. McSweeney carries it and happy to hold it. Waits for support to arrive from the tireless Shane Hickey. Hickey back to the substitute Aidan Brown. Keep ball is the shout from the Duhalo mentors. With a two-point advantage, they're happy to do that. Shane Hickey, a difficult man to dispossess. Shane Hickey going for his score. He's not going to find it, though. Michal A. Martin takes it on the bounce. Oh, no, he's in danger of losing it. Jerry O'Connor pressurising him. And Kieran Histon just managed to take it at the second time of asking. Risky game from Nemo. But they've gotten away with it. Now they look to drive forward. Ball popped forward towards Barry O'Driscoll, who gets there ahead of Bart Daly. O'Driscoll needs to pick his pass down into the corner towards Mark Cronin, who's racing, but won't beat it to the end line. And every little moment like that is a fill-up for Duhallow. Yeah, yeah. Nemo going to push up here now on the kick out. The extra man, they're going to make it harder on the, and uh, Patrick Dyle get his kick out away. So it's going to be interesting to see what he's going to do here. For both teams now, again, it's about being patient and not, make, not forcing the issue, not making the mistake and just maintain a bit of composure. And Patrick Doyle with the old trick of walking out, trying to make it look like he's running so the referee doesn't uh, hurry him up, taking as much time as uh, the referee will allow. That one uh, has been caught by the breeze. And Duhallow managed to get on it. 
John McLaughlin. Oh, it's a dangerous ball. It's Mark Cronin. He's in. Squares it across to Luke Connolly. Oh, what a chance. Mark Cronin could have gone for it himself. Oh, my Don't God. Don't think Luke Connolly was expecting the pass. And when it came, he was off balance. Why didn't Mark Cronin go it alone? Yeah, yeah, I think that was absolutely, as you said there, uh, he, was, he wasn't expecting that pass at all. He was expecting it to be finished. That's a serious psychological blow to, to Nemo there. And it gives De Hala surely an opportunity you now to, to lift it. I think it was uh, John McLaughlin, was it, who played that pass across his own goal that Mark Cronin got a hand to. And for all, all the world, it looked like a goal was on the way for Nemo. Is that the positive omen? Is that the sign that maybe it might be De Hala's day here? Still uh, plenty of football to be played. 52 and a half minutes, so we've got uh, seven and a half plus extra. Yeah, I think I think Duhal will probably know they got away with one there, so we'll lack him a bit of belief there now to, to push on until the end. I think the next score is going to be a critical score here. Nemo, the side that hasn't stopped scoring goals all year, but they haven't got one today. Crucially, Seamus Hickey took his chance for Duhalo. Here's Bart Daly, finding it hard to work their way out here. Nemo pushing right up on them. Patrick Doyle, the goalkeeper. Well, that was calm. And he gets the pass away to John McLaughlin. Now they try and break that Nemo press. Luke Connolly coming across with a meaty shoulder. And they've turned it over, Nemo. Good hassling, good harrying, good pressure. But they need a score at the end of it. Here's an opportunity from a tight angle, but over the bar. And that reduces it by one. Yeah, good score there. I Connor Horgan, is it? Yeah, that's one thing Nemo aren't going to do on it, they're not going to panic. Um, but I think Duhala finding it very hard to, against the wind to get out their own, get out their own defence. So Nemo are try, try, going to try and pin him in there to the corner and, and, and going to do the same thing for his kick out again. John McLaughlin down there now, probably feeling the pain of yesterday and today. Uh, so it's, it's difficult to, to keep, keep that going. And uh, I suppose it just looked there as if Duhala had the ball coming out and Nemo and fairness him turned them over and we're now down to a one point game so Nemo now must be feeling fairly good might be a longer afternoon than we bargained for it's very very tight this is going right to the wire here in the first of the two the Cork Premier Senior Football Championship semi-finals a reminder still to come on that with the examiner here later this evening in association with Derry Gold Co-op Superstores the second semi-final between Castlehaven and St Finbars this time Patrick Doyle decides to get the ball as far away from his goal as he can lovely ball taken by Paul Walsh he's been dispossessed though great hand in from Alan Cronin who's pushed further up the pitch to add his experience here's a chance bearing down on goal takes the point to level the game though Paul Carrigan Paul showing great leadership there you know and you know when the heat is really on he's come, of, come to the rescue there on a number of occasions and Without him, you know, Nemo would struggle. Yeah, there was a there was a small inkling of a goal, but I think Paul made the right decision there just to tip to, to it over the bar and bring it to all square here. Yeah, he knows they're on top. He knows they're back on terms now at that point, Paul Kerrigan. He's at third point, I think, today for one of the vital cogs in this Nemo range of a machine, Connolly, and the presence of mind to take the mark, knowing he's in a very kickable position here. And there is nothing this time that his marker Daniel O'Mahony can do about it. Connolly puts it over, and in the blink of an eye, it's Nemo in front by a point now. I uh, just see Paul Walsh there, the hands in it, uh, gasping for air. Look, as Connor said, a lot of these players would have played yesterday, so it's a big ask here for Duhalla. Luke Connolly's first point of the day. And little did we think it would take him 55 and a half minutes to find it, and credit to Duhalla set up for limiting him to that one score. A lot of air on this one. Barry O'Driscoll looked to pressurise Doyle here. And final touch deemed to be off the Duhalo goalkeeper and a 45 for Nemo. They're having that patch in the game now where they feel they've got to drive it home. Yeah, and they've got those few scores on the board, which is crucial. And, and it's very hard to see Duhalo digging themselves out of this now, especially being a man down. If, if it was even numbers on the field, you'd give them a right chance. But no, that, that sending off has been crucial. And uh, I suppose, you know, you could add that the miss that Nemo had was a really, really bad miss. So... They'd be well out there now if they had got that goal. And you mentioned the loss of the man, but not just the loss of a man, but the loss of maybe the man, Donnick O'Connor, in terms of someone who could steady things down, use that experience in a situation like this where Nemo are coming at them. Yeah, he's such a leader in that. It must have been a big blow. Uh, but look, this is Luke Connolly to put a, a two-point game. 
This is a big moment. Connolly having an anxious look at it. And he gets the kiss off the upright, which is a very kind one. Two in quick succession for Luke Connolly and a two point lead for Nemo Rangers. Yeah, it's a, Nemo seems to be on top here now at the moment, so it's, it's going to be a big ask for, for Dohella to dig this out. Um, if they can get position and maybe get, a, get, get the score, we're taking over again and bring it down to, to one point game again, but big kick here now. Well, they've got in Jerry O'Connor and Seamus Hickey, two men who can trouble the scoreboard. They've got a free here. Full committed by Alan O'Donovan. Free taken out to this left hand side. Kevin Kremen of Boherbui. Pushed in field by Jack Horgan. John McLaughlin, the fullback as well, forward. Here is Paul Walsh. They need an inspirational moment. And that one dropping just short from Paul Walsh. Thought he had the range, but maybe those tiring legs. And he's moving a little bit gingerly now as he's trying to get back into his own half. Maybe a touch of cramp setting in. Certainly muscle fatigue for Paul Walsh. He's had a, a big outing for Duhalo. But they've got to find the energy reserves from somewhere. That one's gone left and wide from Barry O'Driscoll. Still breathing in this game, Duhalo. But they need a couple of scores here. Another change on the way. Number 27 is Conor O'Keefe coming on. It looks like it's a Seamus Hickey who was in action for Rock Chapel yesterday. Maybe he's got no more to give either. Jerry O'Connor, a lone figure inside the, the Nemo half, no distance. But if they did manage to get one ball to him, he's, he's capable of beating his man. Ball brilliantly broken there from a Nemo point of view by Aidan O'Reilly. Alan O'Donovan gets it to Barry O'Driscoll. Plenty of space here for Colin Tucker O'Brien. Kerrigan. Yeah, Nemo's big lads are starting to get on the ball now. They're starting to show a bit of experience. They, they'll run the clock down and get the ball into the scoring zone and, and tick over a few points. And they're taking the marks now as well. This one taken by Conor Horgan. It's interesting that's the second mark that Nemo have pulled off there. And, you know, it's, it's a concept that isn't being used by many teams. And it's worked well for them in those two occasions. Uh, you mentioned the benches column earlier in the piece. Conor Horgan has come on and kicked two now. Adding to his one, scored off the bench also against Douglas earlier in the championship. But also, you mentioned that uh, Kerrigan and Connolly, and they've yeah. stepped to the fore, and not alone have they got on the ball, but they've taken their scores as well. Yeah, look, it's Nemo, we're never going to panic, really. And in fairness, the last 10 minutes when they went after the goal, they didn't panic, they kept, kept the score, were ticking over, and they showed, they've showed their experience there the last few players. An experience there from James McDermott, gave away the free, but then wrapped his man up, making sure, or it wasn't James McDermott, rather, I think it was uh, Aidan O'Reilly, Wrapped his man up, making sure Duhallow couldn't get the free taken quickly. Nemo have got everyone, bar two, back inside their own half now. Duhallow need to work their way through. Owen McSweeney was the target. Pass didn't find him, though. And Nemo with Kerrigan back inside his own uh, 45. And with the extra man now, and they'll use Alan Cronin, all the experience in the world, and what a pass out to this right-hand side. Inch perfect for Alan O'Donovan. And now it's time for Nemo to keep it. A flick over his head has given uh, Colin O'Brien a little bit of work to do. Got there ahead of Conor O'Callaghan. No, James McDermott. Not going to risk any. A 50-50 ball. Excellent defending by Daniel O'Mahony to dispossess Luke Connolly. But he's deemed to have touched it on the ground. And the free is Nemo's. He certainly has been one of the more impressive guys there today, Daniel O'Mahony. Again, prepared to put his body on the line there. You know, great guts showing. Bit of luck, you know, that they pick up off the ground. But uh, another opportunity for him to set up a counter-attack. And just looking out at Paul Walsh, he, he's given a, a huge display today, but he looks out on his feet. He's asking the referee how much is left. The clock has ticked on to 60 minutes, 46, 47 seconds. It's all at the discretion of the referee, Alan Long, now. Scoreboard reading, Nemo Rangers 13 points, Duhalo 1-7. Yeah, um, Duhalo seem to be out on their feet, to be fair, which is, which is expectable. But um, it's hard to see where they're going to get the goal from. But look, you never know. I think they're going to last attack there. They were pushing for a goal. Obviously, they need a goal to, to try and tie it. Will it come? I'm not, I'm not so sure. Neil Flaha from Mill Street is on for the few minutes that remain. And it's uh, certainly looking like a goal or nothing now needed for Duhalo. And as it stands, they've uh, trying to figure out how many men they can push forward and try and stay tight at the back and make sure it's only one score that they need in terms of it being a goal to get back on terms. Nemo, no, one more score. Could well decide this game once and for all. Kieran Histon is far forward as we've seen him all day. 
bottled up right under the nose of the linesman. It's Duhalo ball and they've got to get it moving quickly, which they managed to do. Duhalo need to get bodies up, up the pitch. Oh, Nemo funneling around the man in possession and Alan Cronin there again. He tried to dig the pass out to Connolly. Didn't go to his man though, maybe this is it for Duhalo. Driving forward, Conor O'Callaghan. Connolly gets back to get a hand in. Referee taking a good look at this one. What's his decision? He's going to throw it in by the looks of it. Mark Ellis has to win this ball against James McDermott. You feel McDermott gets his hand on it. Conor O'Callaghan back in possession for Duhallow. He's been fouled. And now they've got to load those bodies forward. 62 and a half minutes on the clock now. Just wonder will be the Seamus Derby moment. <laughs> it's all or nothing. I get Mark Ellis and Paul Walsh probably moving into the edge of the square here. Well, it's been a dramatic day already with us here in the examiner. A cracking senior A hurling final between Father O'Neill's and Charleville. We'll be reflecting on that in the company of the lads over at the Parky Quiva in a few minutes' time. But is there to be late drama here? Conor O'Callaghan, Mark Ellis is uh, right on the square. So too, Paul Walsh. It's lifted in by Conor O'Callaghan. Oh, oh there's oh. an end of the match! Oh, incredible! Mark Ellis, Mark Ellis I think. Oh, that's unbelievable, Mark Ellis. Jeez, I'm eating my words now. Oh, <laughs> this is sensational. This is absolutely sensational. Is there in time a for a winner? In a forest of bodies, it looked like it was Mark Ellis who palmed it to the net beyond Michal A. Martin, but it's not over yet. And Nemo come now, it's Jack Horgan. Mark Cronin wants the ball delivered in The right man has Cronin it now. Gets on it. Wants it on his left foot, being shown on to his right. Mark Cronin, he's in. This is it for Nemo Rangers over the bar. What a response from Nemo Rangers. It's, yeah, it's real. What a semi-final this has been. And our Nemo Rangers to be the nemesis of Duhallow yet again. Incre Will incredible, incredible the last couple of minutes here. Will he give him a chance? Will he give him a chance a to go back down the field? It's, it's difficult to... You know, difficult to see Luke Dohalla maybe losing out, but it looks like that's he's, gonna happen. Yeah, he's looks like he's gonna give him a chance, though. Maybe one last chance for the 14 men of Duhalo. Conor O'Callaghan who put that ball in for the goal. This is it now. Play it forward, Shane Hickey. Shane Hickey's got two Nemo men. Histon and McDermott bottling him up. Back with Conor O'Callaghan again. Paul Walsh is free over on this near side. If he looks in that direction, instead it goes to the substitute, Aidan Brown. Aidan Brown looking to drop it inside. It's picked up by Alan Cronin. Nemo back in possession. It is all over. It is all over. The champions have somehow managed to win this one too. Hallo, look, Chris falling out there. Well, what an effort they gave it with 14 men right at the end. They got the goal, we think, for Mark Ellis. Look to be sending it to extra time, but then a moment of absolute class for Mark Cronin who avoided his uh, marker, Michael Mahoney, got it on his left foot and over the bar. What a finish to yeah, this semi-final. What a finish, and with two minutes to go, we were saying the game was off, but in fairness, Duhalla kept fighting, I think Mark Ellis got a goal, went up the field, and the right man was on the, the right end of the move, and in fairness, he, he showed great composure again. I, I was wondering, was he going to go for a goal again, but <laughs> he did the right thing, tapped it over the bar, and made up for his uh, error earlier on. Connor, you've got to feel for Duhalla. You, you have to, you have to, you know, I mean, if they hadn't got the goal, you'd say they'd have been better off because, it, it, you know, but to get the goal and then to have it taken from me again was, was really tough, but you have to credit Nemo, you know, they got the score again down the field, broke down and, you know, that bit of experience, that bit of the resilience was, was great from, but I'd say Nemo will go here today a bit disappointed with that performance, you know, they, they have work to do before the final, but again, it's an ideal scenario, you, you know, you get your wake-up call in the semi-final and you get it right for the final, but for Duhalla, yeah, you know, the, the guys out there, the likes of Paul Welch, we were looking at him there, hanging out there on his feet, like after two hours of intense championship football, week in, week out, uh, there's been a lot of good things about the system, but this, that type of thing, we have to have concerns about that. I'm just looking down at Mark Ellis, I've been watching him, he, he walked off the pitch over on this near side, he's been shaking his head, he a looks absolutely devastated, that was the score that looked like... It, it might take this game to extra time and, and Duhalo to do it with 14 men it would have been an incredible effort to do it but as we mentioned there were, there were, there were guys who died out on their feet there today but maybe just Nemo just had that, that clinical edge at the vital moment and Mark Cronin I mean, he's going to be a star for years to come but just to do what he did to back himself all the way he was being tightly marked by Mahoney but he found the space he got on his left hand side and he took his score yeah.
man was on the ball in fairness and no better man to be on the end of a play but um, and as I said earlier on he showed great composure to, to actually get it around Mahoney but in fairness to Nemo took a quick kick out they weren't happy with the draw they wanted to push up for one equaliser work the ball off the pitch into Mark and in fairness um, put it over the line they'd probably be happy they'd be delighted to get over the line here in the manner they did and as we said it's his fourth year in charge that's twice beaten in finals twice beaten in semi-finals and, and as we mentioned as well it'll be either not in agree or the Cantor players that they won't have next year so They'll be hoping this isn't the end of an era, that they'll have more players who can come through and step up and, and they'll be back to challenge again next year. Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of good young players coming through there. And like as I said today, the two Mahonies, Shane Hickey, you know, played well. Like so. so there's a lot of promise there. But I suppose it's particularly disappointing. The system probably worked against them in terms of games continuously on week and week and injuries and what have you. So, but look, they have a lot to take out of it. That's not going to comfort them much at this very moment, but maybe in time when they'll reflect on it, they will. But again... You know, you have to hand it to Nemo. Yeah. They looked, you know, Dohalla got the first goal and they looked as if they were in control of the game. Unfortunately, the sending off was a major turning point there and that gave Nemo numerical advantage and no one better than Nemo to use that. And, you know, in fairness to Mark and these guys, you know, he, he had one man to beat there to get the last score, but, you know, he was just totally composed and it, as Cullum said to me the right man has it yeah. and sure enough he popped it over. And you look at what they did down the stretch there in Nemo and, and even as you mentioned the reaction to the goal but before that when they needed their big players they had their big players Paul Kerrigan stepped forward, Luke Connolly stepped forward. The presence of mind Luke Connolly and Conor Horgan was it to take those two marks on the inside as well when you know they were being tightly marked knew, knew what they had to do they got two points from that as well and maybe Alan Cronin towards the end as well his experience defensively showed up well yeah and, and when Duhala got the goal like there was no sense of panic for, yeah. for Nemo um, and in fairness to, as you said the big players the likes of Paul Luke um, Barry they stepped up and those kick, kick big scores for them just to settle them back in and then we were, we were looking like this it was Nemo's and we, we were kind of writing off Duhala but in fairness them they came back and got the goal but as, as Connor says there, you have to, you look, you obviously you feel sorry for Duvalo. Um I don't think there's much more they could have done, but as I say, I think there's the, the experience of Nemo um, went out in the end. Yeah, from Paulo Donovan's point of view, sorry Connor, yeah. he'll look at this as well, look, semi-finals are there for winning. It doesn't matter how you win them as long as you win them, they're through to another final now. He, he'll, he'll certainly have seen parts of the game today that, that he'll be able to work on in terms of the final, but as we said, semi-finals, yeah. just win it. Oh yeah, if he went through here today, you know, and that... So he's going to do it, but I think we'd, we'd have to mention the influence of Paul Kerrigan there at the crucial stage mm. when other people were maybe finding it difficult to step up. Paul stepped up and kicked a couple of great scores. Before we finish up, your thoughts on, on what's to come still tonight, that second semi-final, St Finbar's, you know, they had to wait an awful long time before they finally got back on top of a couple of years ago, and Castlehaven, who've looked good this year, how do you see that one? Yeah, have a look, I suppose, as I said earlier, I think the bookies of the Bears are 2-1. to one. Um, I saw the Bears on Wednesday night against Newstone. Newstone are, are tough opponents at the best of time and they really took it down to the world and were a little unfortunate maybe that they didn't get a, a result out of it. But I'd have to say the Bears will have to improve on that performance uh, on Wednesday night's performance to get over Castlehaven. Castlehaven are playing particularly well this year. Um, you know, a lot of good forwards. You know, maybe defensively they might have some questions to ask, uh, answer yet. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think Castlehaven will come through on that one. Yeah, Colm, how do you see it? Yeah, if, uh, look, again, if we had a half of the close again like this, we'd be delighted. Um, as uh, as Connor said there, the Bars ha had the game played midweek. Um, it's just going to be interesting to see how will Castlehaven. They haven't had a competitive game in, in a number of weeks now, so I suppose will there be a bit of a, a rustiness to them? It's going to be interesting to see. But um, I actually, do you know what, I, 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 if I'd put my... Put a name on it, I think uh, Castlehaven probably do it. Right, so two votes for Castlehaven here. We'll wait and see how it goes. Uh, Conor and Cullen, thanks a million for your expertise today. We really enjoyed this one. And we should finish up by saying really massive credit to, to both squads today, Duhallo and Nemo Rangers, in, in very difficult conditions for serving up an absolute thriller here. Looked like Duhallo were going to take it with 14 men to extra time, but then Mark Cronin stepped up to score a last gasp winner. Sensational semi-final, Nemo winning it by 14 points to 2-7. So that's where we'll say goodbye to you from here. But as we leave you, we're going to hand you back to Parky Cueve and our team there, where already there was a, a pretty sensational Senior A hurling uh, final already today between Father O'Neill's and Charleville. So we'll get the thoughts on that and also look ahead to uh, the, Glen, uh, the Glen and Black Rock in the uh, Premier Senior Final as well in the company of Ronan Curran and Ger Cunningham with Oisín Langan. Final between St Finbars and Castlehaven. Who will join Nemo Rangers in next Sunday's county final? All will be revealed from 7 o'clock.
Very good evening, very warm welcome to the commentary box. Patrick McKay bringing you through the live coverage of this second semi-final between the Haven and the Bears. A big game in store. Joining us in the commentary position will be Derek, Calvin, Derek Kavan, I should say, and former cop manager Brian Corpert is in with us as well. Big game, big live coverage coming up from 7 o'clock. Throwing is at 7 o'clock, but for the moment, let's hear from both camps. Earlier this week, I caught up with St. Finn Bears manager Paul O'Keefe, but for the moment... Let's hear firstly from the Castlehaven manager, James McCarthy. So James, it's four weeks now since we've seen Castlehaven in action. How are things going down, uh, uh, down below in West Cork and how is training going? Our training is going good and um, we're looking forward to Sunday night. I suppose, you know, it was supposed to be on a week ago, but that was out of our control. So, or anybody's control to be fair. So yeah, we're... We, you know, a month might be a bit long to be waiting, but look, we're delighted to be in the company semi-final. Your performance so far, James, uh, I suppose the Cabby Rangers game being a local derby was always going to be a bit tense. Loose's Town, the Fit Club, the Jew Club that they had, that you beat them by uh, six points. But then I suppose you really showed your true colours with that big uh, victory over Island Rovers in the third round. Yeah, I suppose it, the three games are different in in every way, as for the first game against Ross, we were very nervy. Uh, we haven't beaten Ross in, in a good few times in, in 10 years, I think. It's going back to 2013, I think. Um, so, you know, we could see the nerves that day, but we have grown since, and the players have got better against Noosa Sound. Noosa Sound are a brilliant club, like, you know, what they do is un unreal. And, you know, and to be fair, again, to the guys, they, they went about their work very well. And, uh, you know, we left ourselves open at the back a bit. We, we conceded a few goals that, Hopefully we won't concede another day, but um, yeah, it, it it was it was checking the phone and to see what the scores were, and we were up, we were down. So it, it was a different. We weren't playing Island Rovers at that stage. We were playing we were playing the scores at the other side. So it was no disrespect to Island Rovers, the big score we were trying to put up, which was it, it, they weren't our, our opposition at that stage. Yeah, and your opposition, of course, were the Bears and, and Nemo and the other two groups. I suppose the dual club thing hasn't really affected you, but I suppose. One thing I'm going to ask you about is the inter-county players that have been with you over the last uh, couple of weeks. It's been a big, big difference to, uh, instead of Cork playing inter-county football, say, in, in June, July and August, that you've actually got your club players in June, July and August and the inter-county comes after. How much of a, of a difference is it to you with so many inter-county stars in your panel? Oh, sure. Look, it's like chalk and cheese, to be fair. And... It's great to have them around, and, and I think they're enjoying it as well. And you're hearing the same story from clubs all around the country. Like, I, you know, if anything good comes out of this COVID, it, it, it would be destruction of the championship, maybe. And, and to be fair to the Cork County Board, they had this online, they had this league, league, Champions League set up, you know, on the pipeline. So it has been brilliant. But coming back to the county players, they have been fantastic to us. And, you know, they always give their best to Castlehaven, but it's, you know, we're, hopefully we're getting the best out of them this year now, seeing that the counties afterwards, they were usually coming back and, you know, after a long National League and Championship, it's, it's very hard to get going in your club. And, and that's no fault to the, the county or the club or the players or anyone. It's just the, the structure. Now, obviously, you've had a four-week gap since that third-round championship game against Ireland Rovers. The Bears had a game just last Wednesday night against uh, Nooses Town. Obviously, it's going to be a comparison differences between the two sides, but what are you watching you offer from this Bears team tonight? Well, I, I see them playing against Nooses Town now, and, and, and like the, the, that's them. Like they're brilliant. Like they're big, strong, very physical, big, strong men. You know, Maguire midfield, their full forward line is very sharp, gets most of their scores. And, you know, they've been coming to Champions just a couple of years ago and they're in the top four every year. So we're, we're just back breaking into that top four. So we know after 20 minutes where we are, are we ready for, for this really cut and cutthroat championship game knockout, which we haven't experienced yet this year. Uh, the Bears have won up in us there. So it'll be nip and tuck, I think, um, you know, a great respect for the Bears and what they do again, dual club again, but, uh, and great inter-county players. So we'll be up against it, we know all that, but with respect, um, we're going there to win the game as well. Obviously, it's a, a, big, a big day as well on Sunday because you, you won the championship back in 2013-14, but you have been in the final since that uh, 
epic replay game against the Nemo Rangers in 2016 to be just nice to get back into that final again. Yeah, 15 we were beaten by Nemo, yeah. Um, look, it, it, maybe it is something that we, we thought we left behind us, maybe, but we can't change that result now. Um, but, you know, the boys have been in the semi-final there, they had three great games against Duhalo in the semi-final a couple of years ago. Uh, so they know all what is about about winning semi-finals so, and losing them. So it's brilliant to be in the semi-final, but we want to win it and go another step. And, and with the environment we're in now, you know, it's great for the parish. I know we don't have the support for there, but it's great for the locality that, you know, there's something to look forward to at the weekend and support. And again, as I say, the GA through, during the COVID have been outstanding. And, you know, they're keeping the people looking forward to something at the weekend in every parish. Paul, so it's a quick turnaround for you. Four days since you beat uh, Noose's Town. How are the bodies holding up? Uh, good. Look, uh, look, I, look. The good thing is we came through Noose's Town uh, Wednesday night without any injuries. You know, so look, that's a major plus uh, compared to where we were this time last year. You know, where everyone, bar myself, I'd say was injured. You know, so um, so look, it's great. It's just great to come through. That uh, that was a real battle for us. I mean, like we knew that's kind of what we were going to get from Noose's Town anyway. Um, but it's, it's great to get through with, uh, without any, without a body, without a body count like, so it's good. You've had a, a busy season. I know the hurlers were defeated in the uh, group stages. They were knocked out after the uh, third round of games. But for the footballers, it's been quite a decent season going uh, unbeaten so far. Yeah, look, it's been brilliant. Um, look, we've, you know, we got through the group stages and it was a tough group as well. Like, you know, I suppose up the, the Ballancali game kind of set the tone for us in terms of like we knew, like we'd targeted that as being the vital game, really. Like you lose your first game in the group stages and you're on the back foot from the world goal. Like, so we just managed to, you know, we, we, we got through Ballancali and, you know, then Carrigaline was comfortable enough and uh, had a good old battle with Clan there as well. Like, you know, and then, then New System the night, of course, was a bit of a dog fight. Like, you know, so. Look, that's been great, you know, look, but, uh, you know, look, that's exactly what you want, you know, look, I suppose like, that's what we targeted and that's what we got, like, so, you know, but uh, the weekend ahead was kind of a, a different challenge for us, I suppose. I was going through my match notes there this morning and uh, Newstone got a goal in the 25th minute to go, one three to three points up. What was going through your mind going to that stage, there was five minutes left in the opening half, what, what was going through the mind before you got those four points to go into that one point lead? Um, you know, I just thought we we were kind of struggling a bit. Um, like I, I thought our decision making wasn't great. I like I I I, I thought we, overall we were doing okay. You know, like I, I think the, the general consensus from everybody we kind of came away from the game kind of going, God, we didn't really play that well. But then kind of when you looked at the video afterwards, like there was a lot of positives to take out of it. You know, like I think our defence was excellent. You know, um, like when you look at the final scoreline. Um, like we defended really well, you know. Maybe some of our option taking wasn't uh, razor sharp, like. But um, you know, look, that's probably just a bit of ring rustiness, like. And hopefully that won't be won't be the case next weekend. But um, yeah, look, after the goal, I was kind of you know, look, I, I was kind of hoping my thoughts before the game were um, that new system might be a bit leggy after the hurling three days before it, like. And to be fair to them, they weren't. Um, so I was kind of hoping to get a good start, you know, um, but then they got the goal and drew level. But that, to be fair, that kind of woke us up. I think we kicked four four points in a row after that, you know, which kind of, uh, but like, I, you know, it has been a few times this year where we've had those kind of wake-up calls and kind of responded and got into the game, you know, but look, uh, hopefully you won't be doing that against leaving Castlehaven get the goal to wake you up, you know, because that could be the end of the, end of the road for you. Um, so, but yeah, look, so... You know, I, I thought we were in trouble after the goal, but I, I suppose the response was good after it. Like, so it was kind of pros and cons to it. Yeah, and I suppose at half time, then going to that one point lead after conceding that goal, you, you, I suppose it was quite pleasantly surprising, I suppose, to get the four points in a row for a start because Newstone had their own couple of chances going into the half time. Yeah. But obviously, the talk at half time then was just keep the plan, keep the game plan going as it yeah. was. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I suppose, look. Um, yeah, like it was kind of that last kind of couple of minutes, you kind of felt, look, that we kind of found our groove, you know, but then, you know, New System went out to start, start the second half and scored the first point, uh, which kind of set the tone for them as well, you know, so look, I, I, I think by half time, in my own head anyway, I was kind of decided, look, that this is going to go to the wire, you know, uh, I couldn't see us kind of pulling away from New System, um, that they, they, you know, they had kind of dug in and, they defended quite well. They made it. They, they made it difficult for us, you know. Um, 
and it was always going to be just that kind of dog fight like and it was only probably only in, into the last quarter when we kind of um and may, maybe that was something to do with Noose's done playing three days earlier in the hurling as well look that we kind of just you know maybe just pulled ahead of him that little bit uh, into the home straight you know so look we finished well and look that's kind of all you know all, the the real issue like on Wednesday night was just getting through it and getting over it you know uh, and that was kind of whatever way you did it was mission accomplished whether you did it you know uh, swashbuckling style or whether you just crawled over the line you, you take you take it and you know so I suppose look we'll be saying the same next Sunday you know so uh, win is a win at the end of the day that's all water under the bridge now because you've got the Haven uh, on Sunday yeah. evening and it's a, a big game I suppose but comparison to yourselves that you're playing four days later they've had to wait Four weeks, so quite a big difference for both sides. Yeah, look, it's it's, it's kind of a funny one. Look, you know, I, I I don't think either team would like the situation during particularly. You know, look, I know the Haven that four week layoff, like is probably playing on their minds. You know, and look, with the best will in the world, no matter how well you're training, look, you're, you're going to be rusty when it comes to championship tempo. And um, look, if you've been out for four weeks, you know, look, look. To be honest, I'm, I'm glad we got that game. Uh, you know that the way the Nooses don't game be, before Castle Haven, you know, because look, if I, I think if we were that rusty going out against the Haven uh, on the weekend, um, you wouldn't last long against them, you know. Uh, so look, I think we, you know, we've been kind of fine tuned a little bit, you know, albeit the four day turnaround is a little bit hard to take, like you know, um, you know, look, we did approach the board about maybe moving it back to the following Wednesday, but. Uh, um, but look, that's kind of again, that's kind of water under the bridges. But I suppose, like you know, look, we take the picture now and just get on with it. Who are the players to watch out from uh, from your own point of view against the Haven? Ash, look, they, they have the, the marquee forwards. You know, the the, the two Hurleys. You know, maybe um, Jack Cahillan coming into the mix as well. Um, you know, they have Mark Collins midfield, Damien at uh, at centre back. You know, so look, they have they have plenty of kind of. Uh, household names that would that would uh, that would worry you like and look to be fair uh, the Hurleys have been in absolutely scintillating form this year like you know their performances uh, you know like if, if if you could have an attendance at a match they're worth, they're worth, they're worth the entrance fee like you know so um, you know so look uh, ho- hopefully we'll be able to manage them on Sunday like but um, but yeah look their, their form has been fantastic I suppose if one man can hold them it, it is yourself I suppose looking back down memory lane the 2011 uh, county final when you led UCC to beat the Haven in that famous final it was a historic day to be a great occasion to do it again on Sunday night. Oh, look, to be fantastic. Look, uh, I'm not sure. Look, the, the, there's a massive prize there in the end of the day, you know. And look, uh, look, 2011 was was a great day. Out, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that's fresh in uh, James McCarthy's mind as well. Like in terms of uh, getting a bit of vengeance back at me, so he probably always be one for that anyway. Like. Thanks very much to Ball Camps, who I spoke to during the week. It's a big, big, busy weekend so far, and we've got one more to go in front of us. It's the Bars against the Haven, and it's coming to you live from 7 o'clock. Rick Havanagh and Brian Corp are, stand, are sitting in beside me here this evening. Boys, thanks very much for joining us, and Derek, we'll start with yourself. There was a few sweats there after around half three this afternoon, but Nemo Rangers just about in the county final. Big time. Got out of jail in a big way. Um... Duhalo were looking good for us halfway through the second half. They definitely had one foot in the final. To say that Dunnick O'Connor going off was a turning point is to is stating the obvious, pretty much. Um, they were they were being to control the tempo. It was suiting Dunnick's graft in terms of he slowed down the game, they were on top, Nemo were struggling, and uh, suddenly things opened up for Nemo, despite them having a few guilt dead chances. They had a brilliant point in the end by Mark Collins, so just got through the skin of their teeth. Brian, I know conditions were tough, and again, they're tough this evening, but it was an entertaining game, though, to watch. Yeah, I think so, Patrick. I think, to be fair, all the championships so far, we were just saying it before we came on air, has been extremely entertaining, the condensed nature of it especially. But I think, uh, you know, Nemo do what Nemo do, and Derek might smile at this, but when the game is close, nine times out of ten, they, they, they find ways of winning matches. And to be fair, fairness to them again, you, you gave away a goal, it'd be a time to panic with time up, uh, quick kick out by Michal A., Got on the ball, I think Alan O'Donovan moved it forward and, uh, you know, young Cronin finished it off as he does. You can see he was trying to get onto his left, I thought the defender would actually, you know, not, not, not end up on the ground, which he did, but uh, it was a great score to win the game. Sure was indeed, and hopefully we've got just as an entertaining, if not better, of what has been a quite enthralling weekend on the Irish Examiner live streaming service. Let's turn our attentions to...
Always, both teams get ready this, uh, this evening and let's start with the Castlehaven team who will line out as, as you'll see on the graphic. Anthony Seymour will be in goal. Johnny Regan, Rowan Walsh and Rory Maguire the full back line. Kieran O'Sullivan, Damien Cahillan and David McCarthy the half back line. Jamie Walsh and Mark Collins in the middle of the field. Ronald Welton, uh, Brian Hurley and Conor Cahillan the full half forward line I should say and Conor Driscoll, Cahill Maguire and Michael Hurley in the full forward line. Brian, they've been quite, quite decent but I suppose the eye-catching line of form here is that 4-19 to 2-4 win over Island Rovers in the third round. Yeah, um, I think, to be fair to Island Rovers, uh, because they actually played down in the relegation game and I saw them, um, I think that was almost a wake-up call for them after that game because they certainly weren't as bad uh, in the Bishop's home game as they were in the Castlehaven game. But to be fair to Castlehaven, they have deadly forwards, Patrick, and if, if they get enough possession... The likes of Michael, the likes of Brian Hurley, they will do do wreck. And I think, uh, you know, they're ably assisted by uh, Conor Callan, Ronan Welter will work very, very hard in the wing. So if, if they have enough possession, and that's the key thing for Castlehaven tonight, if they have enough possession, I think they have the forwards that will trouble the Bears' defence. Let's turn our attention then to the Bears who will be wearing their chain strip of uh, yellow and blue this evening. Patrick O'Neill will start in goal. Sam Ryan, Jamie Burns and Alan O'Connor, the full back line. Colin Lyons and Ola Murphy will be joined by Cullum Scully at the left half back position. Ian McGuire captains the side and he'll be joined by number 18, Michael Shields, who started against Town on Wednesday evening. Dennis O'Brien, Brian Hayes and a change at left half forward, number 22, Keen Walsh, comes in at left half forward for Adam Lyon. And in the full forward line, Killian Myers Murray, Owen McGreevy, and Stephen Sherlock. The Newstown game during the week, Derek, was a close encounter. They got out of it, but you'd be expecting more tonight out of bars. I would, and um, you could say that it's maybe some people would argue it's a disadvantage having a game midweek and coming into a semi final. I think they'll be tried and tested. Looking on the other side, Castlehaven could be, could be stale because um, it's been a long time since they got a good competitive game. Bars are well tested at this stage, um, so I think it'll suit them. I think they definitely have a lot to improve on uh, from that game against Newcastle because Castlehaven, you're up, in, you're up in the levels uh, at least uh, at 10-20% in terms of the balance of their team. So Bars, I think, are coming into this okay. They're, I think Castlehaven are hot favourites going by the bookies, but Bars, I think Castlehaven will find it really, really hard to beat the Bars tonight. And like, I suppose we mentioned what the game Wednesday night. It'll do a lot for the Bears, a lot of confidence going forward. Okay, their performance wasn't impressive on Wednesday night, but going forward, that game inside four days compared to the Havens game in four weeks yeah. is a massive difference. Yeah, so Castle Haven are training and they're trying to generate that type of balls, they're trying to generate that type of intensity, and you never can in training, and you get it in championship games, regardless of whether you limp out of it with a point victory against a team you're supposed to hammer. That doesn't really matter, you're in the next game and you're, you're all the better for it because you just can't get that intensity in training. Sure can't indeed. It's been a busy, busy weekend in the Irish Examiner live stream. We brought you live coverage of the Premier Intermediate Hurling Championship final last night between uh, Bellarney and Castle Lions. A victory for the Bellarney team. And then earlier this afternoon, two cracking games in the Scenery Hurling Championship. We had uh, Charleville defeating Fodder O'Neill's by a point. And then, down here then, we had in Packerin the first semi-final between Nemo Rangers and Duhalla. A cracking semi-final. We should be expecting another one. And it's going to be another couple of busy weekends over the next couple of weeks as we look out. This evening, John Ryan is with the two captains, E. McGuire, who will be calling the toss. And the toss is going to be key this evening because that wind, as you look at it, is going from left to right. And it is the Haven who have won the toss. And they will play, amazingly enough, against the wind in this opening half. Now, I was always taught, lads, if there's a wind, you try and use it to your advantage in the first half. But the Haven are going against it. Uh, I think, Patrick, so, you know, school's different. I think in Cork, uh, Cork Hurlers notoriously always played against the wind long go. And it's kind of a, a long-held belief with, with Cork teams that you'd play against the wind. I think in Nemo, it was always the other way around, direct, that you'd go to advantage every chance you get <laughs> and then put the team to the sword. And, and, and uh, I suppose for us, one of the, th the thinking things around, around you know, elements like this and the, the strength of the wind is um, go against the wind in the first half, batten down the hatches, um, really make a battle of it. And then the second half, you know, the game can open up and you have the benefit of the wind, Patrick. So, um, you know... If you win, it was a great decision. If you lose, not so much. But uh, I, uh, if I was Castlehaven, I probably would do the same. Yeah, I think from looking at Castlehaven play, I looked at a few of their games to check them out ahead of tonight. Their kickouts tend to be short, so I think they kind of are comfortable playing in into their into that wind into their face. So I don't think it'll uh, damage them any bit. 
there's going to be a minute of silence for a couple of people who have died over the past couple of days. And one of those is Kevin O'Driscoll of Bishopstown, another club member from Castlehaven. And as the wind starts to bellow and the rain starts to fall here in Parky Rain, we remain upstanding for the national anthem of our own event. Send our congratulations to Blackrock, Charleville and Blarney who have competed for winning their championships earlier this weekend. Well, we've got Nemo Rangers in the Premier Senior Football Championship final. Who is going to join them, gents? Um, I think it, it, this is going to be very, very close. I think the fact that the Bars have played on Wednesday night is going to be a huge advantage to them. And I think, uh, I think the Bars will just about get over the line. I think the fact that Castlehaven have played against the win, Patrick, in the first half actually gives an indication of maybe what type of game plan they're going to have. I think they're, they're going to be really focused on stopping Ian Maguire running. I know I say this all the time, but I think they'll get bodies behind the ball. They'll, they'll make sure that Ian doesn't get into the game with his running game. I think if you can stop that, uh, you, you, you'll stymie the bars a bit. But I just think the bars after Wednesday night, I think they'll be battle-hardened and I think they could get over the line. Coming into tonight, Patrick, I was thinking um, Castlehaven, just based on their firepower, I just think there's more to them in terms of their attack threat with Brian and Michael Hurley, not to mention Colin Maguire there as well. But something tells me the night it is, it's going to be a scrappy night, just looking at the bars, it just such, looks such a physical team, wind, wet, windy night, I think it might just suit them. Well, it's John Ryan, who is our rator this evening from McCroom. Michael Shields has gone straight into the centre of the field, and he's ended up throwing a man on the floor. John Ryan actually pointed the wrong way first. He uh, was pointing for a Castlehaven free because Jamie Walsh was fouled into the centre of the park. So it's the first position in the game. And here is Brian Hurley playing centre forward this evening. Quick ball inside to his brother Michael. But he just scuffled inside. But a poor pass out from Patrick O'Neill out towards Michael Hurley. And there was a, a foul inside there. It's going to be a free out for the Bears. Early stages in this Cork Premier Senior Football Championship semi-final. And in fact, it's actually going to be a... No, it is going to be a free... A, the, uh, some confusion there from the our referee. So, Sam Ryan, pass it back to Patrick O'Neill for the first time this evening. Patrick O'Neill with time just to allow time for the Bears defence to set up. Colin Lyons, recycle out to Ian Maguire, who will be looking to don the Cork jersey in a fortnight's time when they go to the a National Football League game against Loud down in Parky Cueve. The Bears now reverting backwards through Jamie Burns and Colin Lyons in possession now. Walking to the centre of the park. Switching the play over towards Owen McGree, the accomplished soccer player in Cork Institute of Technology. Switching the play over towards that far side. McGreevy off his worst right leg and a great mark claimed inside there by Killian Myers Murray, who has already got 115 to his name already in this. Premier Senior Football Championship and a chance for Myers must take this mark within 15 seconds of it being awarded. Will do so 
and a chance for the opening score of the game goes the way of the bars and it is converted to their corner forward Killian Myers Murray great score there I think even coming out bars look very comfortable it's Sam Ryan Connell Lines coming up with the ball seem very at ease great ball into Killian Myers Murray and uh, Joe, certainly certainly not a tap over and great score by him here's the kick out from Anthony Seymour down the centre of the park Michael Shields was the man in there but winning the breaking ball up was Keane Walsh Walsh recycled the ball outside to Cullum Scully. Bars now just looking to try and punch another hole in this Castlehaven defence using the aid of the wind in this opening 30 minutes. Here's Brian Hayes going through the oh, centre of the park. Score. Hayes from outside of the exclusion zone. Brian Cuthbert's a super start from the Bars. Great start for the Bars. And like just like today at the Nemo game, if you pressurise the kick out and if you win those breaks, you dominate games. I think the Bars are really up for this one. I think they're really trying to put Anthony Seymour under pressure on his kick out, trying to rattle him, and I think win these kick outs and they, you know, they'll have a good half here. Here's the kick out from Anthony Seymour, again over towards that far side, and again it is Michael Shields winning the breaking ball. Dennis O'Brien getting on in possession, pass the outside to Colm Scully. Scully under pressure though, there's a great hand inside there though from Colm Maguire, turning over possession, and here come the Haven on the attack. Outside to Kieran O'Sullivan, switching the play over towards that far side of the field now. Haven looking to try and muster an opportunity to Cahillans. Of course, part of this panel of the Haven, they hurl with the bars. One of those is Connor Cahillan. Back outside to Michael Hurley, Connor Cahillan. The Haven taking their time, but Michael Hurley was played off the ball. And it's going to be a free in awarded by John Ryan over the far side of the field. Yeah, well worked. In fairness, like it's going to be a war of attrition for Castlehaven to get up against that wind, and they seem to be comfortable with that play, especially with the likes of Mark Collins there. A lot of ball is going to go through his hands in this half um, because he's just so reliable. Uh, as I say, there's going to be no long kicks in here from Castlehaven. It's going to be all hand, hand passing all the way up, but uh, no better team. Quite a strong breeze facing Mark Collins this evening. We asked how much it's worked, but that score is a super score for Mark Collins. Brian Cuthbert, especially in a very strong breeze. Yeah, great kick. Mark's a superb striker of the ball. It's actually going to be quite interesting. Uh, Mark Collins, you know, he's, the, he's the, the, the real, real instigator of all good play for Castlehaven. He's on Michael Shields there. Michael has been dominating in the air, but Mark certainly will cover ground here. Quite an atmosphere here for what is only 200 spectators allowed. As that ball is turned over by Colin Lyons. And a chance now for the Haven to try and level up this game. Here's Cahill Maguire working his way inside. But it was a loose pass inside. And the Bears are going to deal with that all night long. Jamie Burns singing up to Ian Maguire. And now they're walking it through the channels. Looking to, for Dennis O'Brien. Sends it long inside the 45 metre line. But again, there was a Haven hand inside there. And now it's Mark Collins, the captain, who's been closely marshaled by the Bears. Captain Maguire. Dennis O'Brien. In fact, sorry, it's a Roland Welton, I should say. On towards Conor Cahillan. Sending it long inside. So a chance inside here for Brian Hurley. He really is a strong, strong unit, Brian Hurley. There was a foul going in there. The advantage didn't accrue. It's a free in for the Haven. Yeah, Patrick, contrary to what I predicted before the game, I think Castlehaven are going man on man here. They're pushing right up, and you can see every time that the bars hit the ball here, it is, it is. They are under pressure to get the ball out, but they're, you know, both teams are very comfortable with the ball. But uh, you know, a couple of turnovers there. Castlehaven are pouncing on them, um, and certainly in the last two minutes, come, you know, the bars had a great start, but it's all been Castlehaven these last two minutes. Just over five and a half minutes gone in this opening half of this Bond Secures Premier Senior Football Championship final. The Haven captain Mark Collins sending this one in, and the Haven. Have squared up this game at two points apiece. Yeah, it's a super game. I think, as I said last week here in the Nemo game, you just get the vibe in the knockout tournament. You definitely get it here. It sounds like there's a couple of thousand here, but the noise that's going on behind us, it's certainly a very competitive, uh, very physical game. Just getting that outside the 13 metre radius was Patrick O'Neill over towards that far side. Jamie Burns walking up as the Haven looked to try and start retreat and close out space. But there's plenty of space over here for Olin Murphy as he makes his way up towards the centre of the park with this right flank in front of us here in a very, very breezy and cold park here in. Possession with Dennis O'Brien walking his way inside the 21 metre line. And he's over carried the ball. And that was the pressure from the Haven. And it's a free out for the Bears. Good pressure there, but in fairness, 20 metres all he was coming on to his left. He had plenty of time. He may not be a natural left legger, but still. 
Those, you gotta take those opportunities in the semi-final. Oh, the poor turnover ball is a chance of a goal inside here, Ooh. and it's scored by Stephen Sherlock, asking and scoring his third goal of the game, asking for the pressure on the Haven. And there's your reply, Saint Finbar's with the goal. Yeah, it was a gift, really, to be honest, Patrick. Uh, I, I can't remember who took the free very, very quickly. It was just kicked directly, one pass back of the net. Uh, the last man that Castlehaven wanted on that ball was Stephen Sherlock, and he finished with a plum. To be fair. Yeah, what's interesting here is actually Castlehaven's kickouts. They do like to go close or short. There's, uh, you can see the bars, even their supporters are generating this sense of panic and making Castlehaven kick long, which is into the bars' hands here in midfield. And here you go, they're cleaning up. Exactly as you're saying, Derek played it inside towards Ian Kavanagh. No chance for Killian Myers Murray. But That's that right. goes to the right hand side of Wade. Brian just going back. Yeah. That was Ronan Walsh who gave away that free. Was yeah, cheap, I, th I think Derek's right. He, he, he panicked. He just gave the ball away. He didn't need to kick it. They were against a very strong wind. I think, um, you know, I think the Bars think that they can get at Anthony Seymour here. There's huge, huge uh, vocal, <laughs> almost intimidation on his kick out. And they've won every single kick out so far. I have never heard of such a raucous atmosphere where there's only 200 people here. But this is the intensity and the atmosphere this game is going to be played at. Here's another chance oh, for Killian Myers Murray. Oh, Off oh. the outside of the post. It would have been cunning. I was actually yes, hoping it was going week. over. It was just a beautiful strike. Into the, that wind uh, was going to carry a beautiful strike in fairness. And I'm just sad to see that go away because it was hit so nice. Even, even though they want to get scores, obviously, uh, Derek and Patrick, I think they know they have this kick out. I think they have them under so much pressure. They've won every single kick out so far. So wides aren't a ba as bad as normal either. Matt Collins under pressure there from Ian McGuire. Collins nearly getting to it. Just ended up on the back of his arse. And a chance now for the Bears to set up again. McGreevy playing that ball into the corner. He's won the breaking ball. But just plays it outside towards Cian Walsh. And the Bears now looking to settle up once again. This is a strong win. It could be worth five points to the to the Bears if they do lead at half time it is that strong Killian Myers Murray walking that ball inside towards Colin Lyons Lyons with a shot and Lyons with the score but the score won't count because there was a foul just before and John Ryan is warding a free from 21 yards out yeah Patrick I, I personally I think it's just a kick out I think the Bears are putting so much pressure on the Castlehaven kick out everything is, is coming from that uh, I think if Castlehaven are smart here they'll surely have something done that, that they can guarantee themselves kick, uh, possession from the kick out because they've shown once they have possession they're actually very dangerous at the other end but the Bars have targeted this kick out and they, they are masters at the moment here but to be fair Brian is it because the Haven are playing so deep from their own kick out they've got 14 men inside their own half the field but I think so Patrick but I, I, I think you, you know when you're under pressure on your kick out that you'd have, you know at this stage of the year that you'd have something worked out so that you'd win the ball handy as that free goes in from Stephen Sherlock inside the near upright and inside 10 minutes, the Bears, Derek Cavanagh, yeah, lead by can, four points. Yeah, and they're, well, good value for it. You can just see, see that they're generating this sense of panic around the ground. Castlehaven have the men back, because this is the game they're used to playing. They're looking for the short kick out. Now they're having to go long, again. Is that kick out from Seymour sent over towards that far side. And a super mark over there. Claimed, and no chance for the Haven to go on the counter-attack. Here's Brian Hurley. Brian Hurley walking his way inside off the right peg. Hurley with a shot off the outside of the upright. That's been the story of the Havens night just so far. It's been so near. But now the Bars looking to try and walk themselves through the channels. Ian McGuire passing it back to Colin Lyons. O'Connor and again Lyons on the loop. Sending the ball over towards that far side. Keane Walsh playing in the right or the left wing. Wearing number 22. One of the two changes made by Paul O'Keefe's management team. But it was a super hit inside there by Roland Welton. He's turned over the ball and won a free for his team as well. And it's a free out for the Haven. It's going to be quickly taken though. I think they need a score now because I know they're, they're looking forward to the second half, Castle Haven, playing with this win. But at the same time, if that lead stretches to 6, 7, 8, they could be in big trouble. There's a Haven man down there in the centre of the park. A play continues on Ian McGuire. Under pressure there. The man was quick to get up to try and put a tackle in. And again, the bars are slowing things back down. But the Haven are trying to push up and press up the court. To use a basketball analogy. Play it all here towards Dennis O'Brien. What can the bars work? Can they get another score to add on? What is as the wind and rain starts to team down here in Parky Rain? Colin Lyons back outside towards. 
Jamie Burns and Killian Myers Murray. 116 now in this championship, but that was a loose pass. And it's gone out over the sideline. Yeah, I, I think, you know, as much as the bars are on top, it's the, the free that Castellavin gave the ball back to bars for Sherlock's goal. Obviously, that's just a difference at the moment, but I, I think. I think the bars are a bit more comfortable. Has to have seen a bit rattled, but look, it's already days, Patrick. Smart free one there by Brian Hurley. Yeah, I, I actually didn't even see it. I was looking on trying to figure out what the bars are doing with their forward line because um, I'd be more in favour of keeping a few more inside there because they're just not taking the advantage and they're not using the wind. Brian Hurley under pressure there. Pass it back towards Cahill Maguire. A long pass up along, up that near touchline. As that ball is now starting to be very, very slippery. And it's knocked out over the sideline. It's a bars line ball, quickly taken by Owen McGreevy, who's covered a lot of ground already. Cullum Scully in the centre of the park. Classy ball down towards his near touchline, towards Dennis O'Brien. Beats the defender. Dennis O'Brien working his way inside, looking for Myers Murray. Dummy the, dummy the shot, and he said, You carry the ball in both hands. Oh, a dodgy, a bit dodgy, I think. You know, maybe he did, but. Um the bars, I just don't think they're using this wind and the gale force that's with them. They, they tend to be bringing the ball out too far. As the Haven now looking to try and break out here. David McCarthy. Long ball up towards Damien Cahillan, but just too long for Cahillan. That's a free out, and that's probably the side story to this game tonight. The three Cahillans playing with the Haven and hurling with the bars. I think the bars are well used to that. This has been a couple of seasons now where the bars have played Castle Haven in, in, in uh, football. Uh, I think they're well used to Damien playing and Connor and Jack playing with uh, Castle Evening football and with the Bars and Erling. I don't think it doesn't bother them at all. But I take Derek's point. There doesn't seem to be enough bodies forward. Like Castle Evening have an extra man there again. If I was the Bars, I'd probably put Stephen Sherlock on side and play two men off him um, and, and move the ball inside there. As the Haven work that ball out closely from a triangle, Dennis, or in uh, Ron Welton, I should say, playing outside to Mark Collins. Damien Cahillan from centre back. Playing a fist of ball into the, the left wing forward position. Here's Cahill Maguire. Look at the tra try and take on two defenders. And there's a, a so called rugby tackle. The question is was the man dragged to the ground by Colin Lyons? I think he was. And I don't think there's any need. He was bearing in on goal, fair enough. But like him, we're 45 metres out. There was no sense to that. The Bears could find themselves out down to 14 before they know it. Already a four substitution here by De Haven. Uh, it's David McCarthy who's come off for David Welton. Black card. And a black there. card uh, is black brandished card here by Colin Lyons. Just have a look at the replay, Brian. Yeah, I, I think Patrick, just watching it live as well, uh, the fact that he could see him coming from about 15 metres out. So as Derek said, he didn't have to actually panic at all. Yeah, he could there's, actually, there's he bars, jerseys yeah, everywhere there. He could have just everywhere. shattered him towards the line. Yeah. It was actually very, very poor defending. But I think we have to go back to the fact, even if we look at the team at the moment, the bars have a gale of wind with them. And there's a... <laughs> There's only one bars man up inside these 14. So I, I think they'd be much better off and it would suit them even when they lose the ball if they could, you know, put yeah. more bodies forward and actually defend much more cheaper forward. forward. That free converted there by Brian Hurley. Yeah, super kick, you know, he, he, with that wind into his face. And it's important that the Castlehaven do keep in touch. It looked like for a while that Castle, our bars were going to run, start running away with the scoreboard. But if the Castlehaven keep them in check, it's going to make for a very exciting second half. As you return to live pictures once again, it's Keane Walsh who is in possession now as the Bars reduce the 14 men now for the next 10 minutes approximately. We'll be looking for the time of 24.40 before that man can return to the field, Colin Lyons. What can the Haven do? Can they capitalise on that, especially against this strong wind? There's that ball and there's a free there because there was a late foot in there by Roland Welton. It's going to be a free for the Bars, quickly taken by Ian Maguire. Spin out towards Keane Walsh and the Bars now just looking to try and play some football into space. Ola Murphy under pressure and it's a turned over ball. Now here come De Haven on the counter attack. Roland Walton out towards his captain Mark Collins to switch the play over towards that far side of the field. Came in Cahillan, play it short to Brian Hurley. His full forward line and half forward line of Castlehaven riddled with county stars and here's one of them. Hurley. No foul once again, passes it to Maguire because he knew the advantage was coming and it's a free in. Yeah, you can see uh, Ola Murphy had the ball there and if, if the Bars continue to play around with the ball here in the middle third, they're down a man at the moment. Castle Levin can afford to have a sweeper, I know. 
But at the same time, if they, if they keep making these type of mistakes and handing Castellavin the ball, they're going, to, they're going to create a problem for themselves because they'll allow Castellavin, obviously, to score too much in the first half playing against the Gale. But I think the Bars need to be a bit smarter. I think they need to move the ball a bit quicker. And I think if they do that, you know, and get the ball, the ball to Murray and to Sherlock, they could do damage. Here's Mark Collins with the resulting free off the left inside upright and all the way in and over the bar. Yeah, that's three now from Mark Collins and it's because of the likes of Brian Hurley who's such a traffic and uh, Mark is just picking off the scraps here. And that is the water break as we look at that replay just off the inside of that upright. Yeah, just big point. Again, not a tap over with the conditions. So, in fairness, is uh, it's good, skillful, good, skillful game. The free kicks are super. We've had a brilliant kick from Brian Hurley. And, and as we see, Collins. just look at the picture. I know it's dark over as we see from Montanati across, but it doesn't show clearly on the picture in front of us. But the rain is really teeming all the way across the field. It is, yeah. And you, you, I think you've got a, as Brian was saying there about Owen Murphy. Um, you know that that attack came up there he had oodles of time to place a ball in but you could see it's just not even in his psyche to let the ball in he was just constantly they're looking for the hand pass all the time that's the way they're coached obviously yeah but in a night like today you just got to play a different way especially with the wind you've got to try and back yourself and back that kick pass and the bars full forward line they're not that small so they should be letting into them and you should try a different way you can just see it they're coached the hand pass hand pass and that's playing into castle Levin's hands yeah. your paul keith the manager of the bars Conline's gone after 14 minutes, 40 seconds. Yeah. There's about another seven minutes to go. What's the game plan from here now just to try and keep it in the game? Well, obviously he used to play with six defenders if Castlevin are playing with six forwards. So I, I, I would think, you know, I would take Derek's point, but I also, looking at, at the uh, the bars full forward line, I don't think the movement, Derek, is enough out of them either. Yeah. I think Stephen Sherlock likes to play close to the goal. Yeah, There's yeah, not yeah. an awful lot of runs. I think Ola Murphy might have looked up once. Was he the guy to kick it? I'm not sure, but at the same you know you have to have the guy inside who's yeah, going to yeah. bust his chops to make runs over and back. And most especially now when you're a man down, you're going to have to have two inside who are going to work, work, work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can tell you the nominated free man looks to be Mark Collins playing in front of the half-back line. In fact, it's actually uh, Rory McGuire his, who is going to be playing the free roll for the next couple of minutes. Is that ball over there? Brian Hayes did very well to pick it up. Quite tough, tough conditions here this evening in this semi-final of the Premier Senior Football Championship. What a day of Cork Championships it has been so far. And again, the question arises... That's a black card for me. He pulled him down. It's, if you're going to apply the rule, that's it. This, pulled this, him down. this is exactly what frustrates people involved in Gaelic football. Two minutes ago, we had, we had uh, Colin Lyons go off with a black card. You know, and we're looking here now in replay. That's it's the exact Callahan. same. It's the exact same. He pulls him down as well. So you can't have one rule for one and one rule for someone else two minutes later. Well, it's a chance for Stephen Sherlock to try and extend that lead back out, but no. Goes left and wide. I must say, 200 people here. It sounds like 5,000. Yeah, I'd say they've been told to make some noise for their kick out. They're targeting it in the most obvious way. And to be fair, it's working for them. If we only could have a camera down to our right inside, all the bar supporters and players and mentors all standing on their feet. But they're playing with the 14 men for another six minutes possibly. As this play is walking through the centre of the park, Matt Collins offloading to Brian Hurley. Hurley's broken inside that tackle. Walk outside to Damien Cahillan. Damien Cahillan with a super score inside there. And the score is back down to two points. Yeah, I can see their logic now why they wanted to play against the wind because they're so comfortable with running the ball up with these big strong runners coming through. So playing against the wind I think suits them. Yeah, and you see there where, 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 you're, where you're a man down allowed Castlevin the very first time to get the short kick off off. Um, and that, that was the very start of their movement there. Up to now they've been under pressure. Supermark claimed inside there, but the man was fouled without playing the ball. That was... Cahill Maguire and the wrong man is actually after taking the free. Maguire should have taken it, but play continues on. As that ball's walked into the corner. Michael Hurley just spilling that for a moment, but there's a free man outside. It's Cahill Maguire back outside, out from the outside of the right peg. That ball won't go as Patrick O'Neill stops him, probably does the right thing to keep the bars on the move. And here's Jamie Burns. 
offloading that ball over that far side. There's a foul there by Conor Cahillan once again. The free taken quickly. Ian Maguire now looking to try and apply some pressure. No scores for the Bars since that black card in the 14th, or in the 15th minute, I should say, from Colin Lyons. The Haven have scored three on the bounce. Michael Hurley, or Brian Hurley, I should say. Mark Collins and Damien Cahillan as the Bars now looking to try and get a score of their own. Against the head, one might say. Stephen Sherlock off the left peg. Who sends it right and wide. After 20 minutes, Patrick, I just get the sense that um, Castlehaven are a bit more economical going forward. They just have a little, a little bit more threat about them with the likes of Damien Callan coming up and the Hurley coming, and the, both Hurleys playing good. Uh, they just seem to be a little bit more dangerous, I think, versus the Bears. And you see the Haven looking to try and keep this tempo up for this 10 minute period as quick as possible. As they walk it into the centre and the luminous boots once again is Brian Hurley sending the ball low into the corner. A shot going around the body, snap around the body. What a score inside there from the Haven corner That's forward. Michael Hurley, yeah. Michael Hurley, it is, Derek. Yeah, super point. They just, you don't really know. Bars are quite predictable uh, in terms of what the ball channels they're going through. Castlehaven seem to be spraying the ball all over the place and um, it's paying off for them. I think uh, the Bars are going to have to tie down Brian Hurley a bit more. Everything seems to be going through him. Uh, you know, he, he normally you'd see Brian in by the goal scoring, but tonight. In the first half here, they played him out centre forward, and he's like their conductor. And I think Jamie Burns is going to have to tighten up on him here big time and, and stop play going through him. Because once he has it, he's very, very dangerous in terms of setting up scores. Ian Maguire fouled on this occasion. It's going to be a noting taken by John Ryan. And in fact, it's going to be further than a, a noting. So speaking to by the Haven captain, Mark Collins. And it is just going to be a noting as the book goes back into the right-hand pocket of our McCroom official. As this play now works up Keen Walsh in possession we have about 9 minutes gone that's in bin but you must remember there was about a 90 second water break so approximately 2 minutes left in that black card Michael Shields haven't mentioned Shields too much this evening so far in towards Alan O'Connor making an advanced roll from the corner back position recycles the ball back outside to Killian Myers Murray who goes back to midfield to Keen Walsh and this is the pressure that the Haven have been applying over the last 7 or 8 minutes Colm Scully now looking to try and work the ball into space over in that far corner. Thought about playing backwards, didn't, and worked it into a triangle. A chance now for Ian Maguire to take on this Haven defence. Play the ball outside. It looks like a score from the training ground if it works, and it does. Yeah, I think Ian Maguire made that. The bars were going nowhere, just side to side. It just took someone like Ian Maguire to take it on and uh, create the overlap. Brian Hayes it was with the score on that occasion. Super score indeed. As you come back to life pictures, as they hear and again on the counter attack, Colin McGuire has beaten two defenders. He's tearing down the heart of this Bears defence. A shot going in for the Haven, and that's a quick levelling score inside there. It looks to be Rory McGuire, it might be. In fact, it's Jamie Walsh is the man who's scored that. It's a level game once again, and the Haven playing against the wind this evening. The referee, they're calling for the man to come back onto the field, but with that water break, he's probably got another minute to go. He's standing in front of us, warming up Colin Lyons. As that kick out now is taken by Patrick O'Neill once again. Ian Maguire dispossessed in the catching of that ball by Mark Collins and here's Conor Cahillan Cahillan now just recycling that ball outside to Mark Collins can they have and get one more score before the sin bin walking up through the centre of the park Roland Welton here's Jamie Walsh once again score of that last point good nick around there by Michael Hurley Hurley bearing down and it's a free in for the Haven like I think he did very well to get that free yeah, there. I'd like to see that. Back. I think he went over four steps there. Let's yeah. just see here. I think he knew he did. He, he was going to be outnumbered here, Patrick. And I think if we count the steps he takes here, look. One, one, two, three, four, five. No, for, I think he fell. He fell. He fell. He threw himself down. give a free for that. But so look, it's going to be another point for Castle Haven. They've done, they've done very, very well since Colin Lines has gone off. I think the extra man has made a huge difference. They're running him. 
is up and running and I think also they've managed to get off these quick kick outs which have given them primary possession which they didn't have in the first 10 or 12 minutes but the Bars will do very well to get in ahead of here at half time to be honest in that period it's been 6 points to 1 for the Haven and they've utilised that sin bin period to perfection and against the wind more crucially yeah, and you I think they're very effective going against the wind, Patrick, in fairness to them. Like, there's just, it seems to be the bars are predictable, whereas uh, Castlehaven are just so efficient at running through the ball. That ball walked into the corner once again. Michael Hurley inside over there. Tackled inside there by Ian Maguire as, as the bars have resumed back to 15 men. Colin Lyons is back on the field. And free going to be taken there by Ian Maguire as we enter the final three minutes of this semi final. And the bars now have gone inside looking up the field off camera. It's three men inside that full forward line. Jamie Burns now looking to try and walk it through the lines. There was a pull of the jersey there. So another noting to be put into the book of John Ryan as that free is quickly taken by Cullum Scully. Back up to Keen Walsh and Ian McGuire with a dispossession there on this occasion. And Brian Hurley has ended up on the floor. But the call is a free out for touching the ball on the floor. That free is quickly taken by the bars. Here's Colin Lyons, the man who was on the black card. Ball just kept in. Hugely played. And Dennis O'Brien did very well to keep it in. He's trying to evade two, three tacklers. There's a big shot going in there from Stephen Sherlock. But that ball won't go out. But it will now. We're out. The assistance of Brian Hayes, that ball goes right and wide. Yeah, that's their main score threat there, Stephen Sherlock. To playing with a gale force win, he's getting on the ball 45 metres out with Damien Callahan all over him. So, doesn't look like an effective ploy. Seymour, not too many options. Again, he's forced to go along looking for Mark Collins. He's under pressure from Ian Maguire. But again, they haven't win the breaking ball. That ball is dropped inside and the referee says, lads, it's unplayable from there, we'll hop it up. So, a chance now. Can the Bars try and level this game? They've only got one point since the 10th minute. Maguire under pressure inside there. McGreevy was fouled though in the process of kicking the ball by Rory Maguire. And it's a free in 45 yards out. And a chance now for the Bars to level up this game. Yeah, I think, I think the Paris Patrick should be showing a bit more composure. They won the county championship only two or three years ago. So, and they've all those players there playing. I think they need, to, they need to settle the game down a bit. They still have you know, a couple of minutes before half time is going to come. Two or three points here will make a big difference to them uh, going into half time. And I think they need to score those. Sherlock was being Quiet. put off by the crowd inside there. Under pressure from the Haven supporters and the pressure told. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, it's amazing. Actually, there's only uh, a couple of hundred people there said it before. It's just the noise is quite uh, raucous, to say the least. There's a kick out from Seymour. Finds a man in cleanly on this occasion. That's David Welton. And the Haven, though, in this scoreline, if we're going in a half time, would be quite very pleased. A point up going to injury time. And a foul there by Stephen Sherlock. The Haven up by a point, playing against the wind. Yeah, there will be two minutes of injury time, lads. I, I go back to when the Bars played Ballincollig in the very first round of the, of the championship in the, in the group stages. They, they had a period of dominance at the start, and Ballincollig really came back at them, and they fell away. But then the Bars decided that they were going up, up the ante. They got a lot more physical. They got a lot tighter. I think tonight they came out all guns blazing, but as soon as Colin Lines went off, Castlehaven were very smart with the ball, and they really hurt them. And I think in the second half, the Bars are going to come back out here, and they're going to have to go to war if they're going to try and win this game. The Haven now looking to try and go up through the lines. Jamie Walsh under pressure inside there from Michael Shields. Uh, Overcarrying the ball is the call. Yeah, fair call there, Patrick. He did overcarry. A chance now for the Bears. What has been a, a tense encounter in this opening 31 minutes here in Packerin. That ball squirted over there, but it's run out over the sideline. Uh, an unforced turnover going against the Bears. And a chance now for the Haven. To try and work it through the lines. Damien Cahalan walking over the halfway line. Boots that ball long. But a defensive mark claimed inside there by Alan O'Connor. Can the Bears now level up before 
the close out of this opening half. Colin Lines under pressure now from the high court press from De Haven. Ian McGuire popping the ball over the top. McGuire makes an off the shoulder run himself. Works it over towards that far side. The chance inside here for Brian Hayes. McGuire was taken out of it off the ball. I don't think the referee saw it. Play continues on. Seymour. Gains composure to gather that ball in the haven now. Just looking to try and wind down that clock. They know they're in a comfortable position going into half time with a one point lead. Mark Collins offloading to Brian Hurley in the centre of the park. Hurley under pressure has to recycle that ball backwards. Jamie Walsh now in possession as John Ryan blows the half time whistle in this Cork Premier Senior Football Championship semi final sponsored by the Bon Secures. It is Castlehaven who lead at half time. Eight points to St. Finbar's 1 4, lads. It's been an enthralling opening 30 minutes. Has been. It's been very aggressive, very fast. It's been a good game of football. Um, on the balance of things, I think the Haven are worthy of that one point lead, uh, albeit it's against a Gale Force win. So I think the balance of things, they're, they're looking like a four or five point better team so far. They seem to have more intent, is the, is the word I'd sum it up with. The Bars are going forward, they're getting plenty of possession, but it's they seem to kind of have no real intent. Sometimes Stephen Sherlock is coming out, sometimes Killian Myers Murray is coming out and there's no real intention with the direction of their play. Castlehaven, on the other hand, I think are really causing trouble. Ball's going through um, Brian Hurley almost every all the time. Uh, he's causing a lot of trouble. Michal, Michal Hur Michael Hurley's causing a lot of trouble, and Mark Collins is picking up where you're getting your free. So Let's a lot look more at intense. this goal that was scored by the Bars in the opening half, lads, and this is the mistake, Brian, by Ronan uh, Walsh allowing Stephen Sherlock to bury that ball to the back yeah, of the Yeah, like e e even if the Castlehaven were going to get possession from their free, the man was going to be immediately under pressure. Like you'd rarely see uh, somebody giving a sharp free across his goal in front of his goal. If he was putting it out to the wing on this side, you'd say something. But it was just a mistake. Um, you know, it was a mistake. It, it happened. Um, and you, at that stage, you know, the Bears had a big cushion. They seemed to be dominating anti Seymour's kick out. They were really were on top. But as soon as I said earlier on, Colin Lines went off. The bars lost their way, but to be fair to Castlehaven, they upped the ante. They smelt blood. They, um, you know, every time that the bars had possession, Castlehaven afford, afforded themselves a sweeper in front of Stephen Sherlock because of the spare man. And every time that Castlehaven got possession, which they could do easier because of the extra man on kick out, um, they actually ran the ball quite well. Really, really looked impressive. Moved the ball through Brian at centre forward. Every time Brian gets the ball, you know, a lot of times anyway, not every time, the ball goes to Michael. Uh, and, and they've looked very, very, very dangerous. Um, you know, if you're a betting man right, right now, the bookies would have had it right, Derek, before the game because it looks as if Castlehaven really, if, 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 if and I, I'd go along with Derek completely here, uh, they look to have a better method of what they're trying to do. Um, they're trying to work the ball to Brian. He conducts play from in around the 45. And I think even in the second half, they can actually vary up what they're going to do if they want to keep using Brian as centre forward, grand. But they'll trouble the bars if they put Brian and Michael inside together because they're a deadly combination. But all of that is prefaced by the fact that they'll have to have the ball. Um, I do still think that the bars could put some pressure on anti Seymour's kick out. And I do think that the bars are going to have to come here. And as I said just a while ago, they have to go to war here if they're going to claw their. And they really, really, it's clawing their way out of this one um, to get to play Nemo. And I think, you know. They will give it something here for 10 or 12 minutes, but if Castlehaven continue to be as smart as they are, as efficient as they are, and as good as they are, you can only see one winner really right now. I suppose we saw it in the hurling final that the wind was so strong that the fellas were taking shots in 60, 70, 80 yards out, and the wind was carrying the ball over mm. the bar. I suppose in football now, you could start thinking about bringing out the likes of Michael Hurley, Brian Hurley, Conor Cahillan out to the middle of the field to bring it into the half hour line and take shots now from 40, 50 yards out knowing the ball will be going to carry yeah and the likes of Brian Hurley there now he'll fancy him especially it's that kind of wind across the pitch it's it's the guy that can kick with the outside of the boot almost you saw Killian Myers Murray try it there just hit off the post and wide um, the likes of Brian Hurley now will love that type of play you know and they will get the ball he's going to get plenty of ball and that's where I think Castlehaven will score with the wind a lot easier than the Bears have done where defensively can the Bears now shut that down a playing against the wind where are the scores now going to come from I think they have to push up on Castlehaven kick out they've done it really efficiently they have to continue on, create this sense of panic on their kick out and make them make mistakes because the Bears possibly I think are stronger 
in the kickouts. I, uh, anecdotally, I'm only going off here, but they look to be on top of midfield on Castlehaven's kickout. They have to press that and double down on that, and I think they they can do that quite easily, um, and hopefully get some for, for their sake to get some rewards from that. Yeah, I think um, the way the bars and Derek alluded earlier on as well is that the way the bars seem to play. They wanted to get a, a, a one-out runner here around the middle third, break a tackle, and then hand the ball to Myers Murray or Stephen Sherlock. They, they didn't seem intent on kicking it in. So in the second half, due to the fact that they're against such a gale, we haven't seen bar once, the, the Ian Maguire show, as I call it, right, where he puts on these afterburners um, and, and he dominates the game for about 10 minutes. But that's all it needs to be because he creates havoc in that 10 minutes. The bars need that now. The bars need him to burst through tackles, create one overlap, and get a, basically get a, another goal. I think to be fair, he did try it there in the last, say, in the last two minutes, but he was just taken out of it. Yeah, you know, late, late in the move. Yeah, Castlehaven. No, this is the bars' biggest weapon in terms of punching into their defence. And you know, if the ball didn't go in with the wind, I can't see how the ball is going to go yeah. in against the wind. Mm. So they know Castlehaven. No, no, if the bars are going to do anything, they're going to run at us. Uh, Ian Maguire particularly will run at us you know Colin Lyons will run at us um, you know if we can stop those type of players running at us we soak up pressure and then you know they could play them a bit on the counter attack because they know that Brian is on top they know that Michael is on top inside uh, and they know that if they get the ball to them they will score um, and I, you know at this stage all they have to do is win the second half you know win the second half and they're into the final simple as Simple as indeed, but if it was straightforward, we all wouldn't be here, gents. That's the, the whole crucifix. But next Sunday, then the big final, I suppose it's down in Park. We've, we've played, seen all, most of the games here in, in Park, you're in, but it'll be a big big occasion to whoever gets to the final. Huge because there's there's a good, healthy tradition between Nemo and the Bears or Nemo and Castlehaven. So it'll be a super game. Um, can't wait for it. Uh, I do think it's, just great to you, it's great for you to be sitting back as a Nemo man, to be knowing you're in the final. Yeah, and to be honest, at, at Parsa today, I didn't think we were going to be there. But um, And I think, you know, I think they get doing a disservice to Nemo and Duhalo to say Nemo got through in the skin of their teeth because Duhalo did so good and Nemo just pipped them at the end, in fairness. But the likes of Conor Horgan came on and scored two great scores. Um, James McDermott midfield was brilliant. Paul Kerrigan was excellent to getting scores at the right time. So I think Nemo did enough from some of their bigger players. Um, so it's great to be there and really looking forward to, to whoever comes out. I just have a suspicion it's going to be Castlehaven at this stage. Let's have a look at the, the two benches quickly. Who, from the Castlehaven point of view, are the, the one or two lads to, to watch out for coming on? I know Jack Cahillan might be one. I think Jack Cahillan came on the lot. The yeah. As well. yeah, Jack Jack certainly is one to watch. Uh, he's a very, very, very good player. And I don't think he's out of his depth playing at senior level, even though the fact he's only 17 or 18. Um, I, I think, you know, Shane Nolan was very good for Castlehaven a number of years ago. Um, I don't know story is with him, but if he, he comes on, he'll add something to the forward line as well. Uh, the, the bars, I'm not quite sure. We were, we, we were talking around Colm Keane before the game, why he was not selected. He must be injured because he is one of the linchpins for the bars in around the middle, and he'd make a difference. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I do think Honestly, honestly, I, I do think if Castlehaven uh, retained the composure that they showed there for that 15 minutes, it's, it's irrelevant really who the Bars might be able to bring on unless, unless they come out here um, really, really all guns blazing. Yeah, I think the, 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 or, uh, the Bars have nothing to lose now. They have to go at it um, almost. Not being violent about, but it has to be just a kind of an, an, a, a battle, like, an it, absolute it's, battle. It's going to be a bit be. like playing high risk football, like what we saw uh, during the week with Newstone. Yeah, they played so high up the field against the Bears, they were, they were trying to take the risks. They've got to just go one for one now and just have a battle and use the crowd to their advantage or lack of, but whatever crowd they have, things to be working for their kickouts and they need that to go with the rest of their play. I just think it has to be an all out battle for them to win this game. Well, it's going to be an all out battle that's going to be played out over the next 35 minutes or so. Live coverage of this uh, Cork Premier Senior Football Championship semi-final second half is now underway through John Ryan and the Haven looking to try and get that opening possession of the game through Jamie Walsh. First time ball inside. Is there a chance for an early goal for the Haven? Michael Hurley just inside the post and it's gone in and over the bar. Super point, unorthodox, just knocked it off the ground in fairness and uh, but yeah, good poachers right. Brian on replay, he could have went for goal on the snapshot. I think he was 
Yeah, the cornerback had him, had him in control. He did the right thing. And good, good point to get out of there. The ball's played in towards the centre of the park. Looks like it could be a change on the Bars team. Owen Finn and Connor Den here in. We'll get those substitutes in a moment. The Bars defensively you know, don't need to walk up through the channels. Here's Alan O'Connor. Walking it up inside towards Michael Shields and Shields towards this near touchline towards Jamie Burns. Burns is under pressure but did well to offload to Owen McGreevy as we watch off camera. Maguire being man-marked there in the centre of the park following the play though McGreevy working his way through no advantage accruing and it's going to be a free in for the Haven, or for I the think, Bears I should say. I think the Bears are for non Connor Denny and Owen Finn. I'm not quite sure who they've taken off yet. Um, but certainly both of them would be um, certainly Conor Denny would have experience of playing a lot with the Bar senior team that won the county championship as I say a number of years ago Owen Finn would be renowned as a hurler as well he's very very quick um, extremely pacey so I think the Bars uh, you know are going to be relying on that kind of pace to break tackles but uh, certainly in the first attack after half time Castlehaven are not slow in moving the ball inside to Michael Hurley and we, I'd say we'll see a lot more of that Is this kick out now being taken once again under the roars and screams from the Bars supporters in the stand? And again, it's the Haven who have won the breaking ball. One of those substitutes might be Keen Walsh. We'll get to that in a second. Here's Brian Hurley though. Winning possession, getting out in front of Alan O'Connor. Showing a good pair of feet there, Brian Hurley. But this time he was dispossessed by Alan O'Connor. And O'Connor wins back that ball. Played outside towards Conor Dennehy. Something in. has happened it's off the ball there. In. It's going to be a free in here, I'd say. Just scanning through the field. Lads, Keen Walsh Hurley. looks like one that's gone. Yeah. Brian Hurley is injured down there, and John Ryan is going to have to go back and speak to his official. Obviously, something happened there. Brian, I don't know, did you. No. Catch up, but we'll catch it. We'll have a look here on the replay. Just, just after the bars won the ball back, I think somebody ran into Brian, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like the centre back, Owen Murphy, has yeah. taken them completely out of it. And Brian Hurley has been speak, spoken to by John Ryan. I think, to be fair, um, Brian initiated it, but I think Owen finished it. So the call is going to be interesting here now because Owen Murphy is being attended to but John Ryan knows what he's looking for and I he's telling Maguire to stay away I don't want your opinion I wouldn't be surprised Patrick with John Ryan that he will give Owen a black card for taking a man out off the ball and if that's the case the Bears are going to find it very difficult to win this game well now we're going to find out the moment the truth as there's a substitution for the Bears over on that far side of the field I think we concentrate now as our attentions turn to the McCroom official and Ola Murphy is pleading his case. It's yeah, only no. a yellow card. Yeah. I, I don't understand, like, if you take a man No, to be fair, ball. we have the benefit of replay as well in front of us. Now, this is the ball the Bars had, and now they're under pressure again with a free from, I say it's Brian Hurley, is it, or Mark Collins? It's Mark Collins. Mark Collins. Mark Collins on that 21 metre line. With the aid of a strong breeze here this evening. Looking to try and extend this lead out to two points. And where are... He's going short with it, in fact. Looking to try and work the angle. Collins, though, was half blocked down there. And you question why didn't he go for the score. As the Bears now looking to try and work the channels out through Michael Shields in the full-back position. On the loop, Shields from Colin Lyons. And Shields had a handoff there into the face of the Haven man. We might have to come back to that in a moment. Play continues on through Brian Hayes. Jamie Burns recycling the ball inside towards Ola Murphy. Ball sent in low inside. There are chances of deflection inside there, but the Bears still in control of this one. Dennis O'Brien in possession now. In the far corner. Walked out towards Killian Myers Murray. Mario just playing it low outside and it was cleanly picked up off the ground inside there and it's going to be a free out for the Haven. Number 13, 
number 19. And that's the introduction of Jack Cahillan, was the man who was introduced only moments ago. Conor Driscoll is the man who has left the field of play. As that free now is quickly taken backwards towards Rory Maguire. Maguire under the pressure there of Sherlock. Sherlock putting in a big shift there now, trying to get the tackle in. And he's done so, but the Haven do very well to keep a walking up through the channels. How much more can they work it up through? Over on that far side of the field, Maguire. Here's Brian Hurley now again, 45 yards off from goal. But this one's just going to drift to the right hand side. And we look at the Irish flag down to the right hand side, lads. It's more coming cross field now than whatever it was today. Huge win. I think it was worth the punt, all right, from, from Brian. Some fella who would probably fancy his chances there, so I, I wouldn't uh, give out to him too much about would that one. Would you question about the, not taking the score from Matt Collins a short while ago? Going Definitely, for a punt. absolutely I would, yeah. Because I, I think they probably backed themselves a bit too much in terms of the cross field balls. They tend to love that with the Hurleys. Um, definitely, point was on and uh, should have been taken. Ian McGuire under pressure there from Matt Collins. Play continues on and here comes the big engine of Maguire winning a free in the centre of the field. He's pleading for a black card but one would think that that's shy of being given one. No, no, Mark can be claimed from a set play so play continues on. Not sure if they got the rule confused. Owen Finn, play out towards Owen Murphy. Reciting the ball back outside towards Killian Myers Murray. Dangerous ball inside! But the man was going backwards and looked like tripped over his own legs, Brian Cuthbert. Yeah, I think there was nothing in that, Patrick. I think the one thing I would say is the bars have upped the ante as well, but as we were looking for. Uh, I know, another question. Yeah, I think they definitely have upped the ante, and I, I think, you know, I, always and ever with the bars, Derek, I think the experience I'd have with them anyway is that they're at their best when there's, when there's a war on. And that's I think, my point exactly yeah. that has to be an out out battle that's kind of what I meant yeah. was just to they're at their best when, when, when there's a war on and I think um, they certainly knew that coming out in the second half if they didn't bring this to an absolute war um, and as you said it's not violent or anything like that but the intensity of the tackling the pressing up the, the work right there of Stephen Sherlock earlier on yeah. you know if he was never going to chase down three men but he was still there I think the bars have a sniff yeah. uh, but they need to sustain this now for about ten minutes yeah, and you can hear it again for the kick out. Here they go again. The crowd are on top of them. The, the, the line are on top of them. They're trying to intimidate the Castle Haven kick out again. Is that kick out from Seymour goes short. What was that left cornerback position? Over there. Rowan and Walsh under pressure. Haven are looking to try and run this ball out of the fence. Is this a bit of game of keep ball rather than punt ball? Just trying to walk it through the lines over that far side of the field. The pressure being applied though by... Stephen Sherlock, but again they haven't get out of a tight corner. And now here comes Damien Cahalan. Passes the ball along into the centre of the park for Matt Collins. Collins walking his way inside. In towards Michael Hurley. And here come the onrunners. A great hit inside there, shoulder to shoulder, says a referee. And it's a turnover ball and a free one there by Maguire. Yeah. A super hit inside there by the Yeah, Mark great Cahalan. tackle, great shoulder. But like you can see the bars after getting a sniff, they can see that by upping the intensity, they're, they'll keep themselves in the game here. Um, I think on the Castlehaven kick out, the bars are zonal, but I think they'd actually be better off going man on man. Uh, because Andy Seymour is getting a, a corner that he can see, yeah. very fairness to him, it's quite accurate. Yeah. He's getting that corner two or three times and I think uh, the bars would be much better off putting the squeeze on man on man yeah. and kick out. I never understand why why any team would, would give up that possession, yeah. especially in a night like tonight. It's, cynic, it's, it's a bit silly. Especially whenever they, every every battle, every every single ball, Derek, is a battle. And yeah. I think they'd be better off just going man on man I, and go I at I completely them. agree. Bars just trying to be patient now and looking to try and punch holes in this here in defence, despite playing against a strong breeze here in Park you're in. McGreevy offloading that ball to Owen Finn, walking the ball inside to Sherlock. Sherlock is the potent man, but just couldn't land the score. And that could be crucial at the end of the game. Yeah, that could have been a big one. It suited him right leg. He was just coming out around the arch. He should have nailed it, but uh, in fairness, he is having a good game tonight. So I think his confidence is up. He will get more. Again, again like they're gone zonal here. They'd be much better off. They go man yeah. on man, make it a war. Don't give him a sniff here. As you can see, they've went zonal and forced a long kick out once again. And Michael Shields getting his hands on the ball from that kick out. What can the Bars do from here? Well, it's Killian Myers-Murray in that right corner forward position. 
dummy inside and out and just plays it back calmly out to Dennis O'Brien who turns on the afterburners once again puts on a great solo inside O'Brien with the shot and Dennis O'Brien with the leading score once again for the Bears to be fair to Michael Shields uh, lads he's, he's playing a, a very very intelligent second half he, he's comp like as always he's very combative at the same time he's using all of his experience just to move the ball away break it away he knew he had more bodies around him and then when he gets on the ball he never ever all his career he never wastes it to be yeah, fair to him yeah. and I think he you know I don't know how long he could last midfield here but he certainly is having a huge influence on the game at the moment he is he is as that kick out has been taken substitution on the bars Adam Lyon is in now for Colin Lyons who was on a black car from that first half but that ball's quickly kicked in towards Stephen Sherlock Sherlock with a snapshot around the body over oh what a score brilliant great score this is the type of I think the bars it suits their play in terms of the ball just ricocheting around like that in terms of the long ball in it doesn't seem to suit them that well uh, they're, they're not that well at winning the ball versus the likes of Brian Hurley or Michael Hurley but when the ball comes up yeah. and they're able to knock the ball around the likes of Killian myers Murray, or, or Brian Hayes or, or as we saw there Stephen Sherlock that's what they're good at and it's all gone back to the kick out as soon as the Bears win this primary possession they're in control now Castlevan have it but instead it's the Haven walking inside here's Brian Hurley now after receiving that ball inside from Mark Collins off the left peg of Hurley oh. Trying to turn in, no, just goes left and wide. Is that now the pressure being applied by the bars, despite the bars playing against the wind? I th I think it's more to do with with Brian in a way. He's he hasn't had the ball for about six minutes here, yeah. seven minutes. He's the type of player that needs to have the ball an awful lot, and then when he gets the ball after not after not having it for a while, he will try and bring himself into the game by by shooting. Maybe when another couple of steps maybe on the cards, you know? Yeah, and you said it there as well, Brian, earlier. The Bears did this against Ballancolly, where they come out and absolutely dominated the game. And here they're doing it. So let's see if they can keep it up. Well, here comes Michael Shields once again. Walking that ball inside towards Dennis O'Brien's. Their advanced mark can be claimed here. Well, it was not taken by Owen Finn. Quickly played on. And the triangle worked inside. A chance for Finn, though, on the, on the loop around. But just off the outside of that post, going right and wide. Yeah. To be fair to him, Patrick, Owen Finn has made a bit of a difference as well. On this side of the field, the bars, every time they have the ball, they seem to be able to get inside the half-back line of Castlehaven and actually create a chance either for Stephen Sherlock or for Owen Finn himself. Is that kick out was taken short by Seymour over that far side? Here's Damien Cahalano. The Haven are looking to try and get a foot mark on this game. That ball is sent long inside towards his younger brother Jack Cahalan starting that Premier 1 Championship victory during the week. Is there a chance of a score inside? Michael Hurley zipping inside! Straight at the keeper, second opportunity, bobbing around like a pinball machine! <laughs> but unbelievable, it hasn't gone in! Brian Hurley has knocked it, kept it in from the goal out of play. And a chance now for Cahill Maguire. Maguire under pressure and needs to try and get a score from the Haven. But this ball goes in and... Right and wide, would you yeah. believe it? Mm. Well, well, I'm looking forward to seeing this replay, Derek Cavanagh. Yeah, the longer this game goes on for the Haven without getting a score now, they're going to get nervy. Yeah, it's just absolutely mad sequence of events here. Don't know how that didn't go in. But uh, probably should have taken a point because I don't know how long it's been since the Haven have, have got a point. There, it was there for them to take. And uh, just game seems to be going away from them a little bit here. 13 minutes since the Haven have scored Brian Cuthbert. Yeah, you can see, but I, I don't think they'll panic yet, Patrick. To be fair to them, they have a, they have a good bit of experience on their team. Uh, I just think that, they, you know, that, that was a, a glorious chance they didn't take fair enough, but I think they will still have plenty of chances. Uh, but it's primary possession is the issue here, big time. Breaking ball won on that occasion by Owen Finn. Two hops of the ball, but I know yeah. John Ryan has noticed that after the rows of the Castle Haven. <laughs> The intensity on the pitch, but on the pitch, but also the intensity in the seats of the stand is <laughs> incredible tonight. It is. It's great to be here. It's a great atmosphere around the place. Uh, it's a really enjoyable game. Well, I hope you all at home are enjoying it too. And for what has been a busy couple of months in the Irish Examiner Live Streaming Service, and it won't end here this weekend. We've got county finals coming up this week, or next weekend, I should say, and that will be announced during the week. Is that Haven? Man is under pressure inside in the corner. And Mark Collins also under pressure, but he did very well to offload the ball. 
Walk inside towards the centre and they're walking through the channels. There's another ch chance of a score of a goal for the Haven and the Rens has gone inside. Cahalan. Connor Cahalan and looks to be. Connor Cahalan. Mark Collins walking that ball across the D exclusion zone towards Jamie Walsh. And it is the middle aged of the Connor Cahalan brothers who buries the ball to the back of the net. As it. You know, an opportune time, what an opportune time to score that goal uh, as we go into the water break, Patrick. But to be fair, Castlehaven, you know, they had very little possession um, in that 15 minutes. They looked like scoring a goal just before they actually did. Uh, the Bars, you know, lived on nine lives not to concede that, that first goal. But the second goal there, I think um, the Bars had them defended on this side of the field. But obviously people didn't pick up on the other because there was a two-on-one inside. And to be fair to Damien, or to Conor Callan, there was a lot of power in that shot and went through the keeper's legs, I'd say. Yeah, for Mark Collins to see the space across, use Jamie Walsh, and, yeah. and Walsh obviously got the call from Callan that there was a, a run off the shoulder yeah, being made. That, that there was no overlap there, but Mark Collins, again, uh, a bit like Michael Shields, he doesn't waste possession either. He's a very experienced player. He's very, very comfortable on the ball, left and right hand, left and right leg. And, um, you know, once he got into the centre of the field, he saw that, you know, we'd have a two-on-one here and it was an actually brilliantly executed goal in the end. And it gave, it's after giving a, a slight uh, unfair reflection on that 15 minutes because the Bars brought the war that we spoke about um, and they'd be very disappointed to concede that goal, but I think it gives Castlehaven a very good opportunity again. But the Bars have to reset and go again here now. Go to the field, both sides now retaking their positions up in the field. Yeah, I've been more than impressed with the Bars in the second half. Uh, I was quite critical of them in the first half in terms of their method of working the ball up. Uh, I can now see what they're about in terms of creating that overlap that they're getting in the second half. And they have the, they just don't have the players, the likes of O'Brien early to give it to, but what they do is they've got dainty guys like Dennis O'Brien and Stephen Sherlock to take the ball out, around the loop. Well, 90 seconds in that water break will be added on at the end of the half. Ball punched down there by Mark Collins. There was a hand on it and a chance now for Kieran O'Sullivan. They try and work the score. Oh, there was a dangerous ball. Maguire got a foot in there. There's feet flying in. Body's been thrown on the line. McGreevy though, with a beautiful soccer skill, trying to pick it up. Just couldn't get it. But Owen Finn does. And now come the bars, trying to work out once again. After doing so much good work in that third quarter, they went into the water break, one point down. Possession over on that far side is with Connor Dennehy. Denny here under pressure, looking to know, trying to take it up into the centre of the park and Denny has gone on a 25-30 yard run, pokes the ball long into the corner. Sherlock will just keep it in from going out. There's a push in the back there and now a chance for the Bears possibly to level up this game. Stupid, going over on the line, about to bring it over himself and uh, just a silly push, absolutely very silly. A chance inside here in the corner from Stephen Sherlock. You possibly can't. You just catch him on the left-hand side of your screen. Not an easy kick over here either, by any means, Patrick. The Haven crowd really raucous here this evening. As Sherlock takes this shot, beautifully executed. And the Bears fans are standing on their feet. It's a level game again. Yeah, that was uh, a good score. It's, it's, it's fairly raucous right in the stand there. I think any time those kickouts are freeze. Uh, both sets of supporters are trying to put people under pressure. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there could be some trouble yet down there to our right, Patrick. But uh, in fairness... Oh, mistake from the Haven keeper. He's kicked the ball in and the man in defender has caught it inside the D exclusion zone. That was Damien Cahalan and it's going to be a hot ball. Yeah. That was a critical yeah, error I was, there. I was about to criticise the Bears for not going man for man there. Don't understand why they're coughing up that, that early possession. It just uh, worked in their favour there, but I think a bit uh, fortuitous for the Bears. Yeah, absolutely fortuitous, Derek. Like, it could be a substitution for the Bears. It's going to be held up for the moment, Owen I Keen, would think. Owen Keane, another very strong man. This hot ball is thrown in, though. It's the Haven looking to try and get out of it, under pressure inside there. Which way is this going to go? The, ha the Bears come out with it. McGreevy, out to Sherlock. Sherlock, snap around the body and the Bears take the lead again. Yeah, it's a bit early to be jumping around and dancing up and down. There's 12 minutes to go in the game, but 
Um, you something know, happening and, uh, off the ball. Oh, here, we oh, yeah. a here we go. Here we go. And as they'd say in Aussie rules, it's on. There's spot fire oh, everywhere. Oh, and there's fellas jumping into tackles here. Well, this is something you don't want to see in Gaelic games. But my God, there is spot fires happening absolutely everywhere here. This is really breaking out and scenes that we really don't want to see in Gaelic football. Oh, my words. Well, well, well. Not sure what happened initially. It's obviously when uh, Stephen Sherlock, Sherlock got that bang off the ball. The yeah, it all kicked off from there. Don't know what happened though. And things now are just getting unhealthy here in the field and the stand. Paul O'Keefe is being told to move away. Damien Cahillan just asked him to move off the field. There's players and officials all over the place. It's a bit of a mess now and John Ryan just needs to try and take calm, hold structure of this. Something happened off the ball which caused Stephen Sherlock to end up on the floor. And spot fires happened all over the field. They came from everywhere. Here in Park, you're in. I think if this fire, as you call it, Patrick, isn't put out by someone being sent off, this battle is just going to go on and on because uh, if there's not a red card given out here, it's just, I think it's going to get quite violent. Well, to be fair now, to give the referee benefit of the doubt here, he needs to see, or his officials need to have seen what's happened to be given a red card. Paul O'Keefe is making his way up now to the bars. The bars manager is making his way up. And... And there's people in the crowd here getting... Yeah. ...unnatured here as well. No real need for it, but here now, John Ryan... Just take his time, he's doing the right thing here, I, Brian. I, getting I, everything double checked. Look, even even from the vantage point that we have, we didn't actually have done anything. Any of the three of us oh. didn't spot what happened. I actually think this doesn't kind of suit the bars um in a way. They've just scored, they've just yeah. got ahead, they've just had the impetus, uh, they're against the gale, I know, but there's going to be another three or four minutes at it on the end. Um it's when you're getting on top, you'd like the game to actually continue. So I think this suits Castlev a small bit. Um, even though the bars are against the gale, even though they're a, you know they're a point up, I think it, it, you know they didn't actually need that. Let's see you now what the decision from a McCroom official is going to be because a lot of things happened off the ball there, and he's going to be looking for somebody. And let's take close attention now. A McCroom official is looking around, and he is looking for somebody. Play is currently stopped. I'm just not sure who he is looking for. Well, Ronan the man Welton. Roland Welton is the man being called. Also inside there is Owen McGreevy, who he jump into a tackle, I think. I don't want yeah. to be certain I of that until... I think to be fair to Owen McGreevy, he actually ran in. He didn't hit anyone. He just jumped up and got yeah. pushed at the same time. Uh, he's quite small, but... Well, uh, we didn't see what actually happened with this Stephen Sherlock. This could be a crucial juncture in this game, lads. With six minutes left in the clock, McGreevy it, and Ronald Welton getting two right cards. So both sides now are going to finish this game with 14 men. As there's a substitute, we mentioned him right ago. Owen Keane is coming onto the field, but two right cards for an unsatisfactory dramatic incident well, I there. definitely didn't see Roland Welton do anything and as you say about Owen McGreevy he did come in but he did not come in waving his hands or anything oh, like that no, he just jumped and he got pushed yeah I think it's just opportunistic by the referee to, to kind of to quench this yeah. I think more than anything and Michael yeah, Shields definitely. is the man coming off there lads yeah Michael Shields has come off there I'd say Owen Keane's gone straight in midfield I'd say in fairness to Michael as you were saying there earlier Brian he's had a super game yeah. uh, he put in a brilliant game in fairness to him so um, they'll be looking for Owen Keane to take off from where Michael left off. Well, let's hope now the footballing can do the talking for the next eight, nine, ten minutes, whatever we have left in this quite entertaining Cork Premier Senior Football Championship semi-final. Damien Cahillan passing it off towards Rory Maguire. Conor Cahillan now in possession, 45 yards off from goal. Been tackled inside there, but Cahillan still working away, looking to try and get the offload to Brian Hurley. And the Bears looking to turn it over, and they have... A chance now to go on the counter-attack. Here's Ian Maguire with bars only have one foot forward inside the Castlehaven 45 metre line. Now it's Myers Murray. Here's Stephen Sherlock walking through the channels up now towards Adam Line and in towards Myers Murray. Under pressure, but doing very well. Out towards Owen Finn. Into the corner, go to bars. 
with possession. Looking to try and work it out for a score. Killian Myers Murray has to go off the left peg with it. Yeah. But dragged it just right and wide. It's still a one point game though for the City side. Yeah, and I just didn't get the sense there in that play that they were actually going to score. I just think it's going to be what have we got? Five, there's going to be certainly about five minutes injury time. I'm not sure the Bears have too many scores in them left. Roland Welton, I can see over there, is pleading his case to the sideline official over on that far side of the field. Obviously not happy with that decision, but it's something I will guess whoever will qualify for the county final. It's going to come up in the hearings committee next week or during the week. We'll keep a close eye on that. Oh, the Murray seems to have been taken over completely off the ball. Play continues on though. Jack Cahalan throwing his body on the line. There's a shoulder in there and Cahalan fouls the barsman. And it's going to be a free out. Owen Finn walking up towards Owen Keane. And Finn now going on his bike, walking inside the 45 meter line. What can the bars against the wind remember in this second half? Muster from here. Finn now again on the loop. Is he going to try and go for a shot? He's not. He's offloaded to Maguire. Takes a hefty shoulder. Maguire off the left peg. Just going left and wide. They've scuttled a lot of chances tonight, Brian. Yeah, I think, look, he was unlucky there. Uh, Ian wouldn't be renowned for kicking balls off his left leg, to be fair. He's like a pinball battering through, fellas. But I do think Castlehaven, we will see something from Brian. We will see something from Michael Hurley yet. Uh, this game is on a knife edge. But this primary possession, we'll go back to it again, is absolutely key. Yeah, and Stephen Sherlock's gone back in corner now. I was questioning the, the value of hamming out in the wing because he looks out on his feet. I don't think he's going to get a score from 45 metres. Now he's back in there, so they have a threat in there again. Well, that was a bit of a falcon off Ian Maguire's head. But it's worked out well for the Bears. They've worked it inside. It's a three on two situation for the Bears. Can they convert but straight at but, uh, Anthony Seymour? And there was a man lucky in the box on the far side. But now it's a chance for the Haven trying to level up this game once again. This has been entertaining stuff, end to end, but that ball knocked out by the Bears, and it's going to be a line ball, but play is stopped because there's another substitution, lads, for the Haven. To be fair to Antti Seymour, he made a great save there, Patrick. I, I, I would have felt, I think we all would have felt that Killian Myers Murray should have passed the ball across the square. Um, yeah, it, was, it was going to be a tap-in if the ball went across the square to the back post, but a uh, great save from Antti Seymour. Dara Cahalan the man who is coming on we're waiting to see who's the man going off in fact it's going off over on that far side and that's Carm Kirano Sullivan the wing back so Darren Cahalan into the fray as we resume play now from Michael Hurley's line ball 1-10 the Bears 1-9 the Haven and it's all to play for both sides reduced to 14 men after that off the ball scuffle can they have a level up this game? Remember, they're playing with the wind in the second half. They've scored 1-1 in the second half compared to the Bears. Six points. The Bears have turned it over again. Brian Hayes sending a ball inside. Looking for Jamie Burns. Burns recycles the ball back outside towards Owen Finn. There's a 50-50 ball there. The ball's ended up on the floor and the Haven got a boot to it. Now a chance now once again for the Haven to work the ball out in towards the centre of the park. Damien Cahillan found in space inside the centre forward position. Played outside towards Michael Hurley. Just overcooked that slightly but Hurley will do very well to keep that from going out. His brother's outside him. Michael lost the turn around on a 360 degree loop. Still in possession Hurley. And he's to recycle back outside towards Dara Cahillan. Dara Cahillan under pressure. Yeah, the pressure and in the bars here is immense. Savage pressure there just about to say, if they got a point there, it was going to be hard earned. Brilliant and play here come the, the bars on the counter attack. What thing can they get out? Well, I thought there was an advance mark, could have been claimed, but Killian Myers Murray under pressure. And again, the ball scuttled on the floor, hacked away by a Haven man. But again, the bars winning the breaking ball. This is where the purple patch is telling for the bars. Here's Owen Finn going through the heart of the fence. Brilliant what tackle. a tackle Brilliant by Brian tackle. Hurley. Super tackle there by Brian Hurley. Could have been a certain score for the Bears. This phase of play has been ongoing for the last three or four minutes as we've stacked injury time all of a sudden. Yeah, and uh, if that had gone over for the Bears, they could have been out of sight a little bit. Uh, in fairness to Brian Hurley, super tackle. And here he now gets the chance to... Four to minutes of injury end. time has been awarded by a McCroom official. Brian Hurley sends the ball over towards that far side. It's a leveling score in the game, it is! 
Now, to be fair, to be fair, if you want to see what something means to somebody, Brian Hurley playing. He was actually he's after being stationed inside with Castlehaven the last three or four minutes. Sprinted all the way back the field. Owen Finn was going in. Near hand tackle got the ball back off him. Got back up on his feet and was the guy who gave the ball to Mark Collins for the hand pass score. Brilliant play. We'd have to admire it. Well, it has been a long, long day on the Irish Examiner's streaming service. We started at 20 past 12 this afternoon showing you the Co-op Superstore Scenery Hurling Championship final between Fodd O'Neill's and Charleville. What, a little over, eight, nearly eight hours later, we're still on. And a chance of possible extra time to come. Maguire, who scored that last point, winning the ball defensively. And there's a chance now for the Haven as the Bears now look yeah, a bit exposed Bears defensively. Yeah, the Bears enough back here. Yeah, I think the Castle Haven could punish this. But that's super brilliant tackle tackling by Owen Murphy. Brilliant. What brilliant progress. Tackle. Yeah, it's super. Their tackling is ferocious, actually. And they've been doing it now consistently for this whole second half. I tell you, for a low-scoring game, this is one of the most entertaining games of football we've seen in a while. Here's Owen Murphy in possession. Sending it inside. It was 50-50 for Brian Hayes. But Hayes was taken out of it. I think this might be a bit too far out for Stephen. He's, he's definitely tired. Uh, even if this was in the first minute of the game to be a struggle, he'll probably kick it off the ground, I would imagine, Brian. Would you think? Yeah, probably, Derek. Um, I think, you know, it is, it is quite a bit out, but I, I wouldn't be surprised at him. I've seen him do it before. Um, but you'd have to hand it to both teams here, guys. They so are actually... Look at the replay here. There wasn't much in that, really, I don't think. No. Um, you'd have to hand it to Castle and the Bars. Uh, if you want to see honesty, if you want to see honesty, honesty of effort, if you want yeah. to see absolute intensity and physicality, um, both teams just going for it. Uh, I think this is an absolute spectacle, not in terms of pure football, but in terms of desire, heart, determination. And drama. And drama, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, like this, we're 63 minutes into the game. We don't, you know, you just can't tell if this is going to be a winning score or not, obviously. But uh, I think this has given a lot, a lot of people a uh, great hour of viewing. Yeah, oh, super game. Absolutely and, brilliant. Um, looking at Stephen Sherlock here, the ball is in his hand. So I'd say he's going to try to kick this in the hand. And this is a um, tough one. It's Carl McGuire who is receiving attention over that far side of the field. He's been up and down the field in the last couple of minutes. But did get that levelling score for the Haven in the 60th minute. What time now could be added on? Well, it was four minutes was awarded. Yeah, in fact, Maguire has been brandished a yellow card for that tackle, Brian. Yeah, to be fair, Patrick, the Bears have ensured that the win didn't matter in this second half, which is a massive compliment to them. As we look at the rain yeah. just starting to team down, it's just swirling in the wind. It's not going straight. This is a difficult effort for Stephen Sherlock. 35 yards out. It's been caught by the wind up, and it's yeah, gone left and wide. Off the ground. Yeah. Like, we were questioning whether he could take it off the ground. I think if he took it on the ground, he'd had a lot better chance of scoring that. Yeah. That was a very difficult kick to take out of your hand. Too much wind there to yeah. affect that, yeah. So, a chance now for the Haven. We'll be going deep into the 65th minute now because of that stoppage. Damien Cahalan offloading the ball. They're going, up towards they're going to get a chance to win it here, Patrick. I think you know, the ref seems yeah. to be let, letting it go, so they're going to get a chance to win it. Walking the ball in towards the half hour line. There's a long shot being taken inside here by the Haven. Wide. It goes right and wide. I thought for a second it was going to travel in. I'm hoping that this goes extra time because I'd love another <laughs> 20 minutes of watching this. It's absolutely enthralling. I stuff. tell you, Brian Cuppert, I hope you've the kettle ready. <laughs> Patrick O'Neill lands that shot. As I say, we're going to hit the fifth minute to add on. Jamie Burns now in possession. And to be fair, no team lose, deserves to lose this as that ball goes out over the end line. No team deserves to lose this in the 60 minutes. No, I think, I think the whistle is going to I have a feeling the whistle is going to come here. Bad, bad uh, slip there from the bar to let that one go. But here we go. It's ticking on again. And uh, Castlehaven might get one more chance to nick it. Conor Cajalano in possession. Are the Haven happy enough just to play out for extra time? Or do they want to go along as John Ryan has the whistle in his mouth? And under pressure there was Rory Maguire, but did well to get it away. Now towards Ronan Walsh. Oh, oh my God, this is tetchy times indeed. Ball's knocked out, Jack Cahillan. And it's a Bears ball, or a Haven ball, says our silent official, I think is David Moran. It's a chance now for the cock minor, Jack Cahillan. How much more is John Ryan going to add? Edge of the seat stuff as the Bears again have knocked it out. 
Now this is a possible opportunity from a score from the sideline. Yeah, Brian and Brian Hurley might... could score this if he goes for it. He's not looking yet. He's not looking yet, but he might. He's he might. He thinks about. He's thinking he about going for it. Brian Hurley from the outside That's of the boot over. in the 66th minute. That's actually gone over. Brian oh, Hurley. my God! Unbelievable! He unbelievable! What a player! What a player! What a kick! They talk about Marvel Sturd. I know he had a win with him there, but he judged that to perfection. If that wins the game, we'd have to hand it to him. Fair play. What a kick. Play continues on, and the Bears need a score quickly. But Mark Collins has won the breaking ball. Collins under pressure. Looking to try and offload that ball inside. Here come the Haven once again. Walking the ball inside towards Michael Hurley. Hurley just needs to put the ball over the Bears to try and see in the game, but he hasn't. He's fumbled outside, and the Bears are applying pressure. We're deep, six and a half minutes gone in injury time. Snapper on the body from Brian Hurley. This is carrying right and wide. I'd How say much more time is he'll blow it, Patrick. He'll, he'll probably blow it, I'd say. He's looking at his watch now. And something's happened off the ball down there. Yeah, the goalie put the ball down, and I, I think Michael came in, just kicked it away. And so again, just the spot fires are not needed. We're at the end. Or close to the end of this game. Slow down the game but again. But I think it's quite easy that Michael Hurley picks up a yellow card here. Looks quite simple. But come back to that free from that sideline. Oh. What a <laughs> sideline. And, and lads, it's not easy for our viewers to see at home. But the rain is literally coming across the face of the goal. Yeah, I was saying it like at half time, interestingly enough, I said it might suit Brian Hurley outside of the right type kicks in this type of weather. And uh, he saved it at the end. Unbelievable point. Uh, Michael, I, I just feel sorry for the Bears here. I think it's a bit bad messing. I don't like that in the game, the way um, they took the goalkeeper out of it and it's just burning up time. I hope the Bears get another opportunity to score because that's just bad sportsmanship in my book. Seven and a half minutes gone. And the Bears need a score fairly quickly. There was a free and there's something else happening off the ball here. So we need another free back in the 45 metre line. Michael yeah, Hurley got I, brandished the yellow card I, for that foul inside. But there's another speaking to here. And it's the Haven sent the forward point Hurley. Castlehaven are doing everything they can right now just to slow the game down. Yeah, it'll be a minor miracle if Bars manage to get enough space and time to actually get a score. Not to mention if they do get the ball up and pass the 45. A yellow card for Brian Hurley. That free quickly taken. The Bars need to score quickly off this phase of play to go to extra time. Sam Ryan popping the ball inside in towards Ola Murphy. Got to find the right man here now. Back outside towards Got to find Sam a Stephen Ryan. Sherlock. Outside looking for oh. Sherlock. Looking to go and through the channels. Is there an opportunity to score? The Bears need a score. Here's That's a free. That's a free. Oh, they got That's it. They got it. Oh, they got it. Whoa. It was a terrible free to give away because so many said, bodies ago, there, there was so many bodies there. Yeah. Yeah. All they had to do was keep their hands down. He wanted the free. He didn't even have enough time uh, to, to uh, get the ball into one hand to take that shot. He didn't have enough time and uh, he wanted the free. It was an arm over the shoulder as we look at the replay. And now it's a, in in. a straight in free. I might get my wish here yet, Patrick. It's a good he thought of a chance for a goal. Sure, lucky put us all on the edge of our seats, but no, <sighs> with nearly, what, yeah. 69 minutes gone uh, in this Premier Senior Football Championship final. This surely goes over from Sherlock. It does. Yeah. And I that can't wait for the 20 minutes here. Yeah, time. we put on that kettle now. I think, yeah, it's definitely going to extra time now. And he is going to blow it up, John Ryan. He's surely not playing on, is he? What is that? Oh my god. 70 minutes of enthralling oh. football in Park Irene, and we are out of breath. Unbelievable. Yeah. Extraordinary I, stuff. I think that was absolutely superb. You'd have to hats off and hands off to our hats off to both teams. There was brilliant endeavour there. Uh, and that score from Brian Hurley, you'd you'd pay anything to see something like that. We'll get, um, we'll get a glimpse of that in yeah. a second. But, but like, to, be, to be fair, I thought time was up. Um, Castlehaven did everything they could to make sure that the ball couldn't come down the field. And as we said, it was a bit of a silly foul at the end just to give a, a yeah. guilt-edged chance in front of the goal. And I was, I was glad Barris got that chance because 
it was the game has been played in such a good spirit. I just didn't like that. I think it was um, Michael Hurley. I just don't like that with the, that play acting and taking a guy out. It's just very cynical. I'm glad Barr's got the chance. I'm glad they put it over the bar. And the key thing, the game deserved it. The key thing now is that both teams revert back to 15. Yeah. So um, back full on, full, full on 15, 15 again. Yeah. I, one of the things I would have known with Castlehaven is that. Uh, it's that they have an awful lot of work done um, and I said they have an awful lot of physical work done I saw a lot of them uh, during the lockdown out around UCC they're training in pods working really really hard um, I'm not quite sure maybe the bars have worked as hard there was nothing between their fitness there in that 60 minutes and that 70 minutes but I do think Castlehaven have a lot of legs yet uh, I think like likes of Michael Hurley could come onto his own here in, the, in, the, in this extra time period um, the bars to actually win the game in that in normal time had to go to war yeah. and sometimes when you go to war and you don't get out the other side yeah. it's very hard to gather around here again and say alright lads we have to go to war again so it's going to be difficult let's yeah. have a look at that Brian Hurley uh, sideline extraordinary stuff inside the 45 meter line he thought about it didn't think about it and thought about it again like something like what Luke Connolly done across the park last week find the out well we've seen like I mean, if you know, if it reminds me of the Mars Fitz kick Stadium years ago, and we've seen that played for years and years and years. That is just as good, if not more difficult, given the weather conditions. Do you know we we watch? You know, you could watch Sky Sports and all these things when you see professional athletes kicking pressure scores from, you know, uh, dead balls. Um, you know, and everybody marvelling at it. Here we have an amateur athlete. Uh, after playing for seventy minutes, he's on the sideline. His team need him to score. It's a miracle if it goes over, and he kicks it in full confidence that he's done this before. Mm. So I could, I could see him down in Union Hall, because he's a, he's a man who just will kick ball all day long, trying that since he's been about 13 or 14. And to do it when it matters most, says you huge amounts about him, I thought that was a superb score. Um, but I, I, I was, like Derek, I was hugely impressed with Castlehaven when Colin Lyons was off in that period, where the, way, the, way, the way they played. They got away from that because they couldn't get their hands on the ball. In the second half, uh, I was usually impressed with the way the Bars battled and fought. Um, we'd have and seen it's amazing you actually say that because the Haven were playing against the wind the first half and yeah. the Bars were playing against the wind the second half and they threw the kitchen sink at us. It, the wind didn't really matter to them in the second half and the way the Bars play anyway, I don't think it really matters that they have a wind or they don't have a wind. They, all they want to do is punch holes at you, get runners inside you and then pop the ball to the likes of Sherlock and Myers Murray. Um, whereas Castlehaven have a bit more uh, variety to their play. But uh, you'd have to say now it is going to be difficult for the Bars, I think. Um, you know, all, uh, all our lives playing against them, when there is war, when there is a battle, when there is fight in terms of, and I'm not talking about physical fight, I'm talking about those ping pong balls you're talking about, Derek, mm -hmm. the ricochets. Yeah. They came ping out. Ball machine goal, yeah. they could have scored down yeah. below. They, come, they came out with the majority of those balls in the second half. To go back and do it again is going to be difficult. So I, I'm very, very. I'm keenly interested to see can they raise it again here for this yeah, the start. Uh, just remember that we've got two periods of 10 minutes of extra time in the hurling final the Glen lost the toss and the Rockies played with the wind in the opening half scoring 2-4 to a point how crucial now in a game of football is playing with the wind or against the wind in the opening 10 <laughs> do you want anymore. to be chasing or do you want to be defending it I'd say nearly both teams it suits them playing against the wind the, the way they're both playing so mm. I think though given the night it is it's as you say, in an extra time, the way it goes, whoever seems to get the first two or three points yeah. tend to see it out. Yeah. So I would definitely play with the wind. 100% yeah. Yeah. I would do that yeah. and try to get those two or three scores because you've the likes of Stephen Sherlock. He just looks tired to me. Yeah. He's done so much work. You've the likes of Michael Shields, who was one of the Bears' best players. He's gone off tired. Ian McGuire seemed to be loving the physical exchanges there, but he's tired as well. Let's so Side, side just for a second because Mark Collins has lost the toss there and Ian McGuire has elected to play against the wind oh, even though at the start of the game I said that we'd, I'd play against the wind I would in, in normal time yeah. but like Derek in extra time I always think if you look if, if yeah. somebody did some research on it they'd see yeah. the team that gets ahead it's very hard to chase that down Definitely. Um, bodies are tired you, you could defend a lead much more easy than chase an extra time I think that's a bit of a mistake I'd yeah. go after try I to think, get ahead yeah, I said they're going to, they want the battle in the second half and the Bears got it but I think they, they might like pain a little bit too much for my liking here because I think they're giving themselves a, a huge mountain to climb playing against that wind one word of peace call it <laughs> I'd have a feeling I'd have a feeling that Michael and Brian Hurley could do something here in this 
in this uh, period of extra time yeah, that the I'd, bars might be able to respond I'd to. I'd go with the Haven too. I just think they're a little bit more economical with these tired legs. I think that will count. This is a commentator looking around, scanning around the fields just to see who else is in or out. Is we'll keep an eye on it. Is Owen McGreevy there? I don't see Owen McGreevy. No. Stephen well, Sherlock corner forward there, right? I think yeah. Owen McGreevy's gone. Owen McGreevy's on the oh. suspension anyway, so... Ooh. This, oh, game, yeah. this extra yeah, time gone, yeah. period gets under the way. And it's the Haven who do get the opening spell. Remember the Bears, the Castle Haven lost the toss there. And the Bears elected, Ian McGuire electing to go against the wind in this opening half. Let's see if that's going to pay off. Own Keane now in possession, back out towards Ola Murphy, who made that surging run for the leveling score in that late in the second half. Adam Lyne in towards Ola Murphy now once again. Looking to try and switch the play. Of course, now you have to start thinking about the panel. Do you start bringing back in players, the likes of Michael Shields for the Bears? Here's another man, Glenn O'Connor, plays wing back for the Hurlers, sister of Jim O'Connor, the Cockamogie star. Owen Keane. Back outside towards Owen Finn, walking in towards the corner. Towards Keelan Myers Murray, got a boot to it, beaten for pace there by the Haven man. And it's quickly taken, sent up in towards the centre of the park and here now where the Haven are dangerous, Connor Cahillan walking back inside, Cahillan going for a big punt of a score but this ball goes right and wide of course we must also remember all cards are now wiped, red, yellow and black cards are all wiped from normal times so we're back yeah, now I to a new, new game without the two yeah, I think that There's was a bit ambitious that. there. I think Damien was coming through. They could have held on to that a bit, a bit more. I think a little bit ambitious there from Connor. Jamie Burns now played just inside the 65, walking to Owen Finn. First score now here is going to be crucial. Brian Hayes looking to try and make an effect on that. Reverts back out towards Owen Keane. Back inside towards Owen Murphy. Here comes Ethan Toomey. Always a danger, was a superstar for the Bears minor hurling team when we win the Premier 1 minor championship a couple of weeks ago. But it was Adam Lyon who conceded that free in the Haven over another opportunity. This has been end to end off, the second opportunity of the Haven on the attack. And here's Jack Cahillan walking his way in towards the 45 metre line. Cahillan looking for options and just panicked at the crucial moment. And now they hit, now the Bears. Yeah, I this think Connor is, um, and a he's a live wire, he's a great footballer from what I've seen tonight, but I just, in the crucial end, this, the heat of this game, he's just making a few bad decisions at the wrong time. The Bears now looking to try and get back out again. Sam Ryan, out towards Olin Murphy, in fact it was Ethan Toomey in the middle of the field. Ian Maguire, out towards Owen Keane and Maguire, the talisman. Everything revolves around the Bears captain. Owen Keane walking it inside in towards Jamie Burns. Pop towards Ethan Toomey. But again, it's going to keep in. It actually doesn't go out because the wind stops it from going out of play. But doing very well over there was the Haven defender. And there was a, a punch thrown inside there, I'm afraid. It was seen off the ball. I did see it actually happening. And that was Owen Murphy. I believe did throw a punch. No, it was at a distance, but there was a hand thrown to the face of the Bears defender. And this could be a costly error. All cards wiped. Am I right in saying that? Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's a new game. So it's a question of whether, and in fact, both players are now being spoken to, both Cahill Maguire and Olin Murphy. And the question now is, what colours or colour is the card? Two yellow cards. So, Cotton Maguire and Owen Murphy getting two yellow cards. We just might catch this off the side. Maguire just ending up the floor. And there was a hand thrown there by Murphy twice. As we've seen in the replay. Yeah, but and, as you come back to live pictures, this ball is going to be hopped in. And... Connor Cahillan, or Damien Cahillan it is, 
winning that hot ball. Ball's worked up towards Cahill Maguire. Inside towards Rory Maguire. Halfway over that far side of the field. Maguire under pressure, being held there by Stephen Sherlock. It's a free in for the Haven, but he elects to go backwards with that one. Time now is of the essence. We're already five minutes gone in the opening 10 minute period of extra time. Here's Mark Collins working inside towards David Welton. Welton working up through the channels. Damien Cahillan with a long hand pass ball in towards Brian Hurley off the left peg. Hurley looking for the opening score, but again, the wind just carries it right away. Yeah, wide. there's been chances now for both sides. Um, I think Ethan Toomey, who's coming for the bars, had to, has had two chances. He looks a bit, he's struggling to get to the pace of it. Um, surprised there where Brian thought he would have scored it. He had time. Um, I don't know what's going to happen here, to be honest. What is the substitution? Is the substitution of Shane Nolan coming in for Michael Hurley. So, so Michael's carrying a leg there, but it looks like things going off, Patrick. But uh, Shane Nolan's a very good substitute to bring on. Kick up Mark Fame, then there by Jamie Walsh. Man under pressure inside. Silent official says no. Didn't go out of play. Jamie Walsh under pressure. Balls between the legs. No, it's a free, in fact, that John Ryan is awarding right in front of us. Ian Maguire, too, looks to be carrying a bit of a dead leg. He didn't want to know about that kick out there, which I thought was a bit surprising. And uh, he seems to be labouring getting back. So I think Bars will be in big trouble if, uh, if he's not at full. And you can see he's, he's definitely pulling a leg there. Well, this is what really the Bars didn't really want to be going to extra time after that game on Wednesday night. As Brian Hurley puts on those afterburners once again. Pops the ball inside. It's recycled outside by Jack Cahillan. Outside to Shane Nolan. But Nolan's shot was just scuffled to the left-hand side and wide. Both teams look very, very tired and laboured at the moment. I think key players have probably gave so much in the first 70 minutes that they've gone quiet for a while. I expect that they might do something yet, though, uh, being the characters that they are. But the game is certainly different, very much different than what we finished in the, in the second uh, a period yeah, of the second half. No Ian is definitely struggling there, and he's, he, he does not want to be contesting a kick-out. There was no raucous atmosphere to that kick-out, but that kick-out won by Jamie Walsh. Played inside there by Dara Cahillan, inside to Jack Cahillan, and the youngest of the Cahillan triplet brothers has won a free, and this could be the opening score of this extra time period. Yeah, cheap enough from Conor Dennehy, I think, was gave away that free uh, at this point in the game. That's what a team wants, is a free, because... Um, so tight uh, at the moment like there's no one guaranteed to knock a ball over the bar and it's just a cheap free I think let's see it here now yeah, yeah he Callahan was going nowhere he was going to run into a yellow wall there uh, silly free fouled by Conor Dennehy and it's a chance now for Brian Hurley to get the opening score after nearly eight minutes in this first period of extra time and Brian Hurley converts that free in the 78th minute We've waited for the opening score of extra time, Brian. Yeah, again, primary possession. I know I harp on about it, but the Bars have been very good tonight on the kick-out. But on that, that kick-out there that came out, Castlehaven won it uncontested. Two passes and, and Jack Allen gets fouled. That's how simple the game is. You have to win primary possession. You can only play off that. This ball is hanging really badly from a Bars point of view because they haven't have won it. It's popped out, but Ian McGuire has won that. Looking back in towards the centre pack, towards Owen Keane, there was a man taken out off the ball. Or, sorry, on the tackle, I should say. That is Dara Cahillan. It's the man who's going to be spoken to. Probably a late tackle and a, a yellow card to go with it. John Ryan has to do the notings in the book. And Dara Cahillan has been told to await while he's been given the instruction. But it's a free out for the bars one way or the other. Nearly nine minutes gone and only one point. In fact, there's a black card! Jesus. Wow! That gives the Bars a huge opportunity. They've only conceded a point playing against the Gale. Now they have an extra man for basically the rest of the game. Yeah. But maybe we might be able to get that at half time if we can. Sam Ryan. The Haven though going to be playing possibly the rest of this extra time with 14 men. And a free there for Sam Ryan from the 45 metre line. Well, that is a big, big decision. And to be honest with you, lads, I didn't see it coming. 
I actually yeah. couldn't see it. There's a pole in my way here. Yeah. I couldn't see exactly <laughs> what happened. Yeah, I think he jumped into it. And I, I, I don't know. I think the referee fell for it, to be honest. I would like to see it again. but Shawrock um, fell to the floor there. Brian Hurley down there defensively, giving his defence a helping hand. And Mark Collins got a boot to us. As the Haven now looking to try and work it out through David Welton. Or through, in fact, Colin Maguire. As one minute has been awarded by our official Jack Cahalano in possession. Looking to try and get a second score. Remember, the Haven down to 14 men. Remember, just moments ago, Dara Cahalan sent to the bin and just overcooked that ball. It's a chance now for the Bars to break out of the fence again. Owen Finn is getting on a lot of possession in this extra time. Ian Maguire doesn't look a bit laboured indeed, but that's the intensity these players, the Bars players, have been playing this week. That mark not taken over there by Ethan Toomey. Done well though to regather composure and the bars just slow things back down again. They know they have another seven or eight minutes to play against 14 men. Olin Murphy now sending it over towards that far right wing. The advance mark wasn't given by our official but play continues on. Sent into the corner over there by Alan O'Connor. Recycles the ball outside to Brian Hayes. Hayes walking along the 13 metre line. Under pressure, Hayes with a snapshot around the body, but going across the face of goal. Yeah, I, I have to say, I've been very impressed with Brian Hayes all night. Yeah. I think he's been extremely honest in his play, he's very direct. I think he's caused Castlehaven problems, and I'm not quite sure what's going here. But I, I Something think. Something has happened, uh, there's a blood substitution blood here, Brian, I think, because <laughs> the player was running away, Rowan Walsh, I think he knew he had to, to head off, and the blood sub is going to be. I was even going to suggest there, Brian, that I would even put uh, Brian yeah. back midfield because with yeah. um, with Ian struggling there, he's definitely struggling with a knock. I think the yeah. bar's primary possession. He's a big young fella. Absolutely. Uh, I, w I would put him back midfield. Absolutely. I think he's been in the game consistently from the very yeah. start. And I think he, he, he seems to have plenty of pep about him. And I'd say he'd make a big difference to the bars. I think it'd be a very good move. Yeah. I think the bars would be... Knowing them, they'd be very slow to take Ian Maguire off. Maybe not take him off, yeah. but uh, he's certainly he. I, I, I just I don't know how effective he can be now. He's he's got a dead leg or a bad cramp or something. Yeah, I totally agree with you in, in terms of if if he was somebody else and was immobile as he seems to be there. Yeah, I think he'd probably be coming off, but I think he's he's their go-to guy. He's their leader. Yeah. I don't see them. I'd nearly say he'd nearly refuse to come off the field. He's that type of guy. Just that uh, blood substitution for the record was Tomas O'Leary coming on instead of Rowan Walsh, whether he'll stay on now because of the, the half time. But the Bars with that point lead. No. Oh, sorry, the Haven with the Haven. point lead, sorry. They now need to try and defend this against the wind and down to 14 men for the next kind of first seven minutes of the half. Yeah, I think Bars, to be fair, they, I don't think they look like scoring there. Brian Hayes there, I think uh, Eaton Toomey had a few shots, but there were pop shots. Um, Sherlock has Sherlock, been bottled up. He's he? been bottled up. I think he's exhausted. They don't look like they're going to score. Uh, definitely not there. Now, maybe with the wind, they're going to try something different. They didn't seem to play with the wind or play well with the wind when they had it. Um, so, again, I would say a very, very slight advantage to Castlehaven. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I, I think the bars are going to rely on. Uh, punching holes again and getting fouls. That's the only way I can see them scoring. Um, I don't see them opening up to Castlehaven defence, even though that they have man extra. Uh, I think the Bars will actually sit their extra man back, which I, I possibly would, wouldn't do myself. Um, I'd, I'd go after this game and I'd push this extra man maybe into the middle third here, where you'd actually have overload and the Bars could play their game from there. Um, I still think that Castlehaven have Kraft and Brian. Mark Collins has been quiet. And the last 15-20 minutes, I think you'll see something from him yet. And if Castlehaven can repeat anything like they did for that 12-minute yeah. period where they got the six points in a row, um, you know, two points here, two points of a lead here is a massive lead in 10 minutes. So at the moment, Castlehaven in the lead. The Bars have scored two points to get ahead. Um, and I know the Gale is, is very, very strong. But, uh, you know, they didn't look like scoring, as Derek said. They didn't look like scoring anything in that first period of extra time. And so I think they only need, Castlehaven only need one or two frees here. Yeah. And, you know, Mark Collins won't miss. Brian Hurley won't miss. Yeah. Stephen Sherlock is, is kind of uh, JD. So I'd have my question whether he's going to be as, as dependable as those two on the other side. Yeah. It's been an extraordinary afternoon of Gaelic games. I'm just wondering because out in the field, while 
the camera was switched in here. John Ryan was spoken to by our umpire and our two sideline officials. And I'm just wondering what is happening here. Something happened off the ball. Um, and John yeah. Ryan is looking for someone over there to speak to. I don't see Brian Hurley coming back in here. I think the referee is speaking to Brian Hurley. I can see by the green boots. It is Brian Hurley. Yeah. I think he could He's be in a back. spot of batter here. Brian Hurley is not coming on. Brian Hurley is, looks to be... Could be carrying a knock by the looks of it. Brian Hurley will not be returning for this second period of extra time by the looks of it, lads. Yeah, but they still have 14 men. 22. Kevin O'Donovan is coming in. That's the a big, big loss. The only the thing I can think of, Patrick, is, is somebody has... The referee has says that he has a concussion of some sort, but that's not the referee's no, call. No. Uh, I'm not sure what that's about. He looks fine and fit there over that far side. Obviously, there is an issue. In fact, there is some strapping over there, in fact, and they're going to look at the try and get some physios. This ball is thrown in. We're just keeping a half an eye on Brian Hurley, who is going to be receiving some physio over that far side. All the while, though, the bar is now in possession. Glenn O'Connor passing it into Ethan Toomey. The bar's with the wind in this second half, and as the rain, rain starts to sheet down here in Parker Inn under the floodlights on Sunday night football, Adam Lyne with a Hail Mary of a shot going to the left and wide. Brian Hurley is getting some attention off the field over. Yeah, it's very difficult to understand how the referee actually... They still have 14 as far as I can see. Well, the nominated free player is Ola Murphy's at the moment in the centre of the park. Is this kick out from Seymour under the pressure of whistles and pressure of the Bears fans? That kick out mark claimed inside there by Ian McGuire. He's won an advantage as well, but play continues on. Played inside towards Owen, Mur Owen Finn, by, by the way. Keenan Myers Murray off the left peg. No, it's dropping. Landing short, left, right, and wide. They've had about five chances now. I say Ethan Toomey had has two. Uh, Adam Lynn had one. Uh, Killian Myers Murray there. So they're they're not taking them. I'm not sure how many more chances they'll get. I tell you, the temperature is quite cold, but the heat on the pitch is fairly fever pitch. Is this? Kick out being taken by Seymour over towards the centre of the park. And again, McGuire nearly got in there, but he was fouled in the process of doing so. Might have picked up an injury of cramp in the process. Stephen Sherlock might score this one. He's yeah, outside the right again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I must say I'm very impressed with uh, Ian McGuire's work ethic there. In fairness, since the second half started in normal time, he's been immense. He seems to just relish the the tight battle of it and yeah. uh, he seems to be carrying you can see now he's after cramping up so I think that's what, what's been around him all along but he's giving it us all there and he's uh, you can tell he's the heartbeat of the Bears team Lyon giving Adam Lyon that is giving Maguire a helping hand as Maguire limps away from the scene of the crime chance for Sherlock to level up this game straight straight over. Straight what over. a score from Steven Sherlock you call it Derek outside of the, the right it's the only way to kick those ones <laughs> use the wind uh, absolutely agree with you regarding Ian Maguire He's, he actually is not more, he's even more than the heartbeat of this team. Yeah. He's the heartbeat of football in the bars. Uh, yeah. And he is their absolute, absolute leader. And he's showing it here now in the last five minutes. There's that kick out from Seymour. And that is just going to be kept in from going out of play over there. With Johnny Regan. Advantage going to the haven. As we are level once again. And it's for the first time in this extra time. But the ball's been turned over. And Ethan Toomey sends that ball into the corner. Is there a chance for a leading bar score? Stephen Sherlock, snapper on the body off the left peg. But this trails left and wide. That shot was never on really. Like He should have just held possession. Uh, and worked the ball back in towards the centre of the field. Um, the bars are, are again in ascendancy. It comes down to the kick out again. I still don't understand why the bars are actually yeah. up, up, operating as own. Uh, press on this they should be pushing right up into Castlehaven and making anti Seymour even under more pressure than what he is right now Brian Hurley is warming up once again over on that far side of the field as the rain as you could see now on their picture screen is really sheeting down here and Park you're in a lucky lucky mark to Conor Cahalan just fell into his chest after the gale of wind just held up the ball and can the Haven now try and get a score here's the Haven minor Jack Cahalan 
as Conor now is limping over on that far side of the field. Jack Cahillan under pressure. In the haven, regaining composure through Jamie Walsh. Balls worked inside. Crossed the face of the 45 meter line. He's our chance of a score here. It looks like James Davis is on the field. But the ball's been turned over. And again now the bar is looking to try and work their way out. As bodies now are starting to fatigue quite immensely. Epic drama once again here on the live Irish Examiner live stream as that ball is sent in by Ethan Toomey. Or sorry, in fact, it was uh, Owen Finn. It was turned over. And a chance now for Kevin O'Donovan to work out. Damien Cahillan receiving a heavy shoulder. Played inside to Kevin O'Donovan. At this stage now, I, I think it's more Castle Evan just don't look like they're going to score because like no. they're just looking to pass. There just doesn't seem to be someone taking it and, and going for it themselves. And too many passes here is playing into the Bears' hands. Bears look completely in control. They're playing with confidence. And um, I think they might get a point there themselves. I think one of the issues also maybe as the game has gone on, Castle Evan have had to use their bench more and more. And I think they probably have younger players yeah. than what the Bears have. And the, those lads are finding it a small bit difficult. Oh, the free. And the free, free award is the free. Um, the, the Castle Avon have to use, as I say, they were using, her, obviously, use their bench. And coming in as a 17 or an 18 or a 19 yeah. year old into this yeah. is ferocious. Um, so I, I think there's a couple of mistakes that have been copped up. I just up. wanted to show you this replay, lads, because I think actually the Barsman, or the Barsman blindsided John Ryan as the ball came across. And in fact, the Haven defender was leaning across, so. Yeah. It is a free, and it's appointed on the D exclusion, just outside the D exclusion zone. Damien Cahillan walking outside Stephen Sherlock. It's a chance now Didn't. for the Bars to take the lead and take a stack the defence if this is converted. But by all means, folks, this is no easy free. No, the wind is going to catch this now because he's kicking it right across the wrong way, but I'm sure he's backing himself. But, he needs uh, to the aim for the left it. hand up right here. Sherlock. 35 yards out, does aim for it, and does convert. Yeah, um, in the first round game against Ballon Colleg, Ola Murphy was taken off after about 38, 39 minutes. He's actually had a very, very good game tonight from centre back with the bars as well. He was the guy who was fouled there, I, I think. He was, yeah, that. he was. He just seems to be a kind of perpetual motion, driving forward at the opportune times, and crucial ta tackles at the same time. Seymour with the kick out. And again, it's the Bars have won the breaking ball. They lead by, the, by a point, and they're in the ascendancy. Adam Lyon in possession, walking over towards that far side of the field. Lyon just boiling his time, looking for Stephen Sherlock, playing it into the corner, but they haven't have turned it over. This black card period is nearly up as they win a free in the right corner back position. They're trying to work it out. Tomas O'Leary. Still in play. Working it out towards. The Haven tried to walk it out, but they've turned it over. And the Bears have another again. chance. Or Brian, sorry. Brian Hayes again, yeah. Brian Hayes again. Brian Hayes walking inside towards Cullum Keane. Offloads out towards Keenan Myers Murray. Is that turning in enough? No, is the answer. As we look over towards that far sideline, Brian Hurley's top is back on again. He's not coming back in. How much more in that sin bin period? Are, are we back 15 and 15, I wonder? I just can't see Castle Avon getting a point. I just think the Bears just look so comfortable when Castle Avon have the ball. They're getting back. Ola Murphy's back now. Uh, they just seem to be extremely comfortable defending Castle Avon here. We are back on 15 and 15 by the looks of it. Not for and long, I'd say. Here comes another black card. For you, Maguire. Maguire is tired and jaded. He's put it all out in the pitch. Again, pleading his case with the judge. Maguire looks shocked and astonished. It's a black card for Maguire. And he now is in the up off the field. And he can't walk off the field, so he has to go to the bar sideline. He couldn't help but give a black card there. There was no question whatsoever. Matt Collins was the man foul on that occasion. Maguire just can barely walk off the field. But again, just to remind you, the Haven haven't played a game in four weeks. The Bears only had a game four days ago against Newstone, their quarter final. But it is the Haven who are down to one point. But the Bears 
are at a man deficit. David Welton in possession now. Out towards Rory Maguire. As the Haven now seek a levelling score as we enter the final minute of normal time of the regulation 10. That ball's walked over towards the corner. Yeah, Looks like Jack Cahillan. He He's got an advantage, he Cahillan. Not a crude, and it's a chance for the Haven to level this game and what has been an epic game here so far. Will we see freeze, let's Yeah, I think it's going to be... Is there another extra time after this? Is there five minutes? I'm is not sure. Is there a freeze? It's, I think it's... I think... The, um, I'm sure Mark Collins will knock this over, you know? Um, I'm sure we're going to find out any yeah, moment. I think five minutes... But he, look, before all that, before we even think that far, Mark Collins with a chance to level up as we close out the 10th minute of the second period of extra time and Collins converts the score! You'd have to hand it to Castlehaven as well lads. They, they really haven't had a shot in, no. in anger in the second half or in the first half of it really. Um, and they did very well to orchestrate that one. I didn't catch what the injury time was but there is some period of it. Who is going to win possession here? And it's a free against the bars, Ethan Toomey for overcarrying the ball. Quickly taken by the Haven. Remember the Haven have that man advantage. Jack Cahillan under pressure inside there. There was a heavy hit on the bars man, but the bars have got possession crucially. That was a huge Alan tackle there from Sam Ryan. Huge one because the Castle Haven were in and they were true. Uh, big tackle. And if this ends in the draw, we go to penalties. So it's all to play for. Brian Hayes in possession. We have at least one minute. We possibly have two of extra of injury time of extra time. That Burko boiler is on the overboil now. Ethan Toomey over in front of the Castlehaven dugouts. Can they try and work the score? The Bears playing with 14 men after their captain was sent to the bin. Where are the bars going? Sam Ryan looking to try and take on a tackle. Does so. Here goes as that Brian ball's walked into outside. the corner. It's one inside. He just kept it off the ground is, a, is the adjudication. Played it outside, out towards He's the to blow it. He's gonna blow He's it. Gonna blow They're it. looking for the score. Ethan Toomey looking to try and take a shot. Owen Finn. They might as well have a pop shot at this One stage. minute 45 gone on the clock. A chance here for a chance of a oh. score. But Brian Hayes sends it right and wide. Players, official management, supporters, commentators, media all out on their feet. This has been on the edge stuff for what nearly 97, 98 minutes of epic football. This has just been brilliant, Patrick. It is absolutely enthralling. Uh, hearts in your mouth kind of stuff. Both teams giving it all they have. Absolutely everything. Um, you know, that was a very difficult chance for Brian Hayes to convert. And that is where this ends and we go to penalties. Whoa. The first ever adults competition in football in Cork going to penalties. I'd say the Bears will be a bit disappointed there over the course of that extra time. Uh, I don't have a count, but certainly I'm going to guess say they had about seven or eight chances to Castle Haven's one or two. Yeah, I think, I think again, you go back to being extremely economical. Yeah. Uh, Castle Haven yeah. get down the field three or four times. Yeah. At the very least, they, they, get, they get shots in those yeah. three or four times. They don't waste the ball. The Bears had all the possession there again. Uh, you couldn't question their effort or attitude or fortitude or mental strength. Uh, it was just taking the right option at the r at the right time. Um, I think you know Adam Lyon had a chance there. Remember he kicked a, a wild shot. Uh, Stephen yeah. Sherlock had a chance. He took another Left wild leg. shot. Yeah. It's moving the ball into the scoring zone and just having that composure. That's what the bars needed. But look, we just have a look at the two crucial scores in the final moments of this game. This was the score from Stephen Sherlock in the 77th minute, which put the bars in the lead. 113 to 112. And then only moments later, then Mark Collins getting a free down inside the 21 meter line. Here it is. And in fact, it's not this one, it's uh, one that's uh, late, it was later in the half, in around the 78th or 79th minute. We'll gather that in a second. But unbelievable stuff. Only last weekend, Aero were defeated by Sars, or he defeated Sars on, in hurling on penalties. 
the Bear Junior Bear Junior B semi final football semi final went to penalties, but this is the first competition under the auspices of the Cork County Board going to penalties. There's a lot of things now as John Ryan is discussing out in the middle of the field with David Mornan, his fellow senior football official of the things that need to go on. Obviously, he's outlining, I think what he's outlining there is that the and which has been outlined that keepers must stay on their line. There's five penalties to both sides and it can be any of one of the five players that finish that game. Okay. Um, as exciting as it is, I just I, I think it's going to be a soccer blow for, for whoever loses it because it's going to come down probably to one or two individuals and uh, it's going to be an awful um, so the question burden actually to carry is, through the winter. If I'm, I, I'm just trying to think of the rule off the top of my head, but if I'm right in saying that, Brian Hurley finished the game off the field. Right. I'm not sh just not 100% on that. But yeah, you, you can't pick somebody who, who hasn't completed the last the last board. Who has the finished game. the game. So only penalty takers allowed, as far as I'm aware, are people who finished the game. So if Brian Hurley didn't finish the game, he can't be penciled in here to take a penalty. Um, this this actually feels, feels very, very strange. Um, <laughs> you know, we're here at a, a Gaelic football match and managers down here. It's like watching something in the Champions League deciding on who the penalty takers are going to be. This is what the Champions League format was all about, wasn't it? <laughs> no, what entertainment we've had since the 25th well, of July. You'd have to say we've had massive entertainment since the 25th of July. I'm going to give you but more I entertainment because I'm going to have to get in a text in here in the English Premier League just to throw the ball in. Don't tell me Liverpool are losing. 7-2. Winning. Losing 7-2. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Level five, yeah. Down. yeah. You must nominate that. five players. So we have got that true. So we five players to be nominated from both sides is the ruling. So now, let's just watch out in the field as we turn our attentions to out on the field. John is going to explain the rules. Ian McGuire, I think, and Brian Hurley cannot take penalties because they have ended off the field. Well, Ian McGuire can't walk in here, so I doubt he could take a penalty. I, I don't and the think break, he... just breaking news as well, Neffet yeah. have recommended the whole country to move to level 5 restrictions. Yeah. That's so that's crazy. breaking news as well. They might, if, if that, if that there's occurs... There's no final, so... There's no, no county final. Tell, tell them no don't bother taking the penalties yeah. here, guys, oh because... Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's not a matter to joke about, but... Level 5 starting tomorrow. Well, I don't know. There's a letter gone to, I think, to, I'm sure yeah. Hall Martin is watching in from Dublin. To see who the Nemo Rangers will be facing next weekend. But whatever happens, let's hope there is a county final next week. Because after the drama and entertainment we've had since 6.30 this evening. As we look out to see who the five players nominated on both sides are. Well out there, I see Stephen Sherlock, Brian Hayes, Colm Keane, Killian Myers-Murray and Olin Murphy. And on the bar side, I see Jack Cahillan out there. Oh, uh, uh, Shane Nolan, that is, wearing number 20. As the toss is just about to be made by John Ryan. And this is crucial now. Ian McGuire has lost. The, no, Ian McGuire has won the toss, I think. So, no. Ian McGuire has lost the toss. And it looks like we're going to be in the Black Rock end by the looks of it. Now, my understanding of the rules is that you nominate five players, but if it goes to sudden death, any player thereafter that has taken one of the five can take one again. But this now is unprecedented times in the Cork County Board Football Championship and unprecedented times in the Irish Examiner live stream. Just not 100% now who is first to go forward. But breaking news all over the shop. Aston Villa down 7-2. Neffet recommending go to level 5. And we're in penalties in extra time. Let's That's hope the government push back that Neffet recommendation, boys. Yeah, looks like we may not get our final next week, which would be a shame. But uh, don't tell these players anything yet. Anyway. Well... I'm not even sure if the 11 yard mark is there, down there, it is. And the first man to take the penalty for the bars is Stephen Sherlock, facing Anthony Seymour. We're gonna have to open up a new page in the copy book just to take these down. 
Seymour with the first penalty for the Bears. Seymour against Sherlock, I should say, and saved! Sherlock misses, it's a super save inside there by Anthony Seymour. You'd yeah. have to say advantage Castlehaven um, and any of the soccer stuff we'd ever watch. If, if you missed your first penalty, you're obviously playing catch up. But, you know, this is a Gaelic football match. Uh, these guys have never gone through something like this before. I don't envisage that all five players are going to score their penalty. I'd be amazed if they do. If he just walked past, uh, I just noticed the size of Anthony Seymour, which is going to be a huge he's advantage. Very, very tall, yeah, yeah. He's a huge man, so yeah. I think it's going Castle to be a huge Haven, advantage. Captain Mark Collins with the first penalty for the Haven. Collins and converts it. And the Haven a one-up after round one. It's a very long walk from the halfway line up to the 11 yard line to actually take a penalty. And We've got questions yeah. in for our fans. Would the two of you either have taken a penalty in this situation? <laughs> I don't think I would have been on this long. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't have been allowed to take one, no. I would have wanted that, but at I wouldn't least, have been at allowed. At least you're honest, yeah. <laughs> What drama here on the Irish Examiner live stream. Undoubtedly, we're on overtime as well, I think. <laughs> Here's Cullum Keane for the Bears' second penalty as everybody is on their feet here in Parker Inn. Keane for the Bears, Seymour for the Haven. Where's this going? Another save for the Haven! And Seymour pulls out another super save. Anthony Seymour, to be fair, he's waiting an awful long time to be the number one goalie in Castlehaven. Uh, Paddy Hurley has kept him out of that position for about the last 10 years. But he's been superb here. Chance here for the Haven to take the lead. Oh. And the save inside there. Save from Shane Nolan by uh, Patrick O'Neill. And it's 2-1. Oh, sorry, it's 1-0 to the Haven. Again, a very good save. You'd have to, you know, he, he was gone down and his hand just flew up to, to push the ball out. Um, but it's huge pressure here, you know, these long walks up and, you know, your whole county championship final appearance, uh, depending on five guys and a goalkeeper, and a goalkeeper, obviously. It does um, seem harsh, doesn't it? It, it is very difficult. It is very difficult. But there's no, mo no doubt that the Nemo and man between <laughs> the two of us is smiling. Bars, round three in penalties. First up are the Bars. Killian Myers Murray against Seymour. Murray buries it in the bottom corner. Yeah, whatever happens in a normal game, you know, a mistake can happen in a split yeah, second. Yeah. But if you're walking up there and you're missing your penalty, it's going to be yeah, it's, uh, that'll, it, that'll stay with you for the for the yeah, winter. Yeah, like guys who are on millions of euro or millions of pounds when they miss penalties, like you know, they seem to get over quick enough. Because yeah. another million euro coming in the bank next week. This is this is your club. This is where you're from. You're carrying the weight yeah, of your club. You're your well, it's you say about the weight of your club. Here's yeah. Damien Cahillan taking a penalty, <laughs> facing the bars in a penalty <laughs> shootout in the semi-final. He'll score. Oh, down the middle. Two one to the Haven. Well, well, well. What drama, and we have. Possibly four penalties left in this shootout of the regular every five for both sides. Here's Ola Murphy, the centre back. Murphy takes a shimmy and to buries it in the Ooh. top corner. Excellent penalty. That was a beauty, to be fair. No keeper in the country. Two keepers wouldn't have saved that one. Even when Ronaldo wouldn't have done the shimmy in the bottom right corner. I knew by the wearing of the white boots as a centre back hit. There must yeah. be something about him. <laughs> Look and at this. He's played that, soccer before. I yeah, tell. that was a bullet. Wow. Fourth round of penalties for the Haven. And it's the Haven minor, Jack Cahillan, who started in that victory in the primer, primer, uh, minor semi-final replay of the week. Ooh. And it's a save. It's a save. And we're level. Going into the final round of penalties. Bars have a bit of impetus now. Brian they is. really do. Score this and like it's ultimate pressure on the final kick then. Taking this one is going to be the Bars centre forward, Brian Hayes. And this now is crucial territory. Technically, we're now technically 
in sudden death. Brian Hayes now facing Anthony Seymour. Seymour after pulling off two superb saves already. Crucial times, crucial measures. Ooh. Hayes just gets it into Ooh. the corner. Seymour Anthony had his Seymour fingers was to very that, unlucky yeah. there. He had his fingers on fair that. to him. Oh, th this is savage pressure now, to be fair. Absolute savage pressure. Who's taking this one, guys? Let's have a look at the replay first. It says Jamie Walsh. Seymour did get a hand in this. Is that Jamie Walsh? Ronan Walsh. Full back. Is no, it? it's not. It, it's Rory, Rory Maguire. Maguire, lads. Rory Maguire. So this now to take us indefinitely to an official sudden death where rules slightly change. But let's deal with this first. To stay, to stay in the competition, Maguire. Oh, oh. cooling slotted by Maguire. No, rules change. Any player of the five can now take a sudden death penalty. As David Mernan and John Ryan, the most two senior officials in Cork football, come out to explain the rules. That is now the rule. It is now straight sudden death. Any player in any order you wish. From the first five? From the five that have now just selected. Okay. Yeah. So sudden death it is going forward from here. And we keep on moving. Killian Myers Murray was very quick to get up he was, uh, from yeah. the line he here. Was. I think he wants to take this big time. Well it is Killian Myers Murray in the first round of sudden death, sixth round of penalties here in a drama packed parky rain. Murray against Seymour. Oh. Off the crossbar! And that now opens the opportunity up. And stepping up for the haven. Is, is it, it Mark Collins? No. No. I think it is. It's the captain of the haven. Mark Collins is going to be stepping up to this one. He buried that ball off the crossbar. Going for power rather than placement. And it's a chance now. In the sixth round of penalties, the first sudden death playoff round. A chance for Mark Collins against Patrick O'Neill. Remember, Collins scored his first penalty. Collins yeah. sends the haven into the final. And they face Nemo next Sunday afternoon. Look at the jubilatory scenes. Unbelievable. Holy Moses. Yeah, well done, Castlehaven. Uh, you know, there was times tonight they looked to be out of the game. They, they were so economical, they just stayed in the game. Fair play to Antti Seymour uh, for, you know, those two crucial saves he did at the start. Patrick O'Brien the same. Uh, Patrick O'Neill the same. Great saves as well. It just seems to me just to be terribly cruel to finish the county championship was, campaign yeah. in a sudden death penalty shootout. But that just shows how close both clubs were tonight. There was nothing between them. Two very different ways of playing the game. Uh, two different style players in terms of the team makeups. But, uh, you know, Castle Haven advanced to face Nemo. Just to give you bad news now as well Villa have been beaten Liverpool 7 2. So, what an extraordinary day! What an extraordinary weekend of sport. I mean, look what the time is 10 past 9. We're still here. This yeah. extraordinary day. But what a game. Yeah, it was a, a super Even though like. The, like there wasn't scores to no, there was a couple of great scores in the game, but the game was just so up and down all night long. We played nearly ninety minutes, over ninety minutes of football. It was. I think the game was more about, um, I wouldn't say tactical, but the, the defensive and the hits that were going on and the tackles were ferocious. Um, I think it's it seems you know, the, the game itself because all the attention was on the penalties, which is a shame because it was a super game of football and as I was saying coming into the penalties I just get the sense that whoever loses this is going to carry a huge burden and I feel now for Killian Meyer, Myers Murray he was first up to take that and you know that's just a huge burden for him to carry as I say in the normal flow of a game if you have a bad game if you get beaten to a ball if you have a miss it's over in an instant that was a long time for him to think about that and a long time for him to think about walking away so and to be fair to and to give due credit as well the first man up to Killian Myers Murray 
as soon as that ball hit the net, was Damien Cahalan to just to show his commiserations. Like, and that just shows, and I've just seen Jack Cahalan getting up to him as well. That's that's just, it, it, it's a horrible way. I know it's the, the, the way we're having put into it, but it's a horrible way to be knocked out of a senior football championship. It is, yeah. And I, I, to be fair, I just think two teams deserve so much credit. You know, I know there was a little bit of a fight and scuffle down there, but the heart and the energy from both teams. It was a super game of football. Great skill, great tackling, great, like when you talk about professional sports or whatever, it's just you, you sit here and you say, geez, these guys want it. Everything mattered. The breaking ball was you know, always contested. It was just... It was just really enjoyable, massive energy from the game. So hats off to the two teams, I would say, first and foremost. Brian? Yeah, I think, Patrick, uh, ultimately the weight of a crossbar has knocked the bars out of the championship in a sudden death penalty shootout, um, which actually tells its own story. Uh, I think both teams, as Derek said, gave this everything they had. Uh, we questioned at half time whether the bars could actually come back out and go to war. They certainly did that. Uh, they've lost nothing here tonight. You see men carried off. Uh, struggle off the pitch, limp off the pitch, uh, be lifted off the pitch. Two Cox senior players, yeah. Ian McGuire and Brian Hurley couldn't finish out the game. Couldn't finish out the game. That just shows you what clubs mean to fellas and how much they want to actually win championship games and get to finals and try and win another county championship for their for their club. Um, I think you know you couldn't ask any more of either team tonight. I think the bars maxed out, Castlehaven maxed out. Castlehaven looked actually very 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 good for about twelve or fourteen minutes maybe, and after that. They relied on pure economy. Um, you know, they got down into the bars half very few times, but every time they got down there, something happened. Whereas the bars had an awful lot of possession here in the second half, uh, had an awful lot of possession in the extra time, but yet the, 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 the composure necessary to close out these type of games, it just le left them at times tonight. So much so, they ended up in a, a lottery, <laughs> uh, penalty shootout, sudden death. And in these things, you know, as I say, amateur players, somebody's going to miss. Keepers are going to make saves. It happens. The very best players in the world hit crossbars, hit posts, put the ball wide. It's savage pressure. But I would say fair play to Killian Myers Murray. He, when I went to the sudden death part of it, he was the first guy to leave his group. He ran up there. He showed tremendous self belief. And you know, if he's feeling down tonight or tomorrow or next week, I'm I'm sure looking at the bars and, and knowing the club that they are, they rally around him and they lift him back up. Fair play to Castlehaven. There was times tonight that they looked as if they weren't going to win it. Um, I think there's more in them over a sustained period. And I think if they're going to beat Nemo, they're going to have to produce something a bit better than what they did at times tonight. Now, if they can uh, elongate that period that they had in that first half when they were very, very effective, they'll be a match for anybody. Um, but I think they're going to have to get a bit more out of Michael Hurley. I think he went off with an injury. They're going to have to get a bit more out of Mark Collins, Brian Hurley. Um, and their defence are going to be up against possibly better forwards than Paul Kerrigan, Luke Connolly, uh, Mark Cronin, these type of players. They're going to be a barrier to skill. They're marquee players, and I think, uh, you know, Castlehaven are going to have to really go go to toe to toe with these guys if they have a chance. But look, all we can say tonight, uh, Patrick, is that we were entertained from start to finish. We saw the GA at its best, we saw people giving absolutely everything for their clubs. Uh, the bars go away tonight as, as losers, but certainly they've lost nothing. Um, if anything, you know, anyone who was watching would have to have have you know look on with pride in the turn in the way they, they 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 gave of themselves tonight. And as I say, absolutely fair play to Castlehaven. Brilliant, brilliant way to win a game and a great way to go into a final. Sure is indeed. County final no next week. If you were donning the green and black during the week. Yeah, definitely. I. Yeah, I, I, I just thought it was going to be the Bears, uh, m most of that, by the end of the second half, was the Bears just looked like they were going to take it. In extra time, the Bears definitely looked like they were going to take it. Um, but um, they, as Brian says, they worked off economy, they just took their chances better. Bears had uh, just so many misses at the mm. end of normal time, so many misses at the end of extra time. So they've no one to blame but themselves. Um, Castlehaven loads to improve on if you were to look at how they improved going into the semi-final I think midfield is the starting point they were beaten really badly there I think the Bars just owned the possession from the kickouts even from Castlehaven's own kickout um, that's that's their biggest weakness I think uh, their forwards look extremely good they look especially in the first half for those 15 or 20 minutes that Brian mentioned where they look really good really dangerous they looked electric um, they need to, uh, to obviously work on that and, and stretch that out. But uh, it's going to be a great final, I think, uh, Nemo Castle 11. 
Okay. Thanks a million, boys, for a quite an entertaining evening. Brian Corpert and Derek Kavanagh concluding our coverage of this weekend's Irish Examiner live streaming. What has been an epic weekend. We brought you the game last night in the Premier Intermediate Hurling Championship final where Blarney defeated Castle Lions. And then three games this afternoon. Uh, firstly, we were in Parque Quay for the Senior Hurling Championship final where Charleville just got up by the skin of her teeth against Fod O'Neill's by a solid three points. Then we came down here to see Nemo Rangers getting a score in the 64th minute to win by a point against Stu Hallow. And just now, a game that goes to penalties. The first ever football came under the auspices of the Cork County Board going to the way of Castlehaven. And a county final to look forward to next weekend. And we've got plenty of county finals to look forward to as we bring you more coverage of the live streaming in association with the uh, county board in Cork uh, on the Irish Examiner live streaming service. There's going to be plethora of... Break zones analysis tomorrow in the Examiner Sport. I'm looking forward to catching that tomorrow. Tony Lean is in the office working hard on that. I'm looking forward to picking up that tomorrow. My thanks to the two boys here beside me and Kieran and John on technical duties this evening. Thank you for watching as well.